all of the rich people in power, they don't belong to any groups. The group that they belong to is called the wealthy, motherfucker. Hold on a second. Yeah, we're going to get it in, man. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. Good. People in power don't belong to no religions, man. Money is the God. I got three different beverages going on, and it ain't no shame in my game. I got coffee right here. I got water right here. Now I'm going to let y'all guess the third one. I got coffee, I got water. Now, what's the third liquid I'm about to show on the screen? Let me see how much y'all know me. What's the third liquid? I haven't even ate nothing today, but I'm a cowboy, and everybody know that I be on a liquid diet all the way up to like 2 o'clock. Like, I literally eat like one big solid meal. Uh, Omega got it. Omega got it. Y'all know me, don't you? Hey, look, a lot of folks may say, man, that, that nigga's what? You, you, you start your day with a beer? Yeah, beer, coffee, and water. That's a cowboy breakfast, motherfucker. You ain't know that? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I learned this from the white boys in the military. Them niggas will wake up in the morning and they'll put a shot of Jack Daniels in they coffee. And I'll be like, bro, you drinking this early? You really taking a shot of Jack Daniels in the morning? My nigga, let me tell you something. I never work my way around to mixing the Jack Daniels in my coffee, but I did start taking shots with them niggas in the morning and washing it down with the coffee because that little Jack Daniels shot just woke you up like, ooh, ooh, shit. Yeah, nigga, let's go do some exercises. Who y'all around this bitch? Woo! <laughs> Fuck A! <laughs> Fuck A! And ever since then, I just wanted a little alcohol with my caffeine just, look, just to activate you. You see what I'm saying? I don't know, them two go good together. But you don't do what I do, right? Don't try this at home, children. Everybody ain't cowboys, goddammit. But that's just the kind of nigga I am. I wear boots too, goddammit. That's right, I wear boots in the summertime with shorts on. It'd be like, you do know it's summertime, right? It'd be like, no. Is center time. What is that? Well, that's when you mix summer with winter, and you know. <laughs> Become balanced and centered and shit. Yeah, brothers and sisters, we about to begin. You know we don't start no goddamn teaching without firing up a blunt like a fool. You know Damn well, we ain't start nothing without me hitting no trees like you done lost your doggone mind. You know you wrong. Amen. Amen. And I normally roll up two of them. Boy, I'm a bad man in the, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the in the afternoon. I can't, let me tell you something. I keep saying morning because I'm drinking coffee. The coffee just make it feel like morning time for a nigga. All right. 
let's let's talk about what we own today. Today's title, as you can see, let's go back to the thumbnail. We're going to be dealing with Israel versus realism. And I might get on the whiteboard a little bit today, but my whiteboard camera is facing this way uh, with my dumb ass. I forgot to change it back to the whiteboard. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to just bring the whiteboard over here in case I need it. Matter of fact, let's just get it now, just in case, all right? Let's just do that now. Turn it that way for the sake of space saving. We'll put him now. Get us a couple markers. And now we can start class, man. Hit that like and share button. Ain't nobody going to do it like your boy. <laughs> Not like you. They going to do it, but they ain't going to do it like your boy. You know, they, everybody going to do it. They going to do it. They going to do it, do it, do it. But they ain't going to put their back into it like your boy. I think that'll show up pretty darn good for the day. Let's talk about realism. And when we say real, R-A-E-L, R-A-E-L are the last four words of Israel and the very first four words of realism. And now a lot of people may say, Brother Sanchez, just because of both of them got the name Ra and L in it, it doesn't mean they the same thing. And that's when I would call you stupid. And then that's when everybody else that follow me will look at you and say, yeah, bro, Sanchez, that nigga so stupid. And we don't want you niggas being stupid in 2023. Now, look at me. Little nigga, there's something called syncretism. And if you ain't aware of it, guess what? That's your bad, motherfucker, not mine. Mm-hmm. That's right. Now, let me tell you something, guys. When we say the word rail, R-A-E-L, this is the word in Israel. Let's get to it. All right. You know what that means? Let's get two different colors. I like different colors. Like my video and share my shit or you can leave now. Uh, this thing done had it. I don't think it's, it's failing me, okay? This, we need another red marker. That ain't good enough. Hold on, y'all. You know I'm going to start off walking, then we're going to start running. All right? They like, what is this nigga writing? You gonna see. Some things I like to do it this way. Now, does that make sense to you? When we say Israel, it is a religion based upon combining two gods together. Those gods are the Egyptian god Ra mixed with the Hebrew god or Greek god El. The two together create a religion that we call Israel today. Now, Ra Ra in Egyptian means the same thing that El means in the Greek. 
Ra symbolizes light, but not any kind of light. All right. Now we're about to go to the pictures and the symbolism. You see how I'm starting off early with the advanced shit. Now let's go to the symbolism. When we, I just told you, Ra and L means the same thing. It means the light. What kind of light, though? What kind of light are we talking about when we talk about the god Ra, when we talk about L? Of course, we're talking about electricity. That's the root word of L. Of course, we're talking about electricity. But when we talk about the god Ra, when we talk about the god L, we're talking about not just any light, but the light of creation. The light of creation. Now, what is the light of creation? We're going to learn a lot today. Let's get into some symbolism. When we talk about the gods Ra and El, here is the symbol that represents them both. Ra represents the upside. El represents the downside, however you want to look at it. But there is the symbol that represents what? It represents a... Uh, the primordial light. Now, we're going to go around the world and show you other symbols, right? That, and then it's going to start to make sense to you bit by bit. Right now, if you rocking with me and you interested and I got you locked in, drop a one. Drop a one if you like, okay, this nigga stay coming with some deep shit and I'm already learning something. Drop a one for me. Let me know. Don't lie to me now. Don't lie to me now. A lot of folks say I repeat myself. That's why I'm asking y'all for those ones. And I just like to get a survey from the people on how we're looking. Uh, let me see here. So I just saved the file and I'm going to access it now. So that we can move forward. Let's take the Now listen. Thank you for the warns. Check it out. The symbol that we're looking at now is called an adinkra. And the adinkra, right, is the oldest symbol on the continent of Africa. Now, if anybody want to debate me on that, I'll be glad to. We can do that today, nigga. Ain't no symbol in Africa older than this adinkra. Why are you talking about a Adinkra, bro, Sanchez? Well, look at the symbol. And let's go back to the Big Bang. Now, let's go to the whiteboard. And then we're going to go back to it. This symbol is the symbol of balance, y'all. It's the symbol of a ball lanced. Balance, ball lanced. That makes sense to you? This symbol, which is the yin-yang symbol, which is the symbol that they're calling Saturn, is just mean balance. Before they spookified it and turned it into realism and ufology and the worship of Mala, it, Saturn, Saturn just was a ball lanced. Hold on a minute. Sorry about that. Saturn is lit. See, what happened was all of these symbols meant something. They tell you that. Now, listen, the number zero isn't a number. It's a seed that gave birth to all the numbers. Let me show you what an integer chart looked like. In order for you to understand the religion of realism and, and what Israel is all about, you got to know the symbols. You got to know the symbols. 
And that's what I'm doing now. Let me show you something. You got to know how numbers were born. Let me show you something. You got to know about integers, integers. I'm about to show you that now. It's like I said, we, we, we already starting off deep. Now, what ma'at, let me show you something. Ma'at represents balance. She represents balance. Now, what does balance look like? Outside of math, outside of symbolism and spirituality, which is what Ma'at represents. Here's what it is right here. The integer, integers. This is literally what Ma'at represents. Her left wing is the negative integers. Her right wing is the positive integers. But her feather, her body... That ain't no numbers. That's, that ain't what, see, her body represents zero, the zero point, because your body is supposed to be zen. She represents balance. Ma'at represents when you get your body balanced, you ain't left or right. You ain't good or bad. You light as a feather. You, you evened it out at the zero point. Now, if you look at Ma'at, and you look at the Big Bang, you can see they the same thing. She represent the expanded universe. She would be another equivalent to the goddess Nut. You know, Nut spread in the canopy of the sky. Ma'at is another sky goddess, keeping the balance in the heavens. Now, let me show you something. Watch this now. Ma'at represents justice, court. I'm mean, going to see justice, order, all that good stuff. Let me show you something. I'm going to pull some slides. I know I keep saying. Hold on, y'all. Sorry about that. Now, now check this out, y'all. Okay, that's what I was going to do. I was going to put these slides. My bad for the interruption. We won't have too many of those. Let Bear with me. I'm pulling some. Whew. And thank y'all for joining in. If you haven't hit the like button, go ahead and go do that for me. Some of these files that I have to pull, I haven't put them in a long time. Uh, but it'd be worth it. All right, here we go. Here is a courtroom. Now, that's what Ma'at represents. Balance, justice, order. Now, what does the universe shape like? Now, I want you to do me a favor, right? Matter of fact, I ought to take these two images and put them together so you can see that because I had it like that before. You want to understand realism, you got to understand these symbols first. Because before I get into the symbols that you see on the thumbnail, you ain't going to understand them if you don't understand this first. 
Now look at the courtroom. Everything is symbolism. I'm trying to open up y'all third eye, free your mind. A lot of folks don't like the way I teach because I talk directly to the soul. I talk directly to the part of you that doesn't understand language or none of that. It just understands symbol. That's the original language. That's the holy language, symbol. Now I'm making, I'm about to do something real quick. I'm in paint and I'm about to come back over to y'all side, right? Give me a minute. I'm making something for y'all in paint real quick just to show you something about this whole courtroom architecture. Because when we get into this whole thing with the cosmology, you got to understand that this ties into everything that's dealing with keeping order, balance, and the courtroom one of those places. And, uh, and another reason I'm doing this too is just to show y'all how like symbolism rules don't got to like symbolism, but you're governed by it. You're ruled by it, whether you know it or not. I can look at the clothes you're wearing, and I bet you the logos on them, uh, it means something to you. Hey, my bad, y'all. My bad. Here we go. I wasn't doing them but blabbering on anyway. I wasn't teaching nothing. I was just t say, uh, saying that symbolism don't mean that to a lot of people. But it, but it governs their whole life, and I'll debate them on it. I'll debate them that the clothes they wear, they pick them clothes because of a symbol. Stay with me, y'all. I'm about to get deep, man. We already, we already going deep. Now watch this. Here's what I'm going to show you. Anywhere that's dealing with balance, justice, law, order, that's what my art represents. And, and, and anything dealing with that kind of uh, energy is is got certain symbolism associated with it. See, like our universe is balanced. Our universe is ordered. Now man got this shit imbalanced today. Now the thing that you got to realize though, our universe in its natural state. Is a Taurus field that is vibrating on a balanced high frequency. And when it's like that, it takes the shape of a tree of life. When it's not like that, it mutates like a, a this is a, a this is a, a Taurus field that is maintaining 360 degrees, but is doing it by transforming through all of the, the sacred geometry. And sacred geometry don't mean that it's all righteous. It can take hideous forms. You got an upper half and a bottom half of what they call a negative and positive. Or what the Maya even call sometimes we're in a light age, sometimes we're in a dark age. When we're in a dark age, you still inside that 360, but you squared, you're not circled. And the square is the cube version of the 360 with the pointed rigged edges that can hurt you. This means that it's sharp turns. If think about bending a 90 degree turn, that's a sharp turn versus a circle is smooth all the way around is balanced is one big circle. You could just hold your steering wheel like this and just it one big circle versus that Sharp 90 degrees in a square. So when we talk about this whole thing about the cube, it's when they are able to square the circle. That's when the dark age manifests on the earth. Now we're leaving the dark age and we going back to the age of light. And that's represented by the spiral, the circle. The spiral is the spirit. The square can be seen as the body. So what I'm telling you is that the circle is inside of the square, which is the spirit in the body. But everything finna be reversed because that's the way it started. It started with the square inside of the circle, meaning that the body was just an idea in the mind of God. Now the mind of God is trapped inside of that idea call the body. 
Now tell me if you you feeling what I'm saying. The concept of in and out the body is just what I just told you. When the soul is in the body, you're having an inner body experience. When the soul is out the body, you have an out of body experience. It's because you are not the body. The body is just a vehicle. And when we enter the body, we automatically enter the earth. All of this you need to know if you're going to be able to grasp what I'm about to give you next. So now let's go. Why am I pulling up a courtroom? Because realism is about imbalance. But the symbols associated with it was all dealing with balance. And I'm going to have to go through this to show you the history of the corruption. Now, when we look at a courtroom, we are literally inside of the earth and the judge sits on a platform and he's the most high above everybody. Ain't no one exalted higher than the judge in the courtroom. You will see that his seat is the tallest and his platform is above everybody else because this courtroom is set up like a fucking the earth. So is your church and sanctuary, your temples, your mosque. Now, if you also look at this church, this inner workings of this courtroom, the walkway is the hammer handle. This is a Thor's hammer. Hammer. This is a big hammer. Boom, boom. And that's the judge is holding the hammer to keep order. That hammer is banged in the middle of the court because it's dealing with the sky vault and where the energy is crashing and colliding at. All right. The, it, the vibration is expanding from the judge all the way out through the courtroom when he banged the hammer. And that's what my art represent. That's what the big bang represent. Now, check out this big bang. Now, check out my art. All right. Now, let's check. Now, now, now that we got the courtroom out the way, because did, where the judge banged the hammer, that's called ground zero. And then the expansion is from there. Everybody hit the like and share button. We about to go deep. Now, zero is the North Pole. It's the highest point. You got to think, right? This integer list from zero should be descending on each side, making like a pyramid. Because the highest point is zero. Meaning when we travel toward the North Pole, we're ascending. And when you're leaving the North Pole, you're descending. And no matter where you are on the earth, when you say I'm in the southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, you just saying I'm in the negative side, positive side. And this ain't got nothing to do with good or bad. The earth is a battery and it needs a negative and positive just like the battery. But the negative and positive grounds itself out at zero. Boom, right there in the middle. Our numbers are born the same way. Let's take a look at this. This is called the Adinkra. And when you look at this, you're literally looking at balance. Now, let me go back to what I was sharing you about balance. This is a ball with a lance in it. Ball, lance, balance. Now, when I told you earlier that the symbol of balance were corrupted and turned to imbalance, how did they turn this symbol to imbalance? This represents the earth. Let me show you something because we finna go real deep, man. If you ain't getting it yet, this ought to be making your hairs on your skin stand up because let me show you something. And I'm finna bring it all home right here. Look at the Hebrew cosmos. Let's pull it up. It is a symbol of balance. It's a ball with a lance. Check it out. That's our earth. And the energy evens out at the ground. The energy grounds itself out at the ground. What we walk on right here, the grounding point where the sky meets the, the great deep. And in the middle is zero. Ain't nobody winning. It's 50-50. It's a grounding point for the energy. Now, let's go back to my board. 
You see what this mean? Balance. Now, guess what? They turned this to Saturn. And guess what they told you? We live in an earth that's tilted to one side. And that's how they got the imbalance. They tilted the scales. Let me show you. They gave, they gave you a globe earth with an axis point, just like I'm giving you. But they tilted it, and that's called crooked. And that's a lie. Our earth ain't crooked. It ain't, it, our earth is, when the Bible talk about you got to be upright, this is, it, it goes right against that. And you know this is a bunch of bull crap. The coldest place on the earth is leaning right toward the sun, so you know this is a lie. You got the North Pole, which is the coldest place on earth, leaning itself toward the sun. How does that make sense? How does the part that's leaning toward the sun is the coldest place and is leaning toward the sun? So we know this don't make no sense. We know this is cartoons. Let's just come on. But the fact that they tilted the axis, that would be like, you see what's going on here? Here go what our earth is. And the North Pole is a vertical pole that is pointed upright, pointed toward God. But guess what they pointed us toward when they tilted it? They pointed us toward the planet Saturn. Yes, I can show you this. Watch this. When you, the first degree away from the throne of God is Saturn. That's the sixth ether. Watch this, man. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Look at this doggone cosmology. Look at the throne of God at the top. Now, when you, if, if the North Pole on Earth is pointed at God, straight up, upright, you point it toward God. Now, if they tilt you 45 degrees to the left, you're now pointed at the planet Saturn, and we can see that right here in this cosmos. They pointed you at Saturn, and that's in your mind, dude. That ain't the real shit. They got everybody on Earth crooked going under the Saturnalia, Saturnian energy, because Saturn is the Lord of Chaos. They got everybody pointed that way in their subconscious. Because we ain't pointed upright talking about the North Pole, zero degrees. We into the study and all the planets, which are the Greek gods, Saturn, Mars, Venus, but instead of studying the God that created all of them. That would make us be greater. Now check this out. When you point, if you're standing on Earth and you point it straight up at God, that's zero degrees. If you tilt 45 degrees to the left, you're now pointed at the planet Saturn, and that's what they all their, their religion is about. Saturn. They don't want to uh, be upright and in line with the Most High. Because they want to be God, which is what Satan and Saturn is about. It's the great fall away from the throne. And why are we studying the planets instead of studying the one that created it all? Because man trying to be God, not get to know God. And you can't be what you don't know, nickel. You ain't, you ain't never met a pimp and you time out some pimping. Get acquainted with God first, nigga, before you try to be him. Man, this world out of line. And you Hebrews going to hell in a handbasket. You niggas ain't worshiping God. And I'm about to go deep in a minute. Let You know what? Let me take my motherfucking time. That's what I'm going to do. Let me show y'all boys something, man. Y'all don't study it that hard. Let me show you something. Now, let's take all this off. I want to go somewhere else now. I just gave y'all some, some real shit. I just gave you some real shit about balance, about balanced. Now, let's go back to this. Here go my art. 
balance, right? She represent ground zero, boom, this center point. We put up the energy list, right? Now, look, let's go back to this. Now, remember how I told you that a lance ball mean balance? Now, look at the Big Bang. You see what you got? A ball lanced. You have a ball with a lance right in the middle. And you know what that is? Saturn knowledge. Now, today, we don't, we, we got the, we, you know, we're indoctrinated. So, everybody's crooked and believing that they on a globe and shit. Everybody got the false signs. They don't have the knowledge of self, right? They got the knowledge of their colonizer, and they think they smart with it, which is the sad part. But see, let me say something real quick before I go back with the symbolism. The knowledge of your colonizer will always connect you back to your colonizer and not your ancestors, which is why all of these wannabe smart niggas ain't connected to nothing ancient. They some modern ass, technological ass gadget, inspector gadget. They, they can't tap into that jungle energy. They out of touch. And when you die, you're going to be so far away from your ancestral realm on a spiritual level that you will be born again in a technocracy. This is a form of soul harvesting. On this earth, you are calibrating your energy and the universe don't care what you saying out of your mouth. It's going by the intent of your heart. And my heart is intended on, it's a place in my heart that I created that got me respect in the jungle. That got me going against the modern indoctrination and technocracy so that when I leave my body, you think, you, guess what? I'm programming my own reality right now. You programming your afterlife while you alive based on what you creating in your heart because your heart going to project a whole nother world around you when this one is gone. So what's ever in your heart at the point of death becomes the energy that explodes and create a new world around you and a new situation. And this is your heart manifesting everything we go through in the simulation. It's called electromagnetic energy field of the heart. And I'm about to go so deep with this shit. Now watch this, y'all. Get your heart right is what all the religions were saying. Now watch this, y'all. If you look at this Big Bang symbol, check this out. This from the Middle East. Brother Sanchez, when are you going to talk about Raelianism? Raelism. I'm already talking about Raelism. You just don't know it yet. Just stay with me. And when I go back to the title images, it's going to connect in your head everything I said. And you're going to be like, that boy cold. Now, just stay with me. Look at this symbol here that people worshiping. This became a cowboy hat. This became something called a sombrero. And, 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 and when you look up the uh, etymology of sombrero, it comes from the word sombre, which was the word zombre, and zombie, which is the word zombie. Now, ask yourself, what does a cowboy hat got to do with a zombie what does a damn cowboy hat got to do with a ufo and a zombie remember what i was showing y'all on the movie what was it nope watch this i gotta revisit that the cowboy hat is based on realism let me pull my old video up to re revisit something. Remember the movie Nope that I decoded? Let me find that real quick because when you search shit on YouTube, it never give you what you search, man. I don't even know why they allow you to search your channels like that for shit because it don't pull up what you search. All right, here we go. On the movie Nope with Jordan Peele. And y'all need to go back and watch this shit when I broke down the movie Nope. But hold on. 
Hold up. Let me go to this one part. Right here. See? When the fucking alien is abducting your ass, it looked like you got on a big ass cowboy hat. And this symbol represent a UFO ship. Now we finna go into realism and UFOlogy. Hold on a minute though. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. The concept of wearing this big sombrero hat is symbolizing getting sucked up in a UFO ship. When a UFO ship get over your head and it start to suck you in, once you get sucked inside the thing, it look like this lady. And it start to eat you up. And then her mouth go up, her shoulders go up. This symbolism is her being sucked into a UFO. Realism is all about ufology. Now we finna later talk about Kanye West and Elon Musk. The name Elon is alien. And Elon is all about mind uploading. Now, this ufology concept is about humans developing technology to let them be able to extract the mind out the body. This is a BCI, brain computer interface. But they, they, they showing it to us in a form of a sombrero. Now, I'm about to tie it all together to you. Watch this, right? Watch this. Watch this shit. There was a God that was worshipped. And listen, this is something you can look up. The oldest deity in Kenya is a God, and this, I'm about to pull up the Edema, I ain't got to lie about this, check this out, 1871, of West African origin, that's where the word zombie come from, zombie, now, the word zombie come from the word zombie, 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 which was the name of their God, and it's a Spanish word called sombra, and sombra is where you get the word sombrero, which is this hat. This hat represents Saturn. Now check this out. What, what does this big hat got to do with a fucking zombie and somebody getting up from the dead? Y'all ready for it? You ready for it? All right, watch this. Let's go to Pop Smoke. First, before we even go to Pop Smoke, let me show you something. Because we finna talk about it now. Here go what the sombrero hat look like. This what they worshiping is a big ass cowboy hat. Right? With the little crater in the middle. And you put, right, that's a cowboy hat. Now, I asked a question. I said, what does this cowboy hat, what does this sombrero got to do with resurrection? Because what they are personifying is the sky vault that I was showing you earlier in the Hebrew cosmos. Hit the like and share button. Let's see if we can crack a thousand uh, viewers. Now, check this out. You see this little hole right here? That's what sucks us up when we die. When we die, this is a magnetic pole and you are made out of light. And your light can't escape this thing. It's going to get sucked up into here. See, because it got sucked into it. You were a sperm cell, which is light, bro. And that light got stuck into, got, it went into a black hole. You were light. That's a beam of light, a sperm cell. And it went into the black hole right here. This is the collection plate. This is the egg that collects all the sperm. They're telling the story of our birth into alienism they're alienating us from what we are and how we get to the earth and giving it to a, a spookism mythological creature called an alien but the trick but the secret behind this is they turn this shit into technology of how to get out the body and that's why we call them archons
They are interdimensional. We used to have this gift. They've always had this gift, but they use technology to do it, and we use our natural abilities to do it. Now, again, what does the word sombra got to do with a ghost? What does a doggone sombrero hat got to do with a ghost? I'm about to teach you. I'm teaching you now. Stay with me, right? If you look at the way the hat look, and then let's pull up a holographic human. I'm going to teach you this religion that we into. Now, remember what the Pharaoh was into, resurrection. Check this out. The hologram is projected from the top down. You see this? Now, think about that like a dude under a spotlight. You know, like alien abduction, when the dude is under a spotlight and the, and the light looks like a triangle on top of his head. This is holographic projection. This is how your hologram will be projected down onto the earth. Now, when we die and our body is fading away, it's, it's turning back into light, and then this light is, is sucking you back up to, in the portal that you projected onto the earth in. I'm about to go somewhere with this. You guys got to understand. Stay with me, man. Check this out. Because when you talk about realism in Israel, it's dealing with a religion that's dealing with ufology and scientism, Scientology. When we talk about beam me up, that's the Christians talking about getting raptured up in the clouds in the rapture. The, Christ, the Christians always talk, they want to be raptured up by Christ. Christ is the word crease. It's a crease of light or a lane. This line of light is crease. When Christ said, I am the light, I am the way to the father. It used to be the way to the mother because this light represents the God's shoe holding up nut, which is the mothership to the heavens. I'm about to show you what realism was, and then I'm going to show you what it became. When you say Israelian, if you take the Isra off, you just get Elian. The name Elian is Elon. He's the God of Israel. Israel and all of the Jews got their money together behind Elon and this new technocracy with all the tech gurus. Shu is a fucking light line to the heavens. He's the light that's holding up the sky, the, 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 the uh, sky vault in the middle of the earth, and he's representing the North Pole. See, he got the feather on as Ma'at with her hands out. It's just a male form. But again, it's representing the balance in the middle of the universe. It's ground zero. And then both of these two deities represent the negative numbers going to the left, the positive numbers going to the right. I just showed you the integers, and Shu would be zero on the earth, where the compass is pointing to zero, the North Pole, in the middle of a circle. Now, this North Pole is a light beam that lead us to the heavens. It's literally a Jacob's ladder in the center of our earth. All of our compasses are pointing to the light that expanded the very earth that we're within. Now, if you look at the way this thing is shooting the light out, think of a hose pipe shooting water out onto the ground. When the water hit the ground, it's going to separate and make a big circle. So you're going to have this little line of water crashing onto the ground and then a bunch of lines going all around that line. You know how the pattern that is going to make. And that's the pattern of the earth that we're on. I'm showing you how what the magnetic ley lines of the earth is. At the middle of the earth is a very pressurized 
high speed beam of light right here in the middle of this circle. And as it beams down to the earth, it crashes onto the ground and all of its energy is spreading outward just like that. Just the pattern that it'll make if a fireman aimed his fire holes at a brick wall. You see how that it'll make this big circle like a spider web coming out from the point where the, where, where the line of water at? That's how this earth is made. That's the same concept here on the earth. That's the Big Bang expansion based upon that being. So when we follow these magnetic ley lines back to the center of the earth, we see the beam portal that created them all. Just like following the lines back to the middle of a spider web, and now you see the spider that created all them lines. It's the same fractal uh, micro-macro science. That's why I can sync it that way. This mothership is is spewing all up, projecting each and every last one of us onto the circle of the earth. Wherever you go, your crown goes. This is the all-seeing eye that's hovering above the pyramid that don't have a capstone. You know why? Your body is the uncapped pyramid because it's capped by the mind, and the mind is not the body. So the mind is the UFO ship that's projecting the body onto the earth and it's projecting the whole simulation around the body. And here are you walking in the middle of your own earth. Now imagine a whole bunch of these ships in the sky projecting each one of us down and all of our circles are combining to make one layered circle. That's what we're in. Every time a human die, that's a circle that's removed from the collective layering system. Every human has a contract and a bond on this earth where all of our mind is projecting us into this same circle. So your UFO ship projecting your circle right there and it's aligned with his and mine and, I, and all of our worlds come together to make the world just like the internet. Just like a bunch of gamers connecting their PlayStations into one little room so that they can be all of they want PlayStation projecting their version of the game with their character in one room, though. Now, the, the game look different on everybody's TV because everybody ain't playing on the same TV and everybody don't see reality the same with our eyes. This so the concept of wearing a cowboy hat, the cow was a god called Moloch. Now we've been taught that the cowboy was herding up cows and stuff with a lasso. And that ain't the original cowboys had technology to harvest souls. They got you thinking they was and pulling dudes in, but the cowboys was using brain computer. Inter interfaces to harvest souls out the body. And uh, if you look at the symbol for the team, Cowboys, it's a pentagram which represent the body which is projected onto the earth and also the colors of blue dealing with this nut concept, the sky, knowledge, the knowledge of the ether in the heavens. But check this out. We ain't going to reach, right? We, we, that's, that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about this. Wearing a cowboy hat on your head comes from Saturn eating you up. See how this hat looked like a bunch of rings down here like Saturn? And then it looked like Saturn is eating her up. This the whole mythology about Saturn eating you up. And the cone on her head, the cone part is the spotlight. When you put your birthday hat on or your witch hat on, that hat is the projection of light. Look at it. You see how this light projects down here and make a witch hat or a birthday hat? This is the secret. And when we die, this thing start to close up like an Asian fan. It becomes a single beam again. And then it sucks itself back in a hole and you leave here. Boom. You're just a beam of light that expanded and projected inside of a circle. That's it. Nothing it. And, and, and so... But let's go deep with it. Talk about what realism and ufology, Scientology, Islam, right? They all know the secret. 
Now, let's take this thing off now that we got the word sombra out the way, because listen, the etymology question was, what does the word ghost got to do with a big old hat that we wear called a sombra or sombrero? The word sombra is the word sombri, sombra, or zombie, zambi, right? We're doing the etymology right here, and we showing you what the birthday hat and the, and the sombrero hat and the witch hat the fedora hat, we showing you how that tie into the resurrection story. Because what happens is rebirth happens in the mothership. When this thing sucks up the consciousness, it projects it back out in a different circle as a better version of itself in a better situation. This is rebirth. In other words, like a painter that balled up he, he erased the board to write a, a new painting on it. What this spaceship does, it collapses this light into a line. It sucks itself back in. And, and if you think I'm lying, that's called spaghettification in science. Let me show you because it looked like somebody sucking a noodle in in their mouth. Look at it. Spaghettification. You, if to my science niggas. It's called spaghetti. But if you think I'm giving you some pseudo shit, astronauts call it spaghettification. But what they ain't telling you is the astronaut is personifying the sperm cell being sucked into the egg. That's why he got the all white with the one eye helmet on and he got a tethering line. This, this astronaut ain't, is a religion. That's what I'm telling you about realism. It's a religion that's deceiving the world about space, planets, and all that, when really space travel is what you did to get here. When you was a beam of light called a sperm cell, you entered a stargate called an egg, and, the, and your whole world is inside of that egg or that circle of light right now. And when your world is over, it will fade away. We're all having our own experience in the same space, but we're projecting our own reality in, in, this, in, in the same circles, in the same location. It becomes a universe where all of our worlds become connected to make one big the world. Just like the internet and gaming, how they all connect their systems together to be in one room together, like this earth. That's what it is. So when we look at the light that's projecting the human, this is called holography. And here it is, too. Human hologram technology is now available. And, with t and what they need Elon Musk to do is come up with the technology to allow us to project our minds inside of it. But this is a religion called realism. Because once you upload your mind inside of the fucking hologram, it looks like you've been sucked up by their God, L. They showed you this in the movie Nope. And in the movie Nope, when they sucked up all the people, they was harvesting them inside of the ship. Now check this shit out, right? Because we got a lot to break down. When you look at this symbol right here, of the UFO beaming the person down, it beams them up too. But when you look at a holographic human, it's showing you the knowledge of holography. The ship, you don't enter the ship as a human. When we enter the ship, we're literally aliens, man. Our mind is not a human, dude. Our mind, it literally looks like this alien creature they keep showing you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what the, the mind is. You see this? This is where they get that alien concept from with the big skull and shit. But like a pilot cockpit seat. This is what ejects. The mind is a little bitty light inside of this chamber. You see it? Think of a pilot sitting inside of his cockpit. And when it's time for him to crash, he hit the eject button and, and, and he beams up out the top of the cockpit from the pilot ejection seat. This is how this shit was made from our mind leaving the body. They call it jack out the box. 
When Jack pops up out the box, the box is the body. I told you that's the cube. The circle is, think about this, right? Excuse me, I said a circle. The cube, right? A lot, when it opens up, Jack pops out the box. When we get Jack out the box, the cube concept. Jack is this mind. The word Jack is the word yak. The J is the Y. When we say Jacob or Yakub, Jack is yak. A yak. The yak is the word yoke. Go look it up in etymology. The word yoke is the word yak. And they said that the mind is a yoke. You see how it looked like a little yellow yolk, like what's in the middle of an egg? This little ball of light is in a chamber that's like a pilot ejection seat. And when you die, when the heart stops beating, that, that right there triggers the ejection. When your heart stops beating, it triggers the ejection of the mind out the body, the head back home. And you can't stop that. So, because we're not the body. And once you get out your body and see what we really are, we literally resemble this shit they call an alien or whatever. That's what our, what the sperm is with the big elongated head, the sperm cell and shit, or the ghost, the white ghost with the wiggly tail. All of this is what we are out the body. It's a trail of light. It resembles this little alien here, this, this, see, before we was a human, we was a sperm. And the sperm is how you get this concept of this long alien head. This is the part of us that travels the heavens and the waters above. The body don't travel there. NASA lied to y'all. Can't no human body lead this earth. The only way you can lead this earth is having an out of body experience. It was called astral projection, not no astronauts. They not astral, they not going nowhere in the astral realm. That's why we call them astronauts. Now let's talk about wearing a cowboy hat. This hat ain't got nothing to do with no people herding up cows and shit. It got something to do with the witches who rode on a witch broom. See? This image shows you a holographic human. And we got all of these stories about witches riding on witch brooms, the cowboys with the cowboy hats, and it's all dealing with resurrection or the zombie, the one that gets up out the grave in voodoo, a reanimated corpse. What would that be? Like Pop Smoke. Now let's go back to Pop Smoke. Now look at Pop Smoke. That light that you see in the middle of his stomach, that's the machine that's projecting his hologram. Now, let me show you something real quick about that light. Look at the Big Bang. Every last one of us is our own Big Bang, like I just showed you earlier. Each one of us is our own light source projecting itself down in the same spot, and all of us in this same spot is making a connected universe. And the ancestors said it this way. They said all is connected. When you look at the Ubuntu symbol with all the hands coming together to make one circle, that's what they showing you. They even got that in Egypt too. See if I can find that real quick. Right, This right here, they do this in Africa. They do this all over the world to show you that all of us is helping to make this shit. You see this? Every single human projecting themselves onto the earth is, is energy that the earth is using to keep itself manifested. And the way that they say this in science is that if every human stop looking at the earth, it won't exist. When they say if a tree fall in the jungle, did it really fall if no one really observed it? That whole concept come from the fact that every human is, every creature in this world is an observer. And by you being here, 
we're agreeing and, and testimony together like in church to create this place together from the inside out. And we can all agree to create a new world tomorrow. That's what technology is. When we stop wanting to live in this world, we can say we can build technology to make this world look like a whole nother alien planet. What am I telling you, though? Traveling to different worlds never happened by us launching rockets through the sky. It happened by us going and traveling within the mind. These different universes is inside of us and we manifest them right here throughout the ages. Now watch this, y'all. Let's talk, let's go back to this though. A zombie is a reanimated corpse that would be like Pop Smoke. Now look at Pop Smoke. He's inside of a circle with a line in the middle. Didn't I just show you that symbol? Didn't I just show you that symbol? Let's go back to it to refreshing you. Here is the what the light is, the light matrix that got his soul trapped. Because Pop Smoke is a zombie. He's a reanimated corpse. You see this? A reanimated corpse. When the ancestors was talking about getting the dead, waking the dead up out the grave, they was saying that they had the same technology we got today, dude. We ain't doing nothing new under the sun. The technology that we're unlocking today that's going to allow the dead to get up out the grave is some shit they reverse engineered up out of ancient Egypt because the pharaohs of Egypt created this shit when they were seeking immortality, which is why I kept showing you the god Aten in the holographic light of his projecting machine. Look at him. That hat that he got on his head, what do you think that is, bro? That's Neuralink. That's a Neuralink helmet for him to upload into this other realm. And then here go the project the machine here that's gonna project his avatar into it. Y'all don't see the technology? We ain't been translating this stuff the right way, man. Look at that. That's that's the same technology today that they're using to create holograms. Look at this is what he's showing you. They said that the God Aten is an alien because he got this big old hat on. So they think he's an alien. And if you read about the, the, the knowledge that he was associated with, it was about this great vault of heaven up here and him ascending through the sky vault. That's the UFO ship. This is what Israeli and when you say Israeli the word alien is in there. And an uh, alien is basically another word for zombie. A person that travels to our world from a parallel universe. That's a ghost. You see? There are no green aliens and all that stuff. It's just people, spirits from different ages revisiting the earth. And these spirits can rapture you up. I told you when my grandma died, when I went to sleep a few days after, and my grandma met me in my dream world on some Freddy Krueger shit, but it was a lovely experience, though. She bid me fa farewell, farewell. I told that experience before to you guys. I don't want to go into it again. But basically, I had a dream. I was hugging my grandma in her room after she died. And it felt so real because it was. The mind don't separate what happens in a dream from reality. You had a visitation. You, had, you were raptured. See, when we sleep, we leave our body and our mind is on these other realms that the dead is on. And if they able to get your attention when you out your body, you will have a dream with that dead person and a visitation. And that dead person will create a space, the house you in, in that dimension. That's what my grandma did. She, they will create a place that you remember. My grandma created her bedroom. Now, what I remember being in her bedroom is that it felt she was projecting a space that we both remembered to meet in. These memories are places that are eternal. Be careful the memories you make. 
they become portals into points in time later, like checkpoints. Um, in my grandmother's room, there was no door and no windows. It was her exact room, but in her room in this earth, it has a window and a door. But then when I was dreaming, it was her exact room, but it didn't have no door or no windows. It didn't have a way in or out. And I didn't understand that till later. My grandma was trying to tell me I projected you into my bubble. The way that you entered this room was through out of projection and ain't no way out but waking up back in your bed. I had to ponder that, like, why wouldn't there have no windows or doors? That was peculiar. I didn't know what it meant. Like, why no windows, no doors? And then I got it. I'm in a cube. I was in her cube. I, I was allowed entry into, this is what the visitations are. Now, guess what? They are, in the cube I'm talking about, right? You can see it on that movie with the Hellraiser and shit, the Saturn cube and all that. But the thing is this, that's the little ghost bu busters box that allowed a ghost to be reborn. The black box the, in, in Mecca. They show you that in Ghostbusters. When, the, when they open up the black box, that's the Ark of the Covenant. And what comes out? A ghost, dude. That's why they say you can't open up the doggone Ark of the Covenant because it supposedly had a spirit of Christ in it, the Holy Ghost in it. Ain't nobody can lay eyes on it. It'll blind and kill everybody. That's the mythology. But I'm showing you the reality, the spirituality. Uh, this right here, when they open up that black box, whatever ghost that they got trapped in that thing, they allow him to come out for a minute. And they may talk to him for a minute like, give us this information and torture his ass. And then when they threw with him, they put him right back in his box. And that's prison. That's condemnation for the soul. That right there is literally what the Teflon is. And it's right on the forehead by the pineal gland. Let me show you the Teflon. You see this black box? This is the Mecca cube. It looked like a little bitty witch hat right it looked like a little bitty witch hat but when they talk about pulling a rabbit out of a hat it's really pulling a soul out of a black hole souls entering and exiting black holes and uh this teflon is is is, is the ufo ship sucking up the soul into the cube which is the the black cube of mecca Right, that's how Jack gets inside of the box. All right, so what they, what they symbolize in here is when Jack wanna leave the box, then this little box on his head will open up and light will come out. That's how you get the unicorn symbol. Now, when you pull up a unicorn, a unicorn is always by a light source or by a rainbow or by an arch. Because it's talking, we are the unicorn with the white suit on. The resurrected soul is a unicorn. And the antenna on top of his head is what the pharaoh is wearing. This unicorn symbolism is symbolizing the resurrected soul traveling through the heavens as a white horse. Uh, and this concept can be seen here with the pharaoh in the white robe with the pointed, pointed point on his head. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to do, all of these crazy folklores and mythologies and creatures that we've been given has some meanings to them that, that, that meant something prior to all the bullshit. Today, a unicorn doesn't mean nothing. But let me show you something. The root word of unicorn is eunuch. And the word eunuch is the word enic which is the word Enoch. Now let's talk about Enoch, because if you look at Enoch, Enoch is showing you exactly what I'm showing you right here with the Pharaoh and with the UFO shit. The people in power are, are knowing that the white light we see when we die 
people say it recycles you. They say if you go into that light like Enoch did, then you're going to be uh, union, uniting with the Lord Yahweh. And that's a serpent God that's going to recycle you. Now, I'm not scared of none of that. Because I think they misinterpreted it. Here's what the serpent God is that's going to recycle you. It's your own kundalini energy, which is the energy that allow us to be born again. Now, what did I just tell you? That they're alienating us to our own self. They're alienating you to your own self. This kundalini energy was talked about, spoke about all over the world, and now they calling it real energy. And the people that with this, with this realism are unified throughout cults all over the world to hide this knowledge of what we really are. And they give this knowledge back to us in a form of religion. Now, why am I pulling up Krishna here? Look at Krishna floating on that lotus flower. That's religion. But you want to know what science is? Right here. Some people calling it kundalini. Some people calling it Krishna. Some people calling it Christ. But guess what? It all come from the word crash, which is to go to sleep. Crash. To lay down. It's the knowledge of the dead or the sleep. Crash is crush. Crash, the word Christ is crease. He represents a crease in the middle of the earth or a sky vault. And that crease is dealing with this vortex up and down the spinal cord. That little slither, that cut right here that you see. That's the bean portal. For consciousness, you see it is like an elevator system. Each of these chakras are portals into different universes, man. And you don't go to these other worlds by going outside, by going outside in the sky. You go to these worlds by going inside of yourself, and then you can go outside of yourself. This is called imploding, not exploding. You got to cock a gun before you can shoot it. You got to go within for you can go without. Man trying to go out into the heavens when he don't know that the gateway to the heavens is inside of him. This is a trampoline thing. If you want to go up, you got to push yourself down like a spring system, like a bow and arrow. If the arrow want to go forward, we got to pull it back. And then let it go. This is called recoil. I meant, meant, I meant projection. You got to pull it back. In other words, you got to give some to get some. You got to put gas into your car for it to go forward. Guess what? You got to bend your knees down for you to jump up. That's a law you can't escape, buddy. On a trampoline, you got to get in the middle and press down. For you to go up and for you to launch your consciousness to the highest of heavens, you got to go to the innermost of inner depths of the self and boom, like a trampoline, you'll launch up there. This is how this worked. And the way that the ancestors showed it was through images like this. We are in the underworld right now. This is where we go to get our projection energy. This world is basically the soul doing like this. The soul doing like this. So that it can jump up high. That's what Christ represent. Christ came down onto the earth. He went down into hell. For he can launch back up. Into the heavens. All of those dudes. Enoch and all of them. Had to be born on the earth first. Before they was launched to the heavens. To understand that, that they were gods in the heavens. And that's because. Basically to understand up. You got to explore the nature of down. We're inside of a paradox. Meaning. If you really want to understand left. 
then you actually going to study right. And when you decide to understand right, you don't even look at right. You go to study and left. The best way to understand how light behave is by studying shadows. The opposite of light. Crazy thing about this, right? This earth is us being born into a underside to prepare us for the upper side. And this is a place of preparation. And you cannot leave here until you're prepared. And now everything happens in this world is to make you prepared. Which is why we say everything happened for a reason. And the reason is so you can be prepared. Now look, when we look at this image of Enoch, if we flip, let, let's go to the whiteboard one time. I got to do a little etymology to tie this in. All right. Enoch is inky. If you rearrange these words, you'll get Enoch, which is Enoch, Enoch, which is the root word of Anunnaki. Anunnaki is a play on Enoch, and all of these names are associated with guys who go to the heavens. The Anunnaki are sky gods who know how to travel in and out of these sky vaults in the heaven. That's what the Anunnaki are. One of the Anunnaki is the god Anu, which is the root word of Anunnaki. Let's pull him up real quick, please, shall we? And let's see if he look anything like Enoch. I bet you you're going to have a revelation here. Look at here, guys. Look at, look at here. This is the God Anu, which is the word Anunnaki, because a Naki is a Nagini. It's a genie trapped in a bottle. If you look at the Hindu Naki, it is a serpent god wrapped up in a circle. You see the circle? That is, this is a Naki. So when you say Anunnaki, it's a genie. The Naki is the genie. The Naki is the nigga. The Naga is the genie. The Najini. As you see here, the genie. That's the Naki. Now look at him. Anunnaki. He's a genie coming up out of a lamp, y'all. And the lamp is the world, which is Jonah coming up out the well. Now let's go back to the whiteboard, because why? The word Jonah is also the word genie. And I can give you several more. Jonah, Janus, Genie. All of those are different gods that represent your light being stuffed inside of the body, which is the bottle that houses the genie. The bottle, the body, and the light inside of it is the genie. And when that light comes out of the body, it will look like the god Anu bursting up out the heavens with his wings on. 
what he's bursting out of is his own skull. Like I told you earlier with the pilot cockpit seat. When he died, that triggered the ejection button and it made his soul it, it, it activate the wings to allow him to beam it up out this bitch. Jack coming out the box. And he realized that this world only exists inside of his body. And that when the light that was inside of his body leave his body, then the body is in the ground and it's not even, the world don't even exist to the body no more. Because when the body is uncut, the body come back, goes back to being just dead matter. And you're not this dead matter. It's like a robot. It's like a... When they show you the Chucky doll, when the dude put the spirit in the Chucky doll, you the spirit, not the doll. The doll is just some matter that's going to bow. It's, it's, it's lifeless. It's just biodegradable matter. It's going to deteriorate. But the light in it is what kept it from deteriorating. The light inside of you is infinite. It can't die. Which is why long as that light inside of the body, the body can't die. Soon as that light leave the body, the body dead. Because that light is life. You never lose your life. You just lose your body. And when you learn how to lose your body, you won't be scared of death. Jesus wouldn't. How do y'all worship gods that spit in the face of death and you don't talk like me like a big boy? Don't you know my greatest thing that I want to do when I die is do it with a smile joking in front of my folks? Can, do you know how that's going to fuck your family up like a, when you take that medicine like a big boy? And you gonna, do you know how much strength that's going to give your family when they see when the doctor say, well, yeah, he only got a week left and you there like cracking jokes and shit? Yep. Yeah. It won't matter because in a week I'll be gone, nigga. <laughs> they like, boy, you still stupid even though you dying. Nigga, I ain't dying. I'm, I, you going to meet me on the other side. You niggas coming to join me. That's how I'm going to be talking. All that gloomy shit, get that away from me. Please, that's going to make my spirit fucked up before I die. Make me all scared and shit. No, just let me go like that. But But yeah. So that's how the ancestors went, like how they go in Louisiana. But now check this out, y'all. So this showing you resurrection. This God is getting up out the grave, and, and, and this is the whole sky vault that we showed in the Hebrew cosmos earlier. I put that up earlier, the Hebrew cosmos. He's emerging from up out of the vault of heaven up here. It's going to give off a sound that is the loudest sound in the universe. Your soul is going to create the same amount of energy that was created during the Big Bang. And that energy is going to allow you to blow a hole through the ether. And that's your way out. Everybody that's dying, they see a white light in the sky. That's your way out. You're doing that. They don't know that they doing that. Let me show you something. That's your light that you making. When we get out of our body, think about it. Right? It's like when you leave the land and you jump into the water. You create a boom in the water. On the land, it just sounds like a little psh. But if you was a fish in the water... That shit sound like a nuclear explosion every time somebody dive in. Every time a baby is born on this world, from the heavenly realm, it, it ain't no loud noise. But on a, on, a micro, on a micro realm, it's the biggest sound in the universe. And a doctor would tell you that every baby, the light of its conception is equivalent to the Big Bang. Not a sound that it make is equivalent to the Big Bang, but that sound is so loud that it's inaudible. 
Did you hear me? Yes, producers know what I'm talking about. A sound can be so loud that your ear just don't even register. It's mute to you. Now, isn't that weird? And we're still researching inaudible sounds in science. They don't even fully still understand them. You know why? Because that's the unseen world. It ain't really loud when you get to the other side. It's some sounds that I can play on my computer right now. Y'all won't be able to hear them. But guess what? A dog will. A baby will. It's some sounds on a computer right now that if I hit play on it, it'll make my sound meter go into the red, but you don't even hear nothing. But guess what? You might have just broke your dog eardrums. You might have just shattered some insects' eardrums who hear into that dimension. But you don't hear it. And this is how our realities are separated. But what I'm showing you is sound can move water. You know, like if you put a bucket of water next to a subwoofer, it'll start to make the water move. And sound can create a portal through water. Sound can act like a drill that allow us to pierce through the ether with a sound wave. I hope you understand what I'm saying. When they say we breaking the sound barrier, it's because you got to reach a certain volume. And that volume is equivalent to a certain speed and a certain brightness of light that would allow you to shine through or pierce through this realm. And we only produce that when we die and when we born. And it is so strong that the energy of it is, it ain't registered in this world. Every time a baby is conceived, we should be hearing a nuclear explosion. But you know what? That would disrupt life on the earth. So the human body is a shield that's shielding us from the spiritual energy that's controlling the physical plane. And that spiritual realm is just what we call in the realm of the dead, the realm of the inaudible sounds. Now, we're building equipment that's going to allow us to interact with that realm. I'm showing you this nuclear explosion so you can see what the God uh, 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 Anu represents. His body is taking the shape of an explosion. You see it? So is Ma'at. So is Shu holding up Nut. This shows you what Shu represent. When you see Shu holding up the dome, which is Nut, yeah, this is the Unk as well. If you pull up the Unk, this is Big Bangism, y'all. And they're hiding it behind this shit called realism. Realism. All right? Now let's get into the symbols on the thumbnail to show you how this tie in and start blending this together. If you look at this unk right here, it is just a big symbol of how energy dissipate. It's a symbol of life, the tree of life. Now let's talk about this part real quick. This is the symbol of realism. A lot of folks would say, why would Kanye West get in trouble by posting that symbol? Why would Kanye get in trouble? Kanye posted the symbol on the left, but the symbol on the right is realism. Why would Kanye do that? And why would they persecute him for sharing his religion? He might be into realism. People, what it really is, is it's a circus. It's symbolism, and they getting us ready for the alien invasion. Kanye is talking all the knowledge of global warming, aliens, and everything to get, see, these folks is about organ harvesting. They are opening up portals in the sky right now, y'all, with blue beam technology. Watch this. When people become holograms, you're going to be able to walk through those portals. You see these port that people are seeing these portals in the sky all over the world. This is a becoming a common phenomena. 
This was one of my favorite ones. This showing you what the Milky Way galaxy is. That's what I want to get into. Because when you get into the Milky Way galaxy, right? First of all, remember I was telling you about the cowboys? I forgot to put this up there. Here go they God right here. So you can see the symbol that we talking about. This is literally the golden calf that Moses was representing. Now, Moses was able to separate the waters from the waters. What does that mean? Using sound weapons to open up the ether. And we're getting into that now. We're becoming masters of sound weapons. Look at what the military got. The world is going into where the Egyptians left off at when they was cheating death which is why all of our science is, is trying to cheat death, human avatars, pop smoke. When you die, your rapper becoming a hologram. It's soul harvesting. They got that man's soul in a box, and he can only come out to perform. He's an eternal slave. That's on some Ghostbuster shit. These people been doing this thing. Now look at what's on his chest, the symbol on his chest right there. Look at this little Saturn symbol in the middle of the star. That's what I was showing y'all earlier. That little symbol that you see in his chest, that little Saturn symbol, let's go back to that because it's all about the symbolism. I got to clean my board real quick. Remember this symbol here? This is the symbol they was worshiping in the Mesopotamia. And here go the Big Bang. Remember, when you look at this symbol, you're looking at the UFO ship, the mothership, or the cowboy hat. But now, look at the middle of the cow god, though. That's what I keep telling you guys. When you go back to the cow god, all right, let me, I lost my image. Let me go back to it. Sorry about that. Too much stuff open. All right, hold on a second. I must have closed. My bad, I closed it out by mistake. Yeah, let's take a look at this This. The, what, the, the cowboys worshipped the golden cow. And they science was associated with their God. And if you look at the symbol that's on his chest, he's personifying the Big Bang. This God is, when he say, I am the light. I am the light of the universe. Look at what's on the man's chest. Look, you see this symbol on his chest right here? With the light coming from around it, look at it. This same Big Bang symbol, it's a religion. All of y'all believe in the Big Bang theory and you think you scientific. Man, the Christians got a belief too. Show me the facts, nigga. You believe in the Big Bang. Where did the light come from that started the Big Bang? Where did, this shit, where did that shit come from? See, that's the part. They, they don't want to mention God. They don't want to mention an intelligent design. Or it just happened. See, shut your scientific dumb ass up. Now, check this out, y'all. Since science don't want to acknowledge a divine power... Science are a bunch of fucking dummies trying to play like they're divine power with technology. And that technology ain't sustaining the earth, it's destroying it. So they can play God, but they ain't doing a good job. Now, it's like letting a child play parent. They ain't gonna do a good job. That house gonna go to hell in a handbasket. Now, look at here. This symbol on his chest right here is the Big Bang symbol, folks. You see it? There's another God personifying this. His name is Ahura Mazda. Let's pull him up. He's showing you the Big Bang. That's why he's blue. Now, all of these gods are blue. 
just like Krishna. You know why? You're your own Big Bang, dude. You the bomb. Your birth was an explosion of light. And that light was used to project a simulation around you and project you inside of your own simulation. And that you is the body. The mind is projecting the world around itself. And it built the avatar in that world and got inside of the avatar to explore the world that it projected. But it projected that world in the same spot as everybody else that's living on this earth. So we all got combined. We're combining our worlds to make one big world. When the ancestors said all is connected, this is what they was talking about. And when we have a birthday, we put on a birthday hat. The, the, the shaman hat is a triangle with a dot at the top. The dot is the source of light. The triangle is the projection of the light. Okay? So when you look at the Pharaoh with the big long hat on with the dot on it and with the light projecting down, he's teaching you what I'm teaching you, man. Now, all of these gods are associated with the sky opening up, with separating the waters from the waters, with opening up the sky vault and allowing the mind to wander in between the dimensions. That's what made them gods. You ain't no god if you don't know how to travel outside the body in the astral realm. So now check this out, y'all. This what the Pharaoh became a god through cheating death. We can all cheat death. Death has no victory over us. Just like the Bible say, once we activate this eternal part of ourselves, if we only bound to the body, that's the part of us that die. Why don't we attach to the part of us that don't die? And that's when we become immortals. So check this out, y'all. If you look at the Pharaoh, there's an opening in the sky that he's speaking about ascending through. And that's the same story of Enoch. Let's look at him. And that opening is what, how we get the UFO concept today, the light of the ship, of the UFO ship. So what's allowing Enoch to ascend to the heavens? We don't know how to fly. Enoch ain't leaving the earth in his body. Enoch's body is down on the earth in a deep sleep, and his soul is ascending to the heavens. Just like John on the island of Patmos when he had his revelation. He didn't have that revelation in his body. He met with God on like the third heaven, the fourth heaven, outside of his body, because these heavens are different ethereal realms like an elevator system where we can project into our lower bodies and higher bodies. You see what I'm saying? So uh, we got Enoch here ascending through the sky vault. We also can show you ancient Hebrew artwork that I'm going to load up here in just a second and show you that this is not no concept that's exclusive to Enoch. This was the ancient sciences before it became realism. When Enoch was meeting up on different dimensional shelves, he go to different dimensional shelves. Right here, this is Mesopotamian cosmology in the bottom right. So Christ is Kreese. This little split that we see in the middle of all the ethers is what they're personifying as Christ or Kreese. Christos, right? The God of the uh, crossroads, which is right here. Now, but let me show you more, more of them. I ain't done. This concept of Enoch ain't exclusive to him. Check this out. Here is ancient Hebrew artwork showing us the seven heavens and a soul. A soul is going up through the sky vault. A soul is going up through the sky vault, man. I can show you in Samaria another version of it, too.
Look, here go a dude being born up out of the Babylonian tower. You see his soul ascending like Enoch up out the tower. The tower is this earth, man. We're inside of, this is the tower. This is what a inside of a fucking whale's body look like. I keep telling y'all about Jonah and the whale, that the word Jonah is the word genie. And I'm going to prove that too with uh, sacred geometry about Jonah and, and that the whale is the world. And then I'm going to show you something about Travis Scott that's going to mess you up. Now check this out. That's Travis Scott concert at the bottom. Astroworld. Travis Scott named his concert Astroworld. And he told the people that died, I'm going to see you on the other side. You know why? Because Travis Scott on the stage, his spirit ain't in that body. A lot of these rappers already left the earth. And they on the other side with Yahweh, with Elon. And all the tech gurus, they already preparing a place for us like what Jesus said. When we think these niggas are clones and that these rappers go to acting funny and shit, it's because they ain't in their body no more. They done left this earth already with the BCI brain computer interfaces. With that, that technology already exists. These dudes are aliens. And they telling you, I'm going to see you on the other side. The only way you can access it is through death. But that Travis Scott that performed that Astro World wasn't, he wasn't in that body. That's why he was acting so weird and shit. He was already on the other side. I mean, the people that was going, see, when the people at that concert died, they were sucked into this little portal that you see here. Now, a lot of folks say, well, you on some crazy shit now, Brother Sanchez. But, dude, look at this right here. You don't understand this spiritual technology, light and vibration can soul harvest with that. And what was at the concert? A bunch of light show with the fire, all the lights going with the vibration, the music. Light and vibration and you can soul harness because them people are already connected to his energy. They his slaves. They his fans. So... When you think about all this, man, this been going on. Look, 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 look. Uh, Jonah and that whale, the inside of a whale body, look just like that with the rib cages. It looks just like our flat earth, man. Jonah inside of that whale body is really them talking about you in, on, in this earth, man. That whale is the where, world. The world is the whale. And the reason that they call it a whale is because this. Let me show you. Now think of a big pretty whale looking at you with cross eyes. And that'll be this cosmos. See, our earth look like a whale. And the two eyes is the sun and the moon. And you know how the whales shoot up the spout out the water out the spout? That's the vault of heaven. So when Jonah gets spit out the well, that's how you're going to look when you leave the earth. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. You ain't going to get this stuff nowhere else, man. Support the show. We're going to go deep into Jonah and the whale. This is a fractal code of how our spirit enters and exits the earth. Like I said, the name Jonah is the name genie. He's a genie inside of a lamp or a Jonah inside of a whale or a human inside of a world or the G in the middle of the square and compass because that's the God. You're the God and goddesses having your experience. And the God wears the Pharaoh cat, the tinfoil hat. And look at what kind of hat that the G wearing. You need to pay attention to these symbols, man. Look at what the G wearing on his head. A Santa Claus hat, a cone head. 
The G represents you in the middle of the light matrix. Here it is right here. The square and compass is the, the triangulation of that light around his body, and the circle is the compass. So around here, he's trapped in a light matrix. The circle got him sandwiched beneath, and the cone got him capped in uh, uh, around him. And here go the uh, ceiling with the light. So only way he can get out of that is become light. Like I was saying earlier. That's So when Jonah comes up out the whale's spigot, he didn't come out the whale's mouth. It, either way he comes out of it, you get the point. I don't want to make a big deal out of that. No matter whether he come out of which one. But yeah, so but the G inside of there is, is you, God. Jonah is God. G, that G is genie. So the genie is blue, right? Now, what color is it on the inside of that square and compass? Blue. What color is all these gods? Blue. What color is this chart right here dealing with the pineal gland and the mind? Blue. That G means genie, which is God inside of the trap. Now, how do we get out of here? Through the sky vault. It, the, the, it's pointing the way out with the cone on your head. Look, you see this cone on top of God's head? That's the unicorn. Here he go right here. He's the G, God on earth. And here goes cone right here on his head. This is the knowledge, y'all, that I'm, I've been trying to wake folks up to. Now, now let's go ahead and, and move forward with this. Jonah genie concept and we got most stuff because we can see this all over man now Enoch is inky the Sumerian god inky he's associated with the same concepts and like I said inky Enoch Anu Anunnaki all of it the same thing it's the same thing so here we go with inky I'm excuse me here we go with Enoch here we go with Aten and who else we got? Let's come on. Who else we got in the lineup? That go Anu. Everybody busting through a sky vault. Everybody got their arms open, lifted up toward the heavens on some sky vault shit. And everybody think that you got a different religion. Now let's look at these portals. These portals that they opening up in the sky might not mean nothing much. But when humans become holograms, these are going to be portal points. Let me share with you what they experience, what, what they experimenting with. Now, now watch this because this part going to blow you away. By the year 2100, humans are going to be a cheated death, and we're going to be living in avatars, not in bodies. Everybody going to be like pop smoke. I I've been teaching y'all about this and teaching you about it. Everything that's happening now is to get us ready for this ultimate point. Right here. This is what they're trying to do. They trying to cheat death by getting us out of the body and into patented holograms that they own. Imagine your mind being in a hologram that's created by Bill Gates. They're building a gate for your soul. This is damnation. They telling you once you get inside of this hologram, you will be immortal because they don't want to tell you you will be condemned. You won't be able to lead this bitch no more. You trapped now. This soul harvesting. Now, guess why I'm showing you this, y'all? When everybody is a holographic avatar, then this shit will make sense to you. People won't need cars when we are holograms. You will be able to beam yourself through a checkpoint system. And Makakaku already been teaching y'all about that. Drop a one if y'all been following me. When I've been showing you Makakaku, showing you about the checkpoint beaming system. Drop a one if you've been following me on that so I don't got to be redundant. Now, if I get a lot of ones in the chat room, I can keep moving. I ain't got to be redundant and keep repeating myself with Makakaku. I think most of y'all remember that.
Yeah, Genesis is genie. That's what I'm saying, Davey. When you say Genesis, you're saying genie. Genesis. The beginning is the beginning. The gen are the genie. These are souls that the, what they call in the Anunnaki is the gen. And when you say the beginning, everybody starts off as a gen or genetics. Gen, genie. All right. So, yeah. These sky portals that they experiment with are going to be wormholes in the near future when people are holograms, they ain't going to be walking around and driving in physical cars and walking on physical fucking sidewalks. The hologram will be able to project itself right in front of your face from the nearest beam point in the sky, like a cell phone system with satellites. But they ain't got satellites. They got satellite balloons, right? But check this out. When you have a bunch of these portals scattered throughout the place, it's like cell phone towers for dead folks. They can beam in anybody area as long as it's a working portal in that area. They, they can beam in and out and project themselves in and out. This is where we're going. People may not understand what these portals in the sky are, but they are no different than what the Milky Way galaxy is supposed to be. The concept of let me let me let me let me just go into this real quick. Go into this real quick. These portals that you see in the sky are ripple effects. Just like the Milky Way galaxy, man. And what that like when you throw a rock into some water, you get a ripple effect. But when we talk about piercing through the ether, you can't throw a physical rock through the ether. You now got to create a, a concentrated light, which would be a beam, right? That's all a beam is. And once you get that thing to a high concentration, it can pierce through the ether. And once that light makes contact with the ether, it will create a ripple effect just like a rock dropping in water because these are the nature of the waters above and waters below, the heavens. Now, when we die, we make the same pattern because the energy inside of our body creates a beam that makes contact with the sky and we get this like elevator above our head. Well, if we want to leave the earth, we can leave. But if we don't leave in a certain amount of time, that portal will close and you will be born again on this earth or you will be a wandering soul trapped in like the astral realm that's inside of this earth and until you able to get enough energy charged back to open that portal again. That this thing will fade away over time, just like when you drop rocks in the water the ripple pattern will fade away over time. It ain't going to stay there forever. These portals ain't open forever. And these portals open and close at different times with eclipses and shit like that. But what I'm telling you is that we all got the technology in us to open up the portal. And that's through life and death. So when people die, the energy, their energy leaves their body like this blue beam. All right. You see this blue beam leaving the earth? And going to the heavens, that's like a ghost, a human ghost. And when it make contact with it, because your spirit is so powerful, it can pierce through the ether and it make this ripple effect pattern. It's like a, 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 a fish diving in the water. Your soul will leave this earth and plunge into the heavens like psh, swimming. And so when you see the night, all of our ancestors personified our souls with a tail on it. You know why? Because your soul is a swimmer. The sky and the ocean are the same. A fish in the ocean with fins ain't no different than a bird in the sky with wings. They both flying. If I told you that the bird was swimming and the fish was flying, you would say, boy, you stupid. 
but I'm not wrong on that. The fish is flapping its fans through the water exactly how the bird is flapping its wings through the air. So what do fish and, fish and birds both got? A tail on them. And what do your soul got? A set of wings and a tail on it. Because it moves through the heavens on the same way. So the concept of the genie having wings and a tail and all that shit is 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 because of what I'm telling you, man. On a on a ether, this little blue light, that's the genie going back home. They call it blue bean technology, but this blue little light that you see is literally what the, is personifying the genie. When the genie leaves the earth, this is what the pattern what he make when he plunges up out of this bitch and that become the pattern of Saturn the Lord of the Rings so whenever you pull up the Nagini you will see him wrapped up in his tail making that pattern let's do it again you see it here that's how they come up with the Milky Way Now, if you look at this pattern, though, that they making, it's nothing but it's nothing but the Fibonacci spiral, <coughs> and this ain't none but them personifying the sperm cell. See, the ancestors call the sperm a serpent. They call the sperm a today we say sperm, but back then they caught that with the word sperm and serpent got the S, E, the R, the P in it, spur. See, the S, P, and the E, and the R in the word sperm is literally derivatives of its old, what we used to call the sperm, the serpent, or the seraphim, right? But so, not another word is the genie or the genetics, a new genetics, his genetics. It's just them personifying the sperm because they knowing that a person's soul is just born over and over again and that there's medical language for birth. Today, we genetics, it got the word genie in it, right? And I'm showing you the connection between it, all, but the heavens and the earth. Like our birth ain't separate from our soul and God. And all that. So when we debating about religion and science, that's ignorance. That's I, I got to get away from that because smart people are are uniting them together. And it ain't just me showing you the unity between religion and science. Hell, science and religion have fucking united together. Look at this. When science fiction meets reality, that's basically saying when science and religion come together, Science going to be getting into trying to use technology to manifest religious goals, such as creating heavens, which is metaverses. Right. And Jesus told you he was going to make you a body white as snow that can't die. And basically, Jesus said he going to make you cheat death, show you how to cheat death. And, but science is doing it. Science is carrying out a religious agenda. And y'all don't see science and religion has united to harness the soul of man. Y'all debating on which one we need the most when I'm, sh <coughs> I'm showing you <coughs> throughout history how they all been together. Now, the people got to come together. The debates got to stop and people got to start talking like me, which is intelligent, smart, saying how they both the same. Now, check this out, guys. That ripple pattern that you see in the sky became the whole Saturn concept and all that. Now, let's tie this home. You see that, that the genie inside of the ripple pattern, the blue genie inside of the ripples. Again, what we see in the sky with the sky portal is them showing you how you return home through the heavens, just like Enoch and all them showing you the sky vault. I just showed you they trying to copy this technology with blue bean people saying sky portals in the sky because they trying to harness the energy that's gonna allow them to open up the ether but that energy is inside of us we don't need technology when we die we open up the portal anyway 
And that's what this image show that we are the blue beam technology. That's what the genie represents. Now, if you take the word gene, G E N E, right? And, and you know that that's the word genie and the word genetics. Like, y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, check this out. The genie got on the same hat that the Pharaoh wearing. Because the Pharaoh is, is showing you he created the technology to put the genie in a fucking lamp. He created the technology to trap the genie in a lamp, man. Why is the Pharaoh wearing the same hat that the genie wearing right here? And they both got the light around them. Why, why, am, why am I able to point this out everywhere? Because it's dealing with the zombie. Again, zombie is the word zambi or zumbi. And this is the West African oldest God, a God that get up out the grave. That's what Jesus is. That's what Lazarus is. I told you that the word Lazarus is Lazarus because a laser is a beam. How did they make Lazarus get up out the grave? With laser beam technology, just like they did with pop smoke right here. Forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. Everybody in the ancient world was trying to cheat death. That's all of the smartest people was together trying to cheat death. When you got these pictures of the fucking mummy wrapped up in all white, with his hands like this, that's the same shit as Jesus on the fucking cross in a white robe with his hands like this. The religion was called zombieism. The God, that's what I'm calling it, zombieism. Because the name of the God was called Zambi, and that became zombie. The Spanish people called him sombre, and they wore a hat to worship him called a sombrero. Everybody was celebrating this new technology that these wise men created that allowed them to cheat death. And we just now bringing that technology back right now. Here is the white robe that Lazarus and Jesus wore. Here is the white robe that the mummy got on. Here is the white robe that, uh, that, 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 that everybody wearing, that the ghost is wearing when he get up out the grave. Casper got on a white robe. It's made out of light, man. Look at Pop Smoke. Now, let me go here real quick to show you what a concept of the mummy you being wrapped up in the light and all that because they got the mummy wrapped up in the white little white bandages. Wrapping up the man in the white bandages is the secrets of holiness. That's why all of these people got on a white robe when they resurrected. Jesus, Lazarus, Pop Smoke, everybody wearing all white. And it then Jesus said that it can't get a stain on it. This is the, the this is what we're dealing with. Look, this dude right here is a hologram. And look, don't he look like a mummy? You know how they wrap up the mummy in the white bandages? And and he get up out the grave. That they lying to y'all. It wasn't no white bandages. The pharaohs was into the secrets of plasma and the studying of the ether. They knew how to wrap your ass up in an avatar. Now, let me show you something. Boom. Look at this shit. Here go the real mummy right here. What they trying to do with this technology, man. The human hologram. This is what it means to be wrapped up in the white. Uh, robe and wrapped up like the mummy wrapped up in the white bandages this is how they wrap him up it ain't no physical bandages it's made out of light bro they don't want us to know that today 
because they reverse engineering that technology. They don't want you to know that this was the foundation of all the world religions. Look at the, the, the light source that's projecting hollow, uh, that's projecting pop smoke onto that stage. It's showing you what our electromagnetic energy field is. Your fucking body is an electromagnetic projection just like pop smoke. I was teaching this the other day. This is how they get the Pokemon ball. You're the Pokemon monster inside of the Pokemon ball. And when you ready to get released from the well, like Jonah, they gon your light gonna fucking beam up out this bitch. Look at this. When they open this Pokemon ball up, light gonna shoot out of that shit. Here it is right here in ancient Christianity. Look at it. This became the Statue of Liberty or the crown of thorns. It's the projection of light. And we can see that around the Pharaoh on this image with the Pharaoh. We can see it right here with Krishna. We can see it right here with Aten. We can see it right here with Jesus. We can see it right here with you. Now let's get it. Let's get it. Let's show you the Pokemon means a pocket monster. And the, the game that we play called Pac-Man, that's the American version of Pokemon. The one that's gobbling up the little balls. Look at this here. Cracking an Easter egg is literally the same concept of opening the Pokemon ball or opening up the cube and allowing Jack to come out the box. Remember, Jack in the box, Jack is the word yoke. So you letting the yoke out the box. You leaving the world is you leaving your body. So the whole world is opening. Your world around you is projected by your own mind. And when your mind leave your body in death, this world going to fade to black. And out of the darkness will emerge a new world. And you will find yourself in a new body. This is a continuum. This soul is leaving one world, and when it get out of that bowl, it's going to be inside of a bigger bowl. Then it's going to leave, when it outgrow that bigger bowl, think about what I'm saying here. This little white ball is your soul. When it breaks out of this little Pokemon ball, it's going to be in a bigger world. And guess what it's going to have to do to break out of that world? Expand itself. It got to grow. When your mind outgrow this world, it's going to crack the shell open and you're going to die at that point. Ain't that no reason for you to be here no more. And once you, like Samson, pushing the pillars back, you're going to rip through this thing like opening up a curtain upon death and see what's behind it. And, and at that point, you're going to see that it was a bigger world than this one. Housing this little bitty world. And when you outgrow that world, you're going to bust through that one. And it's going to keep making you grow up. This is like when a caterpillar go in a cocoon, as it grows and transforms to a butterfly, it outgrows the cocoon. And when it get real tight and uncomfortable in there, that wakes the fucking butterfly up out of its sleep and make it fly away. It got to get uncomfortable and tight in the cocoon. And then it break out the cocoon as a butterfly. That's what's happening in the world right now. This world ain't comfortable right now. It don't supposed to be comfortable. The Mayans said that we're in a, uh, we're a generation that's going to, each generation got the mature in spirit. The body is like training wheels. And when we grow up, we don't need training wheels no more. We can ride without training wheels like the big boys. So when we get out the body, we getting rid of the training wheels. You don't need training no more. You're becoming a baby God. <laughs> this earth experience is getting uncomfortable. It's a lot of war. It's a lot of drought. It's a lot of famine. And it's all happening for a reason.
because just like the caterpillar, that cocoon getting uncomfortable is getting tight up in there because it's growing. They call it global uh, overpopulation. It's getting tight on this earth. It ain't space. It ain't enough room. It ain't enough. And then that's when people start waking up, man. We start waking up saying, wait a minute, something ain't right. Just like the caterpillar in the cocoon. It go to waking up saying, something ain't right. It's hella hot and tight in this bitch. And when it wake up, it does this and it say, oh shit, I got wings. And it flies away. But it got to get uncomfortable and, and, and tight up in there for it to say, break out that shit like Samson and fly away. That, and then it's going to realize, wait a minute, I'm in a bigger world. Yeah, you got room to grow. And when you outgrow that world, boom, you're going to break through that one. And this is a continuum of making sure you become a giant. You become expanded in your consciousness. You see what I'm saying? So the way this continuum was taught was that we're on an ascension up a stairway to heaven and it gets easier and easier the closer we get to the top. Now, let's go ahead and take this collage here and take it off. And we understand that this is the concept of the Pokemon ball. The electromagnetic field of the heart is a huge white light source that projected the body onto the earth. That's the light of conception. The light, the doc, when you was born, the doctor said we all emitted a light that's equivalent to the Big Bang. You can look that up. What happened to that light? Nothing happened to it. It's inside of you, which is why you should let it shine, man. Let your light shine. Don't try to be nobody else. Ain't nobody on this earth like Brother Sanchez. You wouldn't have never got to know Brother Sanchez if I didn't grow up. Because I was trying to be Nas and trying to be everybody else but myself. And when I became myself, that's when I blew up. When I was copying, trying to be all of my favorite rappers, that shit wasn't taking off. When I started being who I really know I am in my heart, Nigga, I freed myself from the world and did my and I got my own thing going. This is what you got to do. You can't be scared to be what you are. Now look at this image. This showing you how you gotta open up your heart. The heart is a treasure chest, and when you open that up, it's everything you need in there to get to the goal. All of this stuff, I didn't all of these talents I got to make collages and sacred geom. I didn't know that till I opened my heart. And when I opened up my heart, I, I didn't know I was a poet, a syncretist, a sacred geometry, a teacher. People be like, where you get all this information from? Nigga, I opened my heart, it, it's a chest, and I looked in there and the shit was there. And I'm sharing my gifts with the world. Now check this out. If you look at this electromagnetic energy field, it's showing you that the source light is the heart, which is why when our heart stops beating, we fade away. We fade away. Now look at this brother. He got a big bright white light in the middle of his chest. You see that? Now let's go back and look at Pop Smoke. Tell me I ain't a bad boy. You better, hey, tell me your boy ain't bad. Check out Pop Smoke. When you start studying the science of holography, you unlock the secrets of the electromagnetic field of the heart family. This bright white light that you see right here is what's responsible for your body manifesting. That's the source light that's projecting us into the holographic avatar called a flesh or a flash, which is a flash of light, it's gonna fade away. Look at this bright white light right here. If you wanna understand what we are as humans, understand what pop smoke is right here. It's the same science that they reverse engineering, and you can even see the Pokemon ball. Now drop a one if you can see the Pokemon ball, because when they open up the Pokemon ball, 
a little monster come out and start dancing. His name Pop Smoke. Look at him. The Japanese used to tell this story uh, thousands of years ago in their folklore. And we know how technologically advanced they are. This your Pokemon right here. You can see the circle, the line, and the little bitty button that right there, which is what you press to open it up to let them in and out. That's the source light. This is how you get the Pokemon concept. We are fucking uh, like Pokemon genies in a lamp, guys. And they finding that out and they reverse engineering it. So when they open that shit up, just like in Ghostbusters, what I was telling you, when they open up the black box, it allowed a ghost to come out and talk to him for a minute. Then when they threw talking with him, they shut his ass back up in prison. In the movie Get Out, it shows you what Pop Smoke Soul is going through. Don't y'all sell y'all soul to these people. Because in that contract, they own your fucking uh, energy. They own your name, your energy, your essence. Dude, don't you know that's what your soul is, your vibration, your movement? Look at this shit with Pop Smoke, bro. Somebody own that. And they can open him up and make him go dance for you, give me the money, and put his ass back in his box. They want to own your soul. They don't, they tired of humans, man. They rather just download your essence when they need you and put your ass back in your box. Shut up. That's the where they going with it now. That's what slavery looked like in the future. It looked like you being allowed out of your box when we need you. And when we don't need you, we put you back in a dark spot like on a movie Get Out and we put your soul back in the box. Now, guess what? They showed you this in the movie Demolition Man. They had Wesley Snipes. And who else was in that movie? Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? Some white boy with Wesley Snipes. In Demolition Man, Wesley Snipes and the white boy was sleep for like hundreds of years in an incubator and they had a mission for them niggas and they woke them niggas up out the hundreds of years and Wesley Snipe and them was like how long have I been asleep and they was like for 10 centuries or some shit like that and they had to teach them how the world was now and all that and when they threw with you they just put you back in your incubator put you back to sleep they showed you that in Demolition Man yeah, with Stallone. They woke them niggas up. That's genies in a pod. Just like in the movie Matrix show you that. Everybody inside of their little Pokemon pod. And that's showing you what they trying to do with this technology right here, man. Once they get our minds in this hologram, oh, you through now. They can suck you up like Ghostbusters because light can't escape a black hole. That's why we shouldn't be trying to cheat death with the technology they're using. That's damnation. That's what the Bible told you. That Didn't the Bible say that the Antichrist was going to show up in the last days, giving people immortality, but it was going to condemn them? Where are my Christians at? Where are my Christians at? Who really read the Bible? Drop a one in the chat room if, if, if what I'm saying right. In Revelation, it say the Antichrist going to be giving people immortality. But because they took it from the Antichrist, they won't be able to go to heaven now. They condemned. That's literally what the Antichrist is technology, you fools. The Antichrist is science. Once you get immortality for them, you're going to be damned. They trying to condemn you. And so I'm going to tell you what I think. I think, and I hate to say this, man, but I think not only did Pop Smoke die, 
but they they trapped his soul. This happened to Michael Jackson. This happened to Tupac. All of the celebrities that became a hologram, I'm telling you, that's them people real soul, man. Now, folks going to say, bro, Sanchez, you really reaching now. Bro, that's just my belief. I believe that Pop Smoke is trapped. His soul is trapped in, that, in a black spot like on Get Out. And that the only way he can interact with any other people is when they let him out to do his show. Now, that's hell. They tell you that when these dudes die who sign a deal with the devil, that they go to hell. But let me go to the whiteboard because I got to show you what the word hell really is. Watch this. Now let me break this down to you. The word hell, it, hell is a hall. Hell is a place where people are being held against their will. Hell is hold. Now, hell to a genie would be the lamp that's holding it. Now, listen to me closely. A genie's lamp is brass. And guess what color the god Moloch is? Guess what he made out of brass? The genie inside of the lamp, the genie that's inside of the brass lamp, is you inside of the belly of the beast, which is this right here. We're in hell right now. And you're going deeper and deeper into levels of hell when you allow them to make you a hologram. You already a hologram. We're inside of this God right here. This was an incubator. Matter of fact, let me show you this God in another picture so you can see that he's representing the earth. You and the earth is you being inside of this golden cap. You see how it looked like the flat earth? The people worshiping the golden cap are the people that's worshiping the world, man. We don't supposed to be attached to this world. This world is a simulation. It's fake and it ain't the real world. So when we see people worshiping the golden calf, they literally worship in the fake world that we in, the chaotic world, the world that exists away from our true base reality. They worship in a simulation that was created by the Pharaoh that we're stuck in right now. And the only way out is death. Here it is right here. This shows you exactly what I'm looking for. Salutes whoever made this. Because this will show you the cube and the earth. We're in a simulation, the terrarium. Now look at this cube at the top. This is what they call in the James Webb telescope. That telescope is going to allow them to bring forth doomsday prophecies on the earth. When they say, hey, the James Webb telescope just spotted a comet and it's coming near the earth to wipe all life off. And what that's going to do is get us, this new religion is going to be doomsday and alienism. It's going to be a new form of fear mongering to control us with. And, and, and then to colonize the heavens. Because when they talking about we got to fight against the asteroids, it's giving them an excuse to colonize the heavens. To put technology in the sky that's going to be harmful to you. We don't see what's going on. If you look at this image, it show you that they are worshiping the simulation. Look at this star and look at what's on his chest, the same symbol. Let me show you something real quick about this earth, man, that's going to blow you away. Look, this dude built the infinity terrarium. Don't you know that our earth is an infinity terrarium? 
Let's take a little uh, break to look at this video. You see the six-pointed star? I want to salute this dude. His name is Ideal Idea. And he's finna give us the science of what I'm talking about, how we got parallel universes. Now, when he build this, and fit, look at this terrarium. You see it? It looks like a six-pointed star, right? Our Earth is a six-pointed star, fam. Look at it. You see that? We're in, and the cube is in the middle. The middle of the six-pointed star is a box, and that's where all of us are locked up in this box. The only way we can get out of this cube is to harness enough energy inside of us to open up the portal. When they talk about Saturn's cube, is Satan's cube, and you were born in it, dude. But you came into this bitch to fight, though. Don't be scared, nigga. If you inside of hell, don't you know it was because your soul said, nigga, I'm going in to fight. They ain't doing them people right. I'm going to go in this bitch, and I'm going to raise heaven because they raising hell. Like the concept of you being in the belly of the beast... Is is the concept? It's no different than you just a warrior, man. That's all I'ma say. Now check this out. You came in here to fight. Now check this out. This dude built an infinity terrarium. This gonna show you how our universe is a parallel got parallel universes. You build a base reality in the middle, and then you build a mirror matrix around it and you get an infinity terrarium. Now let's take a break real quick cause my stomach tight. I've been talking so long, three hours straight. And I'm glad that I get to go ahead and take a break, but it ain't really a break. This is part of my presentation. If you go away when I play this video, you're gonna miss something very important. Uh, and I'm not gonna play it all. I'm gonna play like half of it so you can see the concept. Let's go. The problem is with the film, thankfully, not the solvent. The way that this film works is that it allows a certain amount of light through it, or it's VTL. And for this stuff, it's about an 80-20 split, which is ideal for infinity reflections. However, this is not good for my custom lighting option. And that is because the lights are on the outside. Normally, this isn't a problem on the regular builds, since the lighting is internal. But... In order for him to build an infinity terrarium, y'all, he got to put the lights on the outside of it. You know why that's important? Let me show you why. Watch this. If you look at the stars, the sun, and the moon, they're not on the inside of our terrarium. They are projections from the outside. We are inside of the exact machine that he's about to build. Now watch what I show you right here. Before I go to the video, look at the sources of light on this chart. Ain't no light inside of our world. Everything he's saying, I'm showing it to you with flat earth. Look on the inside of our little terrarium. Ain't no light in there. All the lights that we see in the sky, they're not inside of our dome. They are projecting themselves into our dome from higher dimensions. Even the sun and the moon are projecting from the first and second and third heavens. There are no light, true light sources in this realm. Everything here is a projection from another realm. This is also something I think they call shadow theory to where they say that our re... Okay, here go the theory, right? The theory is that you know when we make shadow puppets on the wall, they're saying... We live in a shadow dimension to where we're the reflections on the wall, but we're not the source that's making them. You know how we make a shadow on the wall with our hands and shit? Our world will be the shadow version, but the mind is the real hand. But the world we live in is a projection of the mind, which means it's the Johnny come lately. It's the shadow. The light comes on 
first, see, the, the light is the cause of the shadow. The shadow ain't the cause of the light. When the light come on, it reveal the shadow. The shadow world is what we're in. They say that our world is only 1% matter and the rest of the universe is dark matter. You know why? That the real world is over there. What we call in dark matter, that's the real base reality that we fell from. This world, what we call in light matter, is the false light of Saturn creating a simulation. Behind this veil of light is the real universe, the big ass universe that we fell from. It appears dark to us inside of here, but there is no darkness. Everything you see dark out there is lit the fuck up for real. You have a veil over your eyes. And that veil is this terrarium that I'm showing you. The, the true light is on the outside of here, which is why to access your own true light, you got to go outside your own body. To access the light inside of yourself, you got to go outside of your body, which is you going out, out, outside of this world. Why? Because all of the true light exists on the other side and it's projecting itself down into this world as a form of a hologram, which is the false light. You see this right here? You're not the hologram, you the light that's projecting it. That's what I'm trying to show you. And this is why Mazda is blue. And this is why the Big Bang light is blue. He's personifying the Big Bang. Each one of us is a holographic explosion of light that is a merkaba of energy layered over one another to create this divine unified experience that we call the universe. I compared it to gaming and video games. This is what we are, but this is also what the earth is. So what are we saying? What I said earlier, like when the dude's standing on the stage in the spotlight, right? Let me go back to that. To show you what I mean. When the dude, all of us, see, because... All of us live inside of our own little spotlight. But everybody on earth and every animal is projecting its spotlight in the same space. So imagine a bunch of spotlights, not just his, but a bunch of them. And they all aim in a circle at the same place, combining their circles into one. And everybody get to be inside of this one space imagine a bunch of humans right inside of this circle with him but each one of them get inside of that circle from their own spotlight that beamed them into his same space and all of us beamed into this same circle from our own spotlight though and that one when everybody beam into this same circle it becomes compressed dense and it becomes this like all of us are our own individual macabre or spotlight. But then we blend them all together to make one big ass spotlight. And that's what I'm saying about the earth. The earth is one big ass infinity terrarium, tetrahedron. is one big ass macabre, like what we see here. But everything in the earth are little bitty macabres. And when you put all these little bitty macabres together and layer them in the same spot, it creates the big ass earth that we all enjoy. That's why when somebody die, another baby got to be born because it take everybody to make this shit. It take a set number to be able to maintain this shit. And even science say without a bunch of observers observing this place, it'll disappear. Our very existence helps create the simulation because we're projectors. We're helping project the world outside. We're all agreeing in a union to make it real. 
We're all agreeing among the language we use and the politics we govern with this place, which is why politics is, uh, that's another, I'm going to get with citizen, man. That's a religion that does uh, have a lot of dominion over how this earth is being terraformed. When I talk about politics, that's how I want to talk about it. Which politicians is instrumental in leading the terraformation process, the transhumanism shit? I don't want to do voting talking. I'm going to get with Citizen Man on that because that's going to be an important bill. Now, check this out, y'all. Let's play the video now because I'm talking too much. I think y'all get me. I'm being very thorough. Support the show, guys. Here we go. Since I have this wet environment, the lighting and wiring is all external, and the lighting will need to fight against the film, and it will reduce the effectiveness of the LED's ability to shine in and light up the environment enough. If you listen to everything he's saying, he's telling you the spiritual battle on our earth, man. We are inside of a terrarium, and we have been separated from the Most High God, right? We've been separated from God when we entered the simulation. And in order to reconnect with God, we got to battle the, that evil in this place. And, and, and when we battle that evil, it's going to allow our light to shine brighter. And when our light shine brighter, it pierces through the ether. He's saying that the outside light got to fight against the very technology to to illuminate itself that's fucking deep man think about that think about that think about that the light of heaven is trying to shine into this place to influence us and inspire us and the very simulation we in is fighting back and don't even want itself to be illuminated within that's the war that's taking place on the earth right now. It, they said that Bill Gates is trying to build a blanket to blot out the sun. So that's letting you know whatever source light trying to come into this thing to wake us up, they battling against that shit. Just like, that's why I looked at this man experiment because I'm subscribed to all of the nerd channels. I love tech. I can't lie. That's a paradox because I love technology so much that I hate it because when I fell in love with technology and started learning about it, I found out how it fought against my biology. So I'm fascinated with learning now how technology is fucking me up. <laughs> I'm still fascinated with technology. But now I'm just into, oh, how is that technology fucking my cells up? How is that 5G going to mess up the app? At first, I was just into technology. I was just a tech guru, you know. This is cool gadgets. But the more you learn, you still be in the technology. It's just you learning how the technology is attacking you, how it's waging war on you. Let's play the video. So if I thought of this sooner, I could have thought of a more elegant solution to this, but I think now the best course of action is to just cut a corner off of all of these so that the maximum amount of light is able to come into this through the LEDs. For the assembly of all these panels, I have been using these 3D printed guides along the way to at least try and hold the panels fairly close to where they should be connected since trying to eyeball 138.2 degrees would be a nightmare but i've already made this a nightmare since i didn't design in any tolerance to this whatsoever so everything has to come together perfectly whoops that was a little bit of an oversight but for the lid this is the only unique panel on here with just an inset hole cut out of it with more 3d printed parts to attach to it with an ergonomic grip on top and then more pieces to hold the panel to the 3d printed parts after putting I want everybody to watch this thing to the end because what he really finna show you is the secrets of our universe and the secrets of parallel universes. Now, what I got up here is the Hunap Ku. This shows you a bunch of parallel universes being born from one central universe in the middle. Let me see if I can find a better copy. 
because when we look at the Hunap coup, they're basically showing you what he's making. The six-pointed star macabre, that's what this is. The spiral at the middle is because that's the base reality. This Hunap coup is the Tibetan wheel, and it's the Mayan calendar and all that. What this uh, Tibetan wheel is showing us, all right, let's pull up one we can see good. It's showing us a bunch of parallel universes expanding from a central universe. And all of these parallel universes are triangles that are expanding from the center universe right here, the base reality. And when you look at this wheel and we go back to his infinity terrarium, you're going to see what he, when he finish it at the end. And, and when I compare it to the wheel of life, you're going to time together. You're going to see how the parallel universes are created from the base reality. Now, let's get it the final piece of the lid on, this thing is really starting to take shape. I can now start soldering all of the connections needed for the lighting on this, which will take a very long time. But while the sucker behind me works on that, I wanted to touch very briefly on the actual lighting itself. Now these are not specifically grow lights for plants, but I've read some articles in the past that makes it look like this will work for what I need on this project. And if you're thinking to yourself, he made it this far into a project without knowing if the most critical component would work, yeah, uh, welcome to the channel. But I chose these specifically because I can control pretty much everything about them. From their brightness to the amount of time that they're on, I can even give the plants a rave if I wanted to. There's flexibility built into this to make it work. Also, while I was waiting on everything to dry in between, I went ahead and printed out the base for this project. I originally thought I was gonna make it out of wood, but I figured, hey, I'll keep with the theme and make it 3D printed as well. And I can always make another base later if I wanted to. So the wiring is all done, and I definitely did not mess that up multiple times, but. By the way, just to uh, recap to let you guys know, we're talking about realism and Israel. This is part one, and I will be doing a part two where I go deeper into the two. Now, if you look at the symbols, that's what we're talking about right here. Hologram knowledge. All right. The knowledge of how to lead the earth. They turned it into ufology and spookism. But before that, it was spiritual, ascension, astral travel. All right, we're going to get into the modern UFO movement and show you how they're trying to dumb us down and take over. We're going to get into the Fibonacci spiral and show you why the symbol of realism have a spiral at the middle of a six-pointed star. That was the shit that Kanye West tweeted. Kanye West tweeted this symbol because he know about this stuff, because just like I told you about Travis Scott, Kanye been left this world. Kanye been left this world. These do, these gods ascend, just like Enoch. They ascend through the sky vault. They don't die. They are infinite deities. All of your celebrities and rich folks, they whoever part of this, these cults, they part of immortality cults, covens of witches that are interdimensional travelers. When they say we're traveling men, they tell you that. They say we're traveling men. They ain't talking about regular travel. They talking astral travel. That come from the word gypsy, which is what the Egyptians were about. Astral traveling, immortality. When you talk about realism, that's all it is. When you talk about Hebrew, the people from the other side, them the people in power, these archons that know how to be, in, they're interdimensional beings. We used to be what they are. Now they able to still do it, but they doing it with technology. When we do it, we gonna unlock the natural gift. That's what they scared of. They, they, they handicap themselves with technology and they trying to do the same with us, but we waking up though. But when you understand why Kanye West put that up there, what, what's the significance of a spiral in the middle of a six-pointed star? I just taught it to you, man. It's the Kundalini serpent in the middle of your fucking macabre. You feeling me? You feeling me? Check this out. Let's pull up that human macabre again. When you look at Christian artwork like this, 
They just showing you your fucking light body, your aura, your macabre. You get what I'm saying, bro? Let's pull it up again. And then we're going to go back to the video. This is your tetrahedron. You see the symbol for it? That's what you see around Jesus. Look at it. It's the Mercabian knowledge. And it's time that you get into it. Because you got a soul, man. And now parallel universes expanding from that soul. And that's why we got this image of all the parallel universes going back to the source light. That's what I'm trying to share with you, man. That's I've been teaching this the past couple of days. Now let's go ahead deep with it some more. Let's just show you something else. All right, so what's all right, again the question was what what's the significance of this six-pointed star with the spiral in the middle? What's the significance of that? All right, let's go back to the Merkaba, man. This is the significance. The six-pointed star is that X on your chest right there. Let's, let's show you. Let's show you. What's the significance of having a spiral in the middle of a six-pointed star? You, man. You the spiral in the middle of the six-pointed star. Why are you the spiral? Because when your light get trapped in the tetrahedron, it recycles through the center pole. And the recycling of your light inside of this tetrahedron is what's manifesting your fucking body, bro. It's what's manifesting your body. Look at how it look. This is what they showing you here. The spiral that's in the middle of the six-pointed star is the chakra system, the kundalini, because the energy recycles itself around the body and inside the body. This creates a code called ass within, so without, because it's recycling on the inside, it's recycling on the outside. That's what this star represents. It's one connected symbol. You know why? That's what the Taurus field is. Let me show it to you. This is just another way of them showing you this electromagnetic field. That's why they colored it blue. Why are they using the color blue in a lot of this art? Uh, all of these guys got the blue face like the rapper. Check that out now. This field can be seen right here. The swastika in the middle is man. It represents the human being, which is a vortex of energy. You see it right here. That vortex is what's allowing you to be in manifestation right now. And it's being created by the heart. And when the heart stop beating, this vortex is going to fade away and so will the human body. But guess what's going to still be standing now? That big bright white ball of light that you see. That big bright ball of white that, that light that you see going to be there. When everything else fade away. That, that source light is the eternal part of us. Now let's look at Pop Smoke. The light that's projecting his hologram is what we're calling the electromagnetic source light. Just like in the image I just showed you right here. You see the white ball on the chest? Now let's look at Jesus. Wow, man, tell me I ain't good. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus, y'all. Looking like pop smoke around this bitch. Come on. I told y'all niggas they ain't doing nothing new. Look at the white ball of light on pop smoke chest. Now let's look at your boy. These niggas ain't deep like me, man. Niggas get on my level. You niggas talking about where your source is at. Regurgitating shit that other niggas saying. You niggas are not on my level, bro. You can't do this with sources. The way that you can uncover the shit that I'm uncovering is with your mind, nigga. Not with no goddamn source. Open your mind, nigga. And until you do that, you ain't gonna do nothing but read me a bunch of shit that somebody else said. And when I show you something that my mind uncovered, you gonna say, what a source to that? I'm like, nigga, my mind. Use your motherfucking mind and you won't need sources, nigga. Please like.
like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe. When you use your mind, you'll become the source. When you use your mind, you won't need a source. You will decipher the motherfucking sources. You will decode the Bible, decode the Quran. You will break the mythology down and show the science behind it. But if you just relied on the Bible as a source, you wouldn't be able to do none of this. Y'all niggas use sources. And I beat up on sources. Think about this. I want y'all to know this. A lot of niggas made a career off of referencing white man sources. And I made my career off of beating up on the white man sources. Showing you the truth behind them and how he ain't nothing but a thief and a plagiarist. These niggas are not on my level, B. Straight the fuck up and down. Straight like that, nigga. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. All of the lights are now on and working. And I would like to say that the hardware is all on and it's perfect as well, but it's not. It's a lot more visually dominating than I was originally expecting. So I'm kind of scrapping that whole idea and I will just have to figure out something else instead. But we can move on now to the inside of the terrarium because I am now on a time limit since I've already acquired the plants. Although my sunburns have pretty much faded at this point, I spent pretty much half of my weekend hiking around and gathering miscellaneous items to put into the terrarium. Here's what I got. I found some wood with some pretty fantastic character to it a couple of different types of moss, a lot of dirt, some ferns, and really a bunch of other plants that I'm not very good at identifying. So hopefully someone more knowledgeable than me in the comment section can identify these and exactly what they are. A lot of it was really just hiking around and finding stuff on the forest floor that I thought would look pretty. Except for the mushrooms. I left all of those there, although there were some pretty cool ones. I also picked up some gravel for drainage and some petrified wood for some stone landscaping as well. So the general way a terrarium works is that there is a gravel layer on the bottom with soil in the middle and then plants on top. Simple, right? The water will trickle through the plants, through the soil, into the gravel, where it will be a drainage layer, and that allows the water to evaporate, condensate, come back down, cycle continues. Some people also include a layer right below the soil for activated charcoal, and I'm not using that for a very specific reason. I forgot to buy some. But I've seen some people say you need it, you don't need it, and really it kind of looks like it's more of a preference or not. So I'm just going to go without right now and that can be added in later as needed. Adding everything into the terrarium is a little tricky, but filling this part is even more tricky. Since this works best when there is a light shining inside and I don't really have that set up yet since I didn't like the hardware. So I have to film through one of the holes that's clear, but you can already see the kind of infinite kaleidoscope effect that this is having. Now after adding the first now, 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 check that out. Now, he's building a base reality at the center, but we don't live at the center reality. Imagine people living in this base reality right here in the terrarium, and they built technology to project themselves to the parallel universes around it. That's where we at with it. That's what I'm saying. Everybody trying to get back to the base reality of what we call the real world right here. In this world, deja vu don't happen. The reason deja vu happened in this particular universe is because we're in a yesterday universe. The, the, in the base reality, tomorrow already happened, man. Next year already happened. You're in a lagged universe. This universe is behind. We get glimpses of the future parallel universes with deja vu. Every now and then you find yourself in a deja vu moment where scientists are even saying, we remember the future like we remember the past. And that explains why the ancestors said the past, present, excuse me, the past and the future are happening at the same time. It's a version of you that's already 10 years in the future in a parallel universe. Sometime you project yourself into those parallel universes. When you come back to this universe, when time pass and that universe and that point in time catch up with this universe, you say, man, I'm having deja vu because you was already in the future. 
But when you got back here, you forgot that you went to the future because it ain't happened here, here yet. But when it happened, you remember, oh, shit. I, hey, I was here in the future. I'm having deja vu. So there are parallel universes all around us, y'all, created by time points and stamps. And that's what I'm showing you with this uh, experiment, how those parallel universes are projecting themselves around a the base reality. Let's get it. First layer of gravel, I added in a sheet of tinfoil with holes cut into it just to keep the soil separate from the gravel. By the way, if you put me in a room with Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'll make him look like an ignorant imbecile. Yeah, let me stroke my ego for a minute. Y'all see how deep I am? Y'all see how smart I am? Y'all see how I'm talking like this without reading nothing? It's just coming out of me because I really studied this shit and been doing it since I was young. A lot of niggas got to pull up sources because it ain't in them. I freestyle this shit. If you put me in a room with Neil deGrasse Tyson, I will make him look stupid as fuck sitting up there talking about diamond planets and gas nebulas when you boil up in there talking about parallel universes and holography, Mercabian motions. I'm up in this bitch talking about the Fibonacci and goddammit how light projects from source light. I'm going in this bitch representing the knowledge of the Maya, which is way over that nigga's head. Nigga, I will mop the flow with Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, 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 sell out ass. Him and a little Chinese dude and Bill not funny looking cartoon, colorful type, uh, clown suit wearing ass. Put all three of them niggas in a room with me and I make all of them look stupid, nigga. Gravel, but to still let water get through. I started dumping in the dirt and just kept adding the plants, moss, wood, and the stones as I went through. I didn't really have a plan for the inside. and Mainly, I just filled it out with whatever I thought would fit the space and give it some nice variety through all of it. I grabbed just enough plants to fill all of this out, but I probably should have grabbed more soil just to create some larger and different parts of terrain. I am just so happy with how all of this turned out on the inside, and I think I figured out a replacement for the hardware as well. That's called an infinity terrarium. Now they showed you this in the movie Inception. What happens at the end of the earth? Let me show you. When they was trying to project up out of that world, check this out. In this movie Inception, the sky start to bend up, nigga. Fold up, nigga, like reality start to fold over. Where's that scene at? Right here. You see it? This what happened in the Inception movie. <laughs> Somebody turned it to a, ta a table. I would definitely buy this table. I ain't gonna cap. I've, I'm fucking really digging this coffee table. And this coffee table is built from a scene in the Inception movie. What happened in the Inception movie to make the earth roll up like that? A wormhole was open. If you remember the movie, the dude was telling her to control her mind. She was opening up a wormhole and it was affecting the earth. This is what happened in Inception. Look. See, people, we watch these movies and we don't know it's science behind it. When you look at this thing on part of Inception, the wormhole is created by the bending of our holographic universe at the ends of it. And what that means is when we get to the end of our universe, the universe that we see reflected on the ground down here going to be reflected all around us on the side of the wall, upside down, just like we see in this terrarium right here. The base universe is right here. And then you got an upside down one, the, what they call in Stranger Things, the upside down. Them all are the projected universes because when they projected outward from Eden, they can only be projected like in a mirror 
mirror matrix to where it's polar opposite. So them going to be upside down. They always going to be upside down. And in those universes, guess what? Everything is backwards as hell. Evil is ruling. But in the base reality, everything is right side up and it's heavenly. It's Eden. We're back in heaven. It's balance. But when you leave Eden, it's chaos because you in the upside downs now. And shit is backwards there. But when you look at this matrix being projected from the base reality, here again, this is the Hunapku. This is what the ancestors were saying we live in. One of these terrariums. And it's projecting all of these parallel universes from the central one. Just like this right here. This is what realism is all about. They turned this wheel into a UFO ship and started dumbing this knowledge down into ufology. But to lead the earth, you got to lead a body. And that's something that I think Kanye West already did, man. Travis Scott did it. A lot of these celebrities and connected folks, they been left the earth. They on the other side waiting on us, just like Travis Scott told them people. What you see walking around as Kanye West is a fucking algorithm. A lot of these celebrities, they true essence and spirit already left. And an AI algorithm is simulating their consciousness. And it can be damn near 99% accurate just like them. But we're so fucking in tune as humans, that little 1%, we notice it. And we say that nigga a clone. That nigga right there ain't the real Kanye. That ain't the real Kodak Black. That ain't the real Gucci Mane. That ain't the real, we say this all the time. These folks can mimic your consciousness 99% and it'll be just like you up to, to a 99% point. But the human, listen, the human mind is so powerful that 1% will be detected like that, if you just a little bit woke. Because we under we can detect spiritual energy. You can, you, you can, if, if my spirit left my body and an AI took over, niggas would be like, some just ain't right about Sanchez. I think they cloned that nigga. That ain't him in that body. And it'll be acting just like me. But you won't feel the energy. That's because my soul gone. My soul gone. The AI can act like me, but it can't project feel emote energy like me and make you, when I say you feel me, dog, it can't be felt like me. And we actually notice that. We say, man, yeah, yeah, it, it talk like Gucci. It look like him, you know, to a degree. But it's just some about that nigga. Like it ain't the old Gucci. Some ain't, some off. We can never pinpoint it. It's because the essence is gone. The soul is gone. That's what you missing. The AI can't simulate that. So I do think that all of this is some truth to all of this stuff we talk about. And that these people call Israeli. When you say I'm a children of Israel, I'm a Hebrew. These are people from the other side. How were they able to traverse the dimensions with technology that the Hebrews had? The word brew means to stir something. What are they stirring up? Let me show you. I just showed you. I'll show you again. This is brewing. This is the witch brew. Hebrew. You know who funding all of this secret technology? The small hats. This is a religious order being carried out by our scientists to harvest the soul of man. When you talk about the witches that are stirring up the witch brew, bro, this with the stick that they use was a blue bean. This is the true thing about the people from the other side because they came here through the fucking portal that they opened up. And that portal is reopening at this time. 
because they asked about, they, they got to leave here. Let me share some with you. A couple thousand years ago, the Egyptians and Babylonians created some technology that allowed them to open up portals. Some beings, they allow evil to come into the earth. L listen to what I'm saying. There was a time on earth where there was no death. There was no destruction in war. When we start trying to play God, we created some technology that opened up a portal, and that's how Satan got on this earth, y'all. Ever since then, we've been trapped in this place with these beings that are not like us. They are not earth creatures. They are against the earth. They are against nature. Now, the Bible said that their time here is limited. Now, if you look at what's going on now, the portal is opening back up because the knowledge coming back around. And they and so they trying to reopen the port. Now, here's what's going. The, the Mayan even said this. The Mayan said these people would rule the earth for a couple of generations. And after a long count, the portal going to open back up and they got to go. And if you look at what's happening right now, that portal is opening back up because you see people waking up to the knowledge. If your mind open, you can feel this shit opening back up with this awakening, this Aquarian energy. And if you can't feel it, far as I'm concerned, you ain't woke. You ain't connected. It's happening, bro. Now check this out. That portal opening back up, and these folks got to leave this earth. They got to leave here. Now, guess what they trying to do? Take everybody to hell with them. All of these metaverses, all of these invisible simulated universes that exist, people are going to be living inside of these universes, literally, in the future. Because the people that's on this earth, they only projecting themselves here from a supercomputer that was made by the Babylonians and Egyptians. That's what that golden calf is. It's a quantum computer. It creates the quantum universe, the simulation. We in it right now. The word quantum is the root word of quantity, like a, a lot of them. That's what I'm telling you about the parallel universe. They exist in quantity. The true universe only exists singular, but that's in quality. It's only one heaven, but it ain't nothing like it, man. It's only one heaven in the middle, but it ain't nothing like it in the universe. Everything outside of that central point is a bunch of parallel universes that exist in a large quantity and amount. It's a lot of them. But they all like the same and full of bullshit and backwards as hell. Upside down because they are reflections. And the laws in them will be upside down. Backwards. Men, gods that's telling you they giving birth and all like that. Men trying to give birth, women trying. In these other projected universes, things are going to be flipped. And that's what we see in these worlds. People are hating, not loving, going to war, and men trying to be women, women trying to be, it's flipped. It's every, we say, man, this world backwards as hell. Yes, dude, you're telling the truth. I wish you could see what you're saying on a macro level. You're literally in a backwards world, dude. Like, you're literally in a upside down, backwards world. And we got to get back right side up and be upright, going back to Eden here in the middle. Let's play this thing, because when he showed the different angles of it, you're going to see what the ancestors was telling us about this hoonop cool wheel, this, 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 sits point, this Merkaba that we in, that's projecting these parallel universes from this central uh, seed when they're right there in the middle. Now, let's play the video, and you'll see how they, what, what, what they're teaching us there. Let's go ahead. I'm switching over to a polyester cord instead, and I can just add a double cinch knot to either side to give the adjustment needed 
while still remaining very discreet and not visually dominating on the outside. And I, I'm just so much more happy with this look. And with the finishing touches on this thing, getting the edge guards on, applying the felt cushioning to all of these support legs, we're calling this thing done. But because of the nature of this build, it looks good during the day, but at nighttime, that's where this thing really shines. Now that's when it gets breathtaking. I wanna give a shout out to this dude. He don't know how much his little project mean to me, right? His, his little video, is gonna be in my toolbox for years to come. Because what this shows is the nature of parallel universes. How all of them reflects outward from that center one. And it's a very simple concept of projection. A mirror matrix is what it's called. And we can see that the this wheel is very old, y'all. And we see pre-dynastic people here in Tibet saying the same thing. We're in a six-pointed star a Merkaba terrarium, and we left Eden. We got kicked out of Eden. You know why? Let me show you what happened, right? If you look at his experiment, Eden is the real reality right here. What we learned in Eden was the knowledge of the serpent. What did the serpent teach us? Because the serpent was wrapped around a pole, right? What did the serpent teach us in Eden? And before I answer that, I want you to pay attention to the color of light in his terrarium. You see what this dude found out was that the best color light to use is a clear bluish light. And that's the blue beam technology. Look at the color light. Think of the Big Bang, man. Think of a camera flash. Why did this dude in his experiment choose that color light? Because it took him a while. He experiment with different colors of light. And guess what he found out? This is going to be the best color to go against this dark background. And guess what he found out? The same shit God found out. I don't even know if he was trying to do that. He was just experimenting. He was saying, look, I tried different color lights, but this little bluish little kind of light blue light it works the best in my experiment. God been found that out, dude. God been, when a dude invented the camera with the camera flash, he knew that a red flash wouldn't be good. When you say, say cheese, the camera flash is a blue, clear flash like we see here, like the sky, like the ocean, like he used here. Now watch this, right? The serpent taught us the knowledge that got us kicked out of Eden. You know what that knowledge was? Portaling technology. Check it out. Here go the serpent. I'm showing you the serpent. Here he go right here. You see him? Wrapped around that stick. Let me show you Mercury with his caduceus. He flying through the damn heavens with that staff. This is what's allowing Mercury to take flight in the sky. Look at what he holding. That's the fucking blue beam. That's the exact stick that Moses held up. Watch this. And how was Moses able to split the sea? With that little stick. That stick allowed him to pierce through the heavens. That is not no liquid water. That's telling you he opening up the sky vault, the portal to the sky, to heaven. Look at the staff that he's holding. The people on earth have wisened up to the level on earth where we now got the science and technology to reverse engineer the God rod. That's what I call it. This is the God rod, man, or the staff of Asclepius. This is what Adam and Eve learned that got them kicked out of Eden. Everybody you see holding this, they are fucking gypsies, like Mercury. Mercury holding one of them. Now, guess what? Mercury is a gypsy god. He go around the universe spreading a message. Ain't that's what these colonialists do? They go around the world with their Christianity message. 
They don't have a home. They just gypsy spreading they fucking indoctrination around the world. Listen, y'all, these folks started the Columbus. It's, listen, they said Columbus discovered all of the known world and then his fleets went on to discover new worlds, not new continents, new worlds. Go read it. The age of exploration never ended. The explorers just fucking vanished. The explorers all had vanished. They all, they just vanished. The age of exploration never ended. Once those colonialists colonized the whole world, they then started to continue the age of exploration in our minds. They then, they left the earth and started to conquer universes inside of us. They call themselves people from the other side. They're able to pierce through the ether with the serpent knowledge and travel back and forth through these parallel universes. And everybody is their own universe. Everybody got their own base universe and then we got that we got a safe haven. They are starting to infiltrate those worlds. The religious crusades didn't stop on land. They continued on in the, for the spirituality of man. The religious crusades didn't stop when they conquered all the lands on the earth. They didn't went around trying to conquer the hearts of every man. Don't it say that in the Bible? Don't it say that they God want every man's hearts, that they fishermen for the hearts of man? What is your damn heart? What is your heart? Look, this is what your heart is. Your heart is your electromagnetic field. And if they fishing for your heart, they trying to turn you to pop smoke. If they fishing for your heart, it ain't a good thing. Oh, my God. I don't know what that come from. That must be a late trigger. But, yeah. You fish, you want. So, check this out, right? These are fucking spiritual pirates. That means these dudes are traveling through the sky vaults to harvest souls in other universes. And now that we waking up to this shit, we realizing they already conquered this universe and it wasn't theirs. They're not even from this earth. They call themselves people from the other side. You know why? They are the Anunnaki, man. They are the royal lineage of the pharaohs and royal bloodlines that took over the earth with this technology. What I'm, at, what I'm telling you is this. Where did the pharaoh come from? Where did the royal families come from? Don't nobody know their history? We can't trace the history of their wealth back to a Poe family. <clears throat> it's like they just dropped out the sky ruling the world. If you go back to the first Pharaoh Narmer, can any comedic priest or Egyptologist give me the history of Narmer's family? Nope. You know why they can't, y'all? Here go the funny part. They don't even know the nigga's last name. You can't look up the history of a nigga's family tree without his last name. And that's because the people who forged their way into history don't want to leave no traces back to the thieves and the liars. So they give you names like Plato, Aristotle, Jesus, Moses. I'm like, okay, what's his last name? We want to find his family today because we got a bloodline issue going on on earth and an inheritance issue going on. Quit giving us pseudonames, pseudonyms. That's to hide the real author's identity. But you don't see that history was gave to you in pseudo form. We learned by Plato that such as, and you ask a nigga, what's Plato's last name? His last name, uh, well, I never thought about his last, but that don't matter, man. Shit, you, you know. <laughs> Mm. 
You cherry picking. You dancing. That's a red herring. That's a golden pompano. That's a silver barracuda. And they gonna come with all the fishes and shit. Now come on, y'all. Let's get it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is what realism is. Israelite is the real light. It's real light. The real light is the source light that I keep telling you about. The Ra'el is the gods Ra and El that represent the source light. You see right here? Even in the Hindu version, I can show you the Hindu version right here. And then we can go back to Egypt with it right here. Man, y'all ain't on my level, dudes. I'm going to show you, and let me drop my nuts a little bit, too. <coughs> Here's why you niggas ain't on my level. You see this right here, this Bro Sanchez TV? I built this. So if you know that you've been on YouTube longer than me, and my channel is, is lit and popping off way more than yours, it's because the people waking up and you ain't in tune with the people. I'm in tune with them. People tired of hearing the same shit about the Bible, the Quran, the science, the physics, and all that. Like, we ain't done. We learned all that, and we don't need no niggas to reteach it to us. What we haven't done is challenged all of that shit we've been given. And people looking for the man that's going to challenge the status quo, the man that's going to come with an alternative explanation. If you only going to repeat shit that we already heard and confirm shit we already heard, how you doing something new? And if you repeat some old shit, how you leading us forward? Go sit down somewhere, man. This is the breath of fresh air over here because I'm doing it my way. Folks want to see a nigga take charge and break the rules and do it his way and get out the box and open up minds and totally kick ass out here with the knowledge, with passion. Not a bunch of niggas with a bunch of libraries and books behind them that they still, I don't care how many books you read, this energy that you see coming out of me, you can't read this out of a book, dude. It's some energy that your people need you to project up out of your body, black man, that ain't no book can teach you how to do it. This ain't going to come out of you till you put them damn Bibles down, put them Korans down, put your physics books down, nigga. Go outside and open up your eyes. Fuck, close all the books and open your eyes outside. Let's reconnect with nature. When books came onto the earth, they gave them the niggas and indoctrinated them with Bibles. The first time that we see papyrus come onto the earth, the first two things that was created when they invented paper was money and Bibles. Now, what run the world today? Economics and religion, nigga. When man invented paper, the first thing he did with the paper was start creating dollars and Bibles. That says a lot about man's intent at the time. And when we look at e Egypt, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> Egypt it are the ones who invented paper. And what do we see coming up out of Egypt? Religions and money, taxes. Worship, religious cultures and worship come out of Egypt. All of the world religions basically come up out of Samaria, Egypt, Acadia, Babylon, <coughs> Mesopotamia. Ain't nowhere on the earth where paper didn't exist that you had these systems. Think about that, dude. See, what I mean is that in the jungle, ain't no paper in that jungle. 
them tribes in the jungle that's isolated from the world, they don't even got paper. But guess what? Ain't no because they ain't got paper, they don't got Bibles. They don't got scriptures. They don't got money ruling over them. Everywhere in the world where paper exists, pollution exists, religion exists, and money exists governing those polluted systems, just like in Babylon. Every, follow the paper trail, and you will follow the where the pollution happened in that. Right now, that the number one problem in the world is a trash problem, a pollution problem. And guess who creating that problem? Everywhere paper exists, plastic exists. <clears throat> now, we say the people in the jungle ain't got a technology like us, and they ain't got the problems we got neither. I already went over that in previous streams. I ain't going to be redundant. Let's get back and make sure that I'm tackling everything here. <clears throat> because what we can do, <clears throat> because all of these religions about waking up the dead, all of these religions is a promising people <clears throat> is life out the death and you're going to cheat death. And then we see the scientists come and pull that off. People, our scientists today ain't doing nothing new. Look at this image. This image I'm showing you is a small image that's showing you the tech, the avatar hologram technology that they're gonna, that's gonna make us immortals within the next hundred years. Now, let me show you something that's deep about this because we finna go deep. When they told you Buddha was wrapped up in a serpent, that lets you know that the ancients already made this mistake that we making. All of these symbols in the religion are, are basically showing us that everything we doing on the earth, the ancestors already been there, done that. Look at this. They tell stories about Buddha falling asleep and being wrapped up in a snake. <clears throat> what do you think this image is? Here go the snake that's wrapping up Buddha. Here go the big old belt that Santa Claus got on. I can show you pictures right now of celebrities, right? Let me pull these things up real quick. I can show you celebrities right now that are showing you this hologram technology, but they can't say it with words. Cause you know they 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 celebrities and shit, but they speaking in code. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Hold on. Cause Michael Jackson, one of them. Uh, hold on, just a minute. I'm gonna try to search my computer for this real quick. Yeah, here you go. Look, watch this. <laughs> In this image right here, when you see them with that X on their chest like that, bro, that's symbolic. You know how the Pharaoh got the X on his chest. The Pharaoh tomb. Look. Michael Jackson was telling us a lot of shit in his artwork. You see how the Pharaoh got that X on his chest? That X right there? That's why we call it Xmas or cross or cross or X. It's the same thing. But that X on the chest is what we see here. But on the right, that's the Dogon version of it. But that X on the chest is going back to this whole concept right here. The X men, Xmas. Right here. I'm about to show y'all something, man, because they ain't going to teach y'all this shit. Folks' eyes ain't open. It's like all of fo some folks tapped into what's happening here. Now, let me show you something. The X on the chest. Here is what they reverse engineering. <clears throat> the way that this light matrix manifests your body as a hologram in this world is by recycling itself like we see here. You got a triangle that's recycling its energy clockwise going up, for example, around, 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 like the recycle symbol, right? A triangle represents recycle. All right, let's just go ahead and get that on the table. 
Now, if you look in the middle of this recycle symbol, you can see a six-pointed star, can't you? It's a fractal code. They call that a ninja star. You know, because I deal with symbolism so much, I like to stunt from time to time, that's all. Now, only, now, now most of y'all can see the six-pointed star in the middle of the recycle symbol because what recycles us is the Merkaba. The Merkaba. Now, this six-pointed star and this recycle symbol, let's compare that to the something called a Celtic knot. Yeah, Brother Sanchez be doing a lot of research in that, right? Yeah. Let's go into it. You see this symbol here? Compare that to this symbol here. The ancient people already been had all these symbols and created this world before. That's what I'm showing you. We ain't doing nothing new. When a nigga think he's scientific and he's saying, yeah, this is something. We ain't in the old world no more. This the new world. We in the future. We fancy. We futuristic. Nigga, ain't nothing new under the sun, nigga. Ain't no future, nigga. You just in a continuum loop where whenever we think we in the future, we arrive back at the technology of the past. Every generation in their time achieve a threshold of technology and you can't go no higher than that threshold in this realm. And that knowledge is how to open up a stargate, how to cheat death, electromagnetism. There is no higher knowledge in this realm. Outside of this realm, yeah, that's higher knowledge. But that's why it's a threshold. It's a threshold. This kindergarten. This is where people learn how to pierce a little hole out of the sky. This is where the worm learn how to eat his way out the apple. That's why they call him the eater or the eater. And they symbolized him as an Ouroboros serpent eating its own tail. That's the Kundalini serpent. Boy, these niggas ain't ready for you, boy. Please like and share the video. And niggas don't ain't ready for me. And hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all. Y'all niggas is not this deep, nigga. And this is not no up north, nigga. I'm from the country, nigga, from the south. <laughs> Breaking down all the spiritual science and shit. Ain't no nigga in a 5% nation. Ain't no nigga in a new whopping. The more shit any of them costume groups up there, nigga, can fuck with your boy. Yes, 2023 is called drop your balls year on them nigga Sanchez. <laughs> I'm tired of being merciful with you niggas with what I know. You can't fuck with me and I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it this year. That's why my channel killing you niggas can't grow on your own. You know why you niggas can't grow on your own? Cause you ain't letting your light shine, nigga. Once you let your light shine, nigga, and quit letting your sources shine, then you can fucking grow. Niggas, I, I ain't got no source to punch you to, nigga. I'm, this is my work, my reach. This is Bro Sanchez TV. If I was a new Wapian, that shit would be new Wapian TV where I'm just only going with Malachi York as a source and I can't go outside of my teacher Malachi. Nigga, I'm free. I can be me. I ain't in no brotherhood. Ain't no group got me. I can say, and because of that, I can express my unique energy. Everybody can't do that. Some folks got jobs, affiliations. And that's why niggas, that's Masons, all act the same. Niggas in religious groups all act the same. Ain't no uniqueness among cults. Because the cult is a, against the concept of you having a uniqueness. Modern science is a cult. The moment you think for yourself and try to be unique and say, well, we say that's more than one way to skin a cat. And science ain't always got it right. Hey, he may have a better idea. Any other idea challenge, science is a pseudo idea. 
Because a nigga going to say, where the scientific sources? That's saying you can't think for yourself. You need to show me the white man that said that or, or who, uh, some man other than you that wrote that in order for me to validate it. Because the mind is a source of information, is it not? If my mind is a source of information, that means I can debate a person with my own thoughts. Now, if I don't think for myself like a Christian, I'm going to come up with a Bible. I'm going to show up with a book to read from, to give me something to say to you. I don't need that. I can come out, I, whatever you say. Even if you got an Einstein book, then I'll debate Einstein and make him look stupid. Your mind is more powerful than any goddamn thing in front of you, man. And when niggas get on that level, then they'll realize why I never join Alpha Phi Alpha, Freemasonry. Any nigga joining these groups initiated in these little groups is a damn sellout. It shows a lot that you can't stand alone, nigga. You don't, you don't like being unique, nigga. Everybody want to be rappers. Everybody want to be singers, dealers, brotherhood niggas, masons, fraternity niggas. Don't nobody want to be a loner. Now, the best thing that you can be in this world is a L-O-N-E-R, nigga. The best thing you can be is a loner. And if you excel at learning how to be by yourself, ain't nothing can stop you out of that. But if you can't even just be alone with yourself, then everything you put around you to battle that alone, that alone feeling is just going to keep you from being you. Until you willing to be who you is and be alone in the dark and express the energy that you expressing when you're alone in the light, then you ain't yourself. You ain't tapped into your unique spirit. That's why you ain't popping off. Because when you start talking, it's like niggas falling asleep. Like when a pastor go to read from the Bible and y'all go to pulling out these books and talking this equation shit. I can take you in the jungle to a shaman. And that nigga ain't got no library in that jungle. He got a bone in his nose and he got a staff in his hand. And he can tell you more about this universe than any scientist in America can. Our scientists are baffled about how much a nigga in a jungle know about the universe. And he don't got libraries and telescopes. When they first came in contact with the Dogon tribe in the jungle, the damn white men were so amazed at the Dogon that they started enslaving them to help them build technology. That's how you get the story of Santa Claus with the little elves helping him build the toys. Go read the shit. St. Patrick almost made the pygmy go extinct. He all, they almost, nigga, the pygmy went through a point of slavery that almost made them go extinct. It ain't even a lot of dwarf people walking the earth to this day. And at one point, the dwarf people were just as plentiful as us. They don't talk about the pygmy uh, massacres and extermination. The, the fucking pick me the dwarf people on the earth were always said to be the holders of the knowledge. And goddammit, when they went interviewing the Dogon and pick me people, they was amazed at what was coming out of these folks' mouth and that these folks didn't have no equipment. They didn't have tellers. They didn't have nothing. How did they know? Man, when you start getting out of your body and dealing with the astral realm, that's where all the knowledge is at. When you ain't really tapped into this part of us that we able to get, because we are light. You're your own science experiment. When you study in the light within you, you're literally researching the Big Bang. When, you, when our ancestors was into astral projection and all that stuff, that, that was that was the whole concept of rocket man. You got this concept of rocket man where you got the man, half man, half rocket. What that meant was the mind projecting out the body. 
and to the parallel universes. Your physical body can't go to a parallel universe because you already have a body there. And you, your mind, your consciousness is just not there. So look. So check this out, right? And this will tie into the, the secret of how we dream. When we dream, we're projecting our mind out of one body into another body that already exists in a parallel universe where you already got a whole nother situation unfolding. Now, in your dream, you already know who you are in that world. When you start dreaming, don't know, you don't even remember who you is in this world no more. Till you wake up. In that dream, you got a whole nother history. You plan a whole nother fucking role. If somebody walk up to you in the dream and say, hey, man, you dreaming and you out your body, your body really in another universe in a bed sleep. You'll be like, get this crazy dude out my face, man. And you will wake up and be like, yo, a crazy dude told me in a dream that I was asleep and I and I was going to wait. Yo, when I was dreaming, I should have listened to the crazy dude. You know what would have happened? You would have became lucid. That meant you would have been in a dream knowing that you dreaming, but still ain't waking up. And at that point, you would have had two histories. The dude in the dream, he, he got a birthplace, a birth date, a history in that world. And the dude in the bed sleep, he got a history. Now, when the dude in the bed sleep in this world realize that he's in another world dreaming and he don't wake up, he now experiencing something called dual history. He remembers being born in this world and going to sleep in his bed that night. And he's now in a dream in the sleep saying, yo, I'm asleep in the bed right now in another world. Ooh, I can play around. I can fly. I can do shit. And guess what happened? At some point, you go to manipulating that dream when you become lucid to a point where you scare your own self back to wake up here. You go to doing shit that blow your mind to the point that, yo, I'm dreaming. Nigga, I, mean, I don't know if y'all ever lucid dream before, but the moment you in a dream and realize you dreaming and you don't wake up, though, something happens. To where you get these powers and shit. And this going to make me sound crazy. But check this out though. It's, it's crazy man. I ain't going to go there. I'm going to do another video about dreaming. But you get this dual history. All of a sudden. The dude in the dream that only had one history. He only had. He, only, he just thought he was the dude in the dream. He remember all of his childhood in that universe. And then something happens in that dream. He remembers he's sleeping in the bed in this world. Now he got two histories. He remember both childhoods. He remember both births. You were born multiple times, yo. And this shows you how it looks. Now the doctor said the daddy ejaculated a bunch of sperm. And that only one made it to this world. That was a lie. Every single sperm that your daddy shot out fell into a different parallel universe. You were each one of those sperms were born in its own universe. And you go to those other sperms that became you again when you dream. When you dream that other body. In that dream, it had a birth, man. That was the other sperm that they said died and didn't make it. You know what they forgot to tell you? All of the sperms died. Even the one that they said made it here. All of them crashed into an egg and they died and became a human. Every last one of them sperms died and they resurrected as a human in their own universe. And the God of resurrection is called what? 
Zombie. Zombie. Now, the root word of zombie is another word that we use. It's called zoom. Now, what does it mean to zoom in or to zoom out? It's to travel through the parallel universes. There are inner universes that are small. There are outer universes that are big. So when we're traveling in and out, we're being born again in each of these inner universes and outer universes. And it's like we're zooming in and out. But the word zoom is the word zombie or zombie. So the etymology breaks this down and show you the history of the words that we using for this. So also when you, like I said earlier, if you look at this etymology, the word zombie is the Spanish word sombra that is based upon the original God Zambi, Saturn, who wore that hat. And I broke down the cone shape and all of that. So, so let's, let's, let's just continue moving with this y'all here go pop smoke again and and what i want to would you pay attention to is this circle right here he got a circle right there right and he got two two little wings on that circle and you know what they said when we when, when we uh die in the occult, right? In the, when these occult dudes die, they become champions and shit like that or ascended mass masters. Watch this. If you ever look at a, like a wrestling belt, it's just the god Saturn. You know, thank God Saturn is the god of time. Think of your watch, the watch around your wrist. The watch that's around your wrist it looked like Saturn, don't it? It looked like a championship belt. This also is looked like a ring, don't it? This is a code. We put a ring on the hand to say that a, a symbolic moment. We put a belt around the waist. And why am I showing that? Because it's Saturn. Now, look at what Pop Smoke got on his belt. He's wearing a champion belt. See, in the occult, the ascended master becomes a champion in the heavens. And he wears the belt like Santa Claus wear the belt. So when you look at Pop Smoke with the big belt on right here, that's Buddha wrapped up in the snake. That's the concept of Santa and all of that. And I can show, if you think I'm reaching, let me show you the God Mazda again. He's the concept of this belt that Santa represent and all of that. Look at here. And, his, and he's blue. In all of these pictures, he's going to be blue because it's a blue beam. It's like a camera flash. It's bluish white, blue clearish white like the sky. And because this the God of the heavens and the, this the knowledge of the sky. The sky is literally the aura surrounding your hologram like pop smoke right here so he's blue like happy and all of them so check this out right just like we got uh i showed you earlier enoch i got enoch coming through the sky portal see look at jesus i showed you earlier enoch look at here Enoch going through the sky portal, right? Coming in and out of that sky gate. Now look at here. Here go Mazda. You know, Mario goes in and out of the pipes to travel to different worlds. And the piping system is what I'm telling you about, about this old, whole uh, this stargate of light. All right? Right here. So, if you look at what Pop Smoke wearing around his waist, a belt of light, a shiny belt, right? What we give the rest, a shiny belt like Santa Claus. And this is the concept of like Saturn, the Lord of the Rings. A person with a lot of rings 
they won a lot of championships, right? They are repeats. And that's what we're talking about. The opposite of that would be to get rid of the rings. And that's what the ancestors were saying. When you get rid of the rings, like when Pop Smoke unbuckled his belt, he released his soul from the matrix, man. He quit being a puppet. This is the knowledge that got us being puppets like Pop Smoke on that stage. That's what I'm telling you. So that's why I showed you the Pokemon image earlier. Let's go back to that real quick. Like wearing that belt on the waist, I'm showing you why we do that. It's, everything is symbolic, yo, is what I'm saying. Now, hold on a second. Let's go back to this. What happens is when Pop Smoke take that belt off, he going to free his soul from the hologram and unleash the beast like we see here and beam me up out of the pineal gland. This is the Teflon. Remember, I showed you the Teflon on the forehead. When that Teflon opens up, the light beams out like Cyclops. This is the knowledge of realism or being an Israelian, an alien. We all are aliens. That's just dealing with the concept of being interdimensional. A person that can leave this world and come back, they, they ain't just an earthling. You ain't just an earth creature. You now a creature that can go to different planets. That's just saying an alien. But that is us another word for God. You can rearrange the word alien to spell the word lane, which is why I was telling you earlier that a lane is what? When I told you we're in hell, we're in hall. What does it mean, though, to be in, a, in hall, the great hall of Osiris? This is what it means right here. It, it means to be inside of the false light. That light is creating a hallway. It's creating a hallway or a beam portal. Or a wormhole right there, you see? So hell is literally you being held down by this whole projection of light. And until you do what you got to do in the middle of that circle, you can't be beamed back up. You got to ascend, you got to become light and tap into that part of yourself uh, that controls this ship or you just stuck. That's what being held is, stuck. And you can't leave. This is what's holding us down. A, a hull, what is a hull? A hull is a shell around the body. Now what that hull is, that's the fucking cube, the light cube, the light matrix, the aura, the fires of hell that we burning in. You were born, burn, burn in the hell. It looks like a hill. When they say we're in a we're in hell, look at what hell is. It's a hell of light. Hell is a hill. Hell is a hall. Hell is a hall. Hell is a hole. Literally, holographic holding place for the soul. So when the mind projects itself into that circle, they say you're in hell or you're in hologram, hologram. The word, this is the holy knowledge or the heli, helios knowledge. Showing about the secrets of manifestation inside of a holographic simulation. This is part one and I welcome you all to part two because there's so much more I want to teach, but I want to keep these fairly short. So let me go ahead and, and wrap this up, right? The Teflon on this man's head is symbolizing that when his open up his pineal gland in an alternate universe, this cube literally opens up and releases his soul. We may say we don't see no light coming out of that. This happening on the astral plane. 
all of the rituals we do on this world is is manifesting on an astral plane. So, for example, right, his little black box don't look like it's doing nothing in this world. But when he get out of his body in the astral plane, in his other body in that parallel universe, his Teflon going to be opened up. You get what I'm saying? And when he come back in his world where his body going to wake up out the bed back here where that Teflon was always closed. You get what I'm saying? When we shoot fireworks up out the cannon, we shooting the mind out the body. This is Jack out the box. He looked like a unicorn, and the unicorn is on the other side of the rainbow. See, his Teflon looks like this on the astral plane. But in our world, we like, where's the magic? But as he sleep on the other side, he's walking around with an open Teflon on the other realm. And his light coming up out of that bitch. And when he, that's what I'm telling you. This shit's activating on an ethereal realm. Just like all of them stargates we see around the world. Right? Like, for example, these right here. They finding these everywhere. And they saying that these are stargates, but how, it, how do you use them? Like, you know what? I told y'all this. You take a mushroom and get out your body. And when you get out your body... Then you will see the other world in the middle of this circle. But if you ain't out your body, you'll say, hey, where's the magic? And they'll tell you, man, it's just for ritual. But they ain't telling you that the ritual was for them to connect with the other side. That's why they said a word Hebrew is people from the other side. Moses separating the waters and it's just like these people walking through the stargate. You're going to separate the waters when you penetrate it. That's what the sperm did to the egg. And this whole thing looked like a Santa Claus hat. See what I'm saying? You see the triangle with the circle at the top? This the Santa Claus hat. But let's go back. Let me show you. It's stargates all around the world. These ancient stargate wheels. And they was like, how would they would have been used? They act stupid. You take the fucking elixir, the mushrooms, and then when you look through it, you will see the other world. You activate this from the other side, not this one. You will never see the magic of this technology in your body in this realm. They always going to interpret to you with some dumb shit that don't make sense because they don't get it. This is spiritual technology. When the shaman gives you the mushrooms, you will look through this hole and see a whole nother fucking world. And he'll tell you, now enter. Go on your trip. And when you walk through this thing on the other side of this hole, and this is how we get the MGM lion. But once you walk up this step on your trip and walk in that world, to us, we will see you just fighting yourself like punching the air. You know the crazy man that's talking to people that ain't there. He's swinging at the air. That's what'll happen to you when you cross over. It'll be like a virtual reality game, like VR goggles. Like if I tell y'all to put these on right now, let's play a game. When we get inside the game on, in the other world, everybody that's crossed over they're going to be swinging at the air, kicking that damn air. And if you didn't understand the technology, you'll say these people have lost their mind. And guess what? You'll be right. They did lose their mind. Their mind is on a trip. It's gone to the other side. Their body don't have a mind right now. Their body is a zombie. This is why it's moving around like this, knocking shit over. But this was virtual reality technology out of body and ascension technology before they turned it into realism and made it a cult. We, we just now getting back into VR when this was the knowledge of the ancestors. 
they had achieved these heights of technology, but they don't, you don't, they got us think, ain't no way they knew about this. That's black. How you think we just so smarter than everybody? This earth been here for hundreds of trillions of years, and you think we just found out a goddamn Nintendo nigga in our time? A virtual, re a computer, a calculator? You find out that these folks ain't doing that but reverse engineering everybody else technology from the past so this is a virtual this is ancient virtual reality tech but the virtual realities are literally parallel universes and we get to we we created the first forms of technology that allow us to do that and it was with mushrooms and herbs witch brew uh ambrosias elixirs and when you're drunk it it, it was a drug. It drugged the mind out the body. That was the reason for drugs, to drag you out the body. But we started relying on the drugs, and we didn't know how to do it without the drugs. And so there was revolutions even back in the day for us to go back to the natural way of doing it. And But we never listened to that. We still getting more and more technical with it. Drugs and ambrosias, elixirs, these were the first forms of out-of-body technology, man. Like I said, when you took the brew, then it would activate the Stargate because this wheel is a ritual in this realm that is interacting with the subconscious on another realm. What activated this ancient technology was your own soul once it crossed over. So once you got out the body, because... What, this is what's happening in us. We're exploring the different multiverses within itself. That's why I kept showing you, and we're going to go back to the video, right? This video. Because if you look at his whole, that, that infinity terrarium is inside of a giant Merkaba. It's inside of a big one of these. And that's what I'm saying about you. All of these parallel universes are within you. And in each of them universes is everybody else that you see. So we still going to be with you. It ain't like you alone. Like when you dream, you going into these different universes, but these portals are within you. And it connects you to everybody else, just like a video game. Just like if we all playing Call of Duty online, like I was explaining earlier. So what's happening inside of your terrarium is this. You're fractalizing your consciousness around the thing. And you're traveling to each one of these versions of yourself where all of us is at too in these parallel universes. And it's a continuum code. It's very simple when you grasp it though. But I'm going to stop right there. This the mirror code that the Pharaoh created in the pyramids. This is what the Pharaoh did to achieve immortality. This tetrahedron is literally ancient technology, y'all, of how to uh, create an ancient hologram called a human being. And you was able to partake in it just so for the sake of understanding it. So now that we understand it, we don't got to stand under it. We can overstand it. And now that's our God self, God state. Realism is a form of ufology. Also, modern day ufology is all about some cat beaming you up, right? The beam me up concepts come, comes from modern science. All right, I'm going to uh, see if I can reiterate on, re on that. Let's see. Okay, so... The whole thing about modern religion is about getting humans comfortable with the concept of being out of their body. Every generation achieved the ultimate state of technology within their time. And all of the souls within that era will have to achieve this out of body graduation. We call it death ignorantly. But that'll be like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly and all of the other caterpillars think he died when he just transformed. 
when we when we talk about the gods that are sent to the heavens, that is talking about what happens to everyone's soul upon death. Uh, considering that you you know you live right and you treated people right and etc. Okay. Uh, when it's talking about the birth of Christ being symbolized by a star in the sky. That is the light of our birth. Everyone that was born had something called the light of conception. I'm not going to be redundant today on these concepts because I touch on them so much. So I'm going to just fly past them. And if I say something that that loses you, email me, email me. Now, listen. Makai Kaku, basically all of our scientists today, but in particular, I noticed that Makai Kaku seemed to be the one assigned to the conversation of how we're going to go to space in the future. And uh, Makai Kaku says that humans in the future will beam their minds to a moon base, which will then beam their consciousness to other planets or whatever. These planets are not solid. They are holographic simulations, just like the one we're in, parallel universes. What has happened is the people on Earth has created their own matrix of simulations in the heavens. And that they want to intercept souls and recycle souls within their matrix. So there's a natural set of universes. Then you have this subset. And these two can be looked at as heaven and hell. The natural universes can be said to be heaven and then an unnatural hell. Now, I got to start right here, though. Now, everybody know we was talking about the symbol of Rawlism. We about to get into that now. But in the previous stream, we tied that into ufology. I just want you to know that modern science today want to get you comfortable with a future generation, comfortable with being out of their body. And they're, this is a form of soul harvesting. I don't want to really go too deep on it because, um, like I said, it'll be redundant. We're just touching on the fact that Makai Kaku, right? Oh, man, let me fix this right here. Hold on. Let me fix that. We're touching on the fact that Makai Kaku, right? He told us that humans would be beaming their mind Right. Humans will be beaming their consciousness. So in other words, what Makai Kaku is saying is that future humans are going to be traveling through space out of body. You're going to do it out of body. And the reason we want to talk about this out of body experience that science is about to initiate the masses into in the near future is because this is exactly what your religion is called the rapture. Now, what we're calling transhumanism today is something that in the ancient world, they call it transfiguration. We're basically not doing nothing new under the sun. History repeating itself to the T. Uh, so we understand that beaming the consciousness on a laser beam is going to be the cutting edge way of traveling in the future. That's called teleportation. That's called teleportation. Um, when we say beam me up, Scotty, this is exactly what the beam me up, Scotty, was all about let's if, if you guys want me to play this video from a kaku drop a one if you already know what it is and you don't care to see it drop a two and we'll just move on the choice is you guys it's no biggie we're gonna knock this out anyway we're gonna go real deep today by the way one or two some of you might want to play it to be thorough, just to be refreshed. Whatever you want, one or two. This is a democracy. Let's get it. One or two. All right. I see a lot of ones. Let's get it. Let's get it out the way. Isaac Asimov was my favorite science fiction writer, and his favorite science fiction story talked about an era 
far in the future when our bodies would be in pods and we would mentally control beings, beings of pure energy, that would go flying around the universe. And of course it was science fiction, but here's the idea. Mind without body, pure consciousness roaming across the universe faster than any rocket ship. It turns out that that's actually a physical possibility. First of all, the Obama administration and the European Union are pushing the brain project to delineate all the pathways of the human brain. This means that one day we might have a CD-ROM called Brain 2.0. That is every single neuron encoded on a memory disk. Your personality, your memories, who you are, the essence of your soul, would be incorporated in this disk as pure information. Even if you die, your consciousness, in some sense, may live on. Now, you, as a organic being, will have died. That means that you're not... When he say you, as an organic being, has died, he's saying your body is gone, but we have your soul. This is what y'all don't realize. Before I hit play, you got to realize something. He's using all of these big words because he got to be careful how he say this not to scare y'all. He's saying your, or, your organic self will be gone, but your consciousness will live on. And in another way, he, 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 he should just say, your body going to be gone, but we going to have your soul. Basically, look at what I got on the board and let's listen up. Your memories, who you are, the essence of your soul, would be incorporated in this disk as pure information. Even if you die, your consciousness, in some sense, may live on. Now, you, as a organic being, will have died. That means that your neurons will turn to dust. But the configuration of neurons that made your thinking process possible can be put on a disk, in which case, in some sense, you become immortal. Not only immortal, but this could be the most efficient way to explore the galaxy, just like Isaac Asimov predicted in his short story. So your body is a vehicle that allow you to travel the multiverse and they want to replace your body with a patented avatar because they're into restricting travel. You see what I'm saying? Instead of them allowing us to be multidimensional beings exploring this multidimensional universe, they've created their own parallel universes and their own technology to explore it with. Now, let me explain something to you before I go to Lazarus, which is laser us. A CD disc is read by a laser. Now, this is what you got to realize. The, the disc is the UFO ship. Now, in all of these sci-fi movies, they give you this UFO ship turning around with a light beaming, and they say, beam me up, Scotty. But what he's explaining to you is how this UFO technology really work. The UFO spinning around is the CD disc. And the beam me up is the laser that's reading it. This is how they're going to get you out your body. This is how you're going to be able to be beamed up. This is how you're going to be able to be raptured up, right? And be able to explore this ethereal realm that these archons created. They have created their own ethereal realms, what we call hellish realms. And, they're, and they're, they're, when they say the devil is going to lead souls to hell, that's exactly what we're looking at. When they talking about the devil lean souls to hell, the word hell is a holding place. And a CD is holding a song. A CD is able to hold a song on it, which is vibration. 
Your soul is literally a song. It's vibration. And they found out how to burn it on a CD. And when we talk about burning you on a CD, burning is hell. Burning is hell. It's not the fire that we thinking about. It's the laser fire. The red flames is from the laser that's reading the disc. These guys that are creating this technology, in my opinion, aren't human. I really believe that there's a group of non-human, humanoid people walking among us, and they're using alien technology to create a portal to their world. In their world, they have sla slaves that they're harvesting from this world. I don't care how crazy I sound. The technology that they making is trying to get our souls out of our body and, and get us to the other side, like what Travis Scott was saying. See you on the other side. We're not going to space physically. You're going via out of the body. And this is what the Bible called the rapture. So this has been going on for centuries. This kind of technology to able to open up a portal to the other side and then let the people cross over. That's what Moses was doing when he said he split the waters. So let's play the video and I'm going to lead this up here. Just remember that the UFO ship turning around with talking a CD disc. The person that's getting sucked up by the laser disc. It's the song, the vibration, your soul, your consciousness getting burned on Saturn on the disc. And you see like a CD disc got a bunch of rings like a vinyl player with each song coming out. See, you will be copied on every ring and you will be able to shift your consciousness back and forth to each ring. Because it's a version of you on each one of those rings. Just like what nature done. They basically reverse engineered what nature did. But this is the whole UFO concept. It should make sense to you now. So let's go back to the video and let's look at the board right here. I just want to keep this up while he talks so you can see the etymology come to life from his mouth. Let's say I take your, <clears throat> not your genome, but your connectome put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a... Let's say I take your, <clears throat> not your genome, but your connectome, put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Watch this, y'all. All of this time, we've been thinking that we was gonna go to space with rockets. And these folks already know how big the beam they need to get your soul out your body. Oh, y'all better listen up, man. Check it out. These folks ain't been trying to build rockets. They've been trying to build soul harvesting technology. All of these years, they've been talking about rocket scientists and rocket technology. And here we are in 2023 and ain't nobody talking about no rockets. You know what they talking about? BCIs, brain computer interface. Lazarus is laser us because the technology that rose Lazarus from the dead is this laser beam technology that's going to raise people from the dead in the near future. What he talking about? We ain't doing that new under the sun. I believe that the people who bring in the technology to this earth of immortality, these are old souls that come from ancient Egypt, ancient Samaria, ancient Acadia, and they walking among us. They some bullies, man. We were born into a simulation that is being controlled by old ancient spirits that's been trapping souls so that they can stay immortal. The only way they can stay immortal is through harnessing us. The pharaohs in ancient Babylon and all over the world, they achieved, they got very wealthy and they got very smart and they started experimenting with technology and in their time, 
they created exactly what Makai Kaku is talking about. They cheated death. And it's my opinion that if, if that's true, they're walking among us right now. This is their simulation, and they're trying to harvest us in it. We think that these guys are aliens, demons, and all that. They are interdimensional beings. They are using some advanced technology when it comes to time manipulation. If you think that, th that these guys just learned how to cheat death in just the past 10 years, you're a fool. People, you got to think about something. They only been studying how to cheat death and BCIs and brain beaming and mind uploading. They only been studying that for the past 20 years. For the past 20 years. They've only been, when it comes to the hands-on technology that can upload a mind as far as what they're telling society They've only been dealing with it for about 20 years. So you telling me in 20 years of man dealing with this shit, he've already cheated death and we all finna be immortal in 20 years? No. They don't want to tell you the truth that these people always knew about how to cheat death. And a lot of these folks in power ain't never died before. They just fucking take their soul out their body and put it in another one. A lot of these celebrities that's just <laughs> passing away like that. Nigga, they're just transitioning into another body. A lot of these YouTube personalities and shit that's connected with the cabal. These folks got a secret oath to where once you get to a certain level, you don't die, man. You transition. I keep telling y'all that. You become an ascended one. These guys cheat death. In the organic world, things age. And when your body get to a point where you think it's aged enough, you just get a new body. Some of these folks in power be working on their new body before they die. I'm showing you how my mind think. These people be having secret meetings where they go in a computer and say, nah, make my chin a little bigger. Uh, come on, man, put a few inches on my dick now. Come on, don't do me like that, brother. <laughs> okay, now make my arms a little bigger. They editing their next avatar for, for their next life already in this life. You hear me? They're editing their next avatar right now. They know how they going to look and what their job going to be, what they whole shit, and they just keep body hopping. Yeah, and they just keep body hopping. They ain't just figured this out in 20 years. Ain't no way they just figured this out in 20 years. But you can't figure out how to clean the air in 50 years. You can't figure out how to stop crime and, and stop teenage violence in over 100 years. But you can cheat death in 20 years. You can, you can crack the immortality code in 20 years. Nah, y'all been doing this. And if you do your research, you'll realize this go all the way back to Egypt and everything. And this is what the foundation of all the religions is based on. Lazarus, which is Lazarus. Now, if you take the L, A off of it, you get Zyrus, which is Zoro. Zoro, Zoro, Zoro Zoroastrian religion. Zorro is a form of Lazarus. All of these ascended gods represent the same thing. When the ancestors reached the height of their technology, which was they cheated death now. Time traveling. Now, Laza is the word lazy. Because the people that's creating this technology are lazy. They don't want to do it the hard way, which is the natural way, which is the way that'll maintain our humanity. They want to do it the lazierous way, which is going to transhumanize us and turn us into robots. So 
every generation must achieve out of body. You can't escape it. You are not your body and nature forces every generation to get acquainted with their soul. You got to you got to be able to move around in your spirit, which is why you, no one can cheat death. No one can stop themselves from dying. Even the people that saying they want to cheat death, they ain't really cheating death. They just controlling it. They're saying, OK, I can basically go to another body when I want to. Because everybody else just living their life out. And when you die, you die. And whatever you go after that is where nature wants you to go. She know where you, you let nature do the thing. They don't like that. They want to do it themselves. See, nature got a natural system to where every choice you made determines where you go next. It's called karma. They try, they, it ain't that they trying to cheat death. They're trying to cheat karma. They know they, they, they got some karma coming and some punishment coming when they when they cross over to the other side. So they trying to prolong that and basically stay here as long as they can. And that's what make them s s these immortals, these sort of Arconian beings that are they ain't passing over. They just stand here for thousands of years body hopping. Because they know when they cross over, they're going to be judged. But they can't do this forever, though. You know, they can't do this forever. So this technology is what Satan used to build his kingdom here in the simulation in hell on earth. This Satan's kingdom. And this entire world that we in is a technological based world that is built by men. And we got to be born out of this world to be born into the natural heavenly realm because these people are hijacked. They got like an interceptor thing going on to where when we was born, we was born in a simulation of veil world that we got to be born out of before we get to the real world because they've hijacked. They, they basically intercepting souls before you can be born into Eden. It's like a blockage in a road where they trap you in this little simulation. And but if you think about it, when they originally built this thing, it was basically for people to. They was trying to create super children to where the idea of a simulation was where you can work out all your karma and all your flaws in a simulation and then. Once you born over into the heavenly realm, you will be a perfected being. And if you look at that's what basically what's going on. We stuck inside of that. So what we call in like an unnatural world is still supposed to be here. It never was a time where there was just a natural world without an unnatural world. This is the duot balance. You always had the technological universe and the natural universe. That's God and the devil, yin and yang. That's man and woman. Woman being the natural universe. Man being the mechanical, technological universe, right? So let's look at that technological universe and how these archons' technology work when it comes to beam me up Scotty so that we can understand exactly what realism is. Realism is basically soul harvesting, the technological way of exploring the, the, the uh, out of body side of yourself versus the natural way. And we're gonna uh, play the video now. It will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons, shine it into the heavens, your, <clears throat> not your genome, but your connectome, Put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. And you know what? We do that when we dream. When you dream, boom, you're in a parallel universe at the speed of light. We've all, they're reverse engineering what we already are. 
You live in a world where these people make fun of dreams. They make fun of people who say our third eye open and that we astro traveling, but yet they trying to build the same goddamn technology that we speaking about that's inside of us that they're denying. Why would they want you to acknowledge these gifts inside of yourself when they reverse engineering what you already got to control you with it? Because these gifts that's inside of us, these once we harness them, guess what we develop? Self-control. So when they started reverse engineering these gifts, they started controlling ourselves. The same technology that they using to harvest us with is the technology inside of us that controls us. So think about that for people that's thirsty for control. They're reverse engineering the natural control mechanisms within us to use against us. And they flipping us inside out. I put on Facebook the other day, they tell humans to get out of your emotions and then they give computers emoticons to smile and frown for us. I want y'all to understand how important this is, right? This is what realism is about. Beam me up, Scotty. Let's go. I'm going to show you a lot today. Forget asteroid collisions. And I'm going to show you what's so sad about this. He said, forget rockets. All of these years we've been talking about it don't take a rocket scientist. We should have been saying it don't take a motherfucking neural, a BCI creator. I mean, just think about what I'm saying. For at least 50 years, they had us thinking rockets. Rockets. We've invested millions of dollars a day into rocket technology just for them to tell us, forget rockets, man. We can go at light speed. We can take your soul out of your body. You know why, y'all? You can't leave this earth on a rocket. You can only leave by going out of your body, and they're proving it. I've been telling y'all this. I said it years ago. I said when they get ready to leave this earth, it won't be on a rocket. It's going to be some kind of technology to get out the body. I was saying this years ago, and here it is now. This man just said forget about rockets. And this is game because when he say that, people ought to say, okay, I want my money back, man. We've been investing millions of dollars into rocket technology that, so humans can go to space. So, y'all, it supposed to be fields and fields of rockets. You know how we got car lots with cars everywhere? They had us thinking that in the future it was going to be fields of fucking rockets with people just taking off psh, 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 like fireworks. And here we are. And they telling us, yes, we going to space, but we launching your mind out your body. We, we ain't doing the rockets. So wait a minute. Y'all been spending all this money for rocket research on brain computer interfaces. All the money we've been giving these guys from rockets, they've been spending it on technology to control your soul. And now they're going to sell the technology off the U.S. Hey, guess what? Forget them rockets, man. Fuck them rockets. Look, man, look what we can do. We can beam your mind out your body, son. Look at this. We can bounce you to the moon. You can be there at light speed. And see, now they want to get you hype about this when guess what, y'all? This is the, this the final step right here of them getting the genie in the lamp. All of these years, we've been donating for rocket research, and you've been trying to find a way to steal a nigga soul. Oh, my God. You took the money that we gave you to build fields of rockets with, and you built a bunch of Neuralink technology. Boy, boy, boy. They took, oh, my God. And you know what's crazy, man? This lets you know they never went nowhere with, on no rocket. These people know how to cross over via this BCI technology. You get it? So now look at here. 
I've been teaching this and teaching this. These folks, man, all the money we gave them for rockets and they was putting it toward the Avatar project, yo. And they were lying to us. You know, people ought to say, you know what? We don't want to go there quicker. We want to get on a rocket. That'll fuck them up right there. <laughs> See, they know that people are speed freaks. People going to be like, ooh, we, we could go move at light speed. Ooh, we, my mind getting out of my body. You know, people so dumb. If I tell them to meditate and open up their third eye and that they can travel to parallel universes like they do in a dream, they'll laugh at you and say that you full of pseudoscience. But they'll listen to this makakaku tell. Because you know why? Because they believe in technology. They don't think that their body is as great as the technology. They believe that the technology can allow them to do something that they natural body can't do, even though they dream. People don't believe in themselves no more. They believe in gods and technology. When our body and our mind is what created the technology. But anyway, we see now that we go on the space through soul harvesting, that was the goal anyway. They had us funding our own damnation. Let's keep it moving. Let's let this man finish. This is just man. Put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. Forget. Forget booster rockets. And see, that's his way of, of see, that's gang right there. Because soon as he say that, we ought to be like, what you mean forget rockets, bro? We've been investing into rocket technology. We've been spending million dollars a day testing rocket engines. And you telling me about some brain on a laser beam? Bro, we should be pissed off. We should be pissed off. We should be saying, yo, if y'all lunch the James Webb telescope out of space, why you can't lunch me out of space? I want to go on a rocket, nigga. You can't sell me this laser beam shit. Nope, nope. Shut up about the laser beam. Pow, hit you on your lips. Boom. <laughs> I paid for rockets and I want rockets, goddammit, and I don't care how slow they is. I want to go on a rocket. That's what you said. That's what we paid for. We've been spending a million dollars a day testing rocket engines. Just for him to say, forget rockets, man. Boy, that's game and people are going to fall for it. That's that. If you from the hood, you shouldn't be falling for this game. You should. You know this game. You know you gave this man some money for some Jordans. You gave him some money for some Jordans, right? And he come back with the Tortons. You know, the dude with the torch in his hand, not, not the ball, the torch, the Tortons. He come back with the Tortons, right? <laughs> and you like, man, I paid for Jordans. And he be like, man, fuck them Jordans. Nigga, this the new shit, nigga. These them Tortons, nigga. I know they cheaper, nigga, but nigga, they lighter, nigga. And they make you jump. Man, fuck them Jordans. You don't want them Jordans, nigga. Them punk ass Jordans. Check these Tortons out, nigga. See, now he got the shit on the thing that you paid for. How y'all falling for this game? How y'all falling for this game if you from the hood? No, nah, I'ma say, man, I know that the Jordans are my all that, brother, but I paid for Jordans. Where the Jordans at? Man, screw those Jordans, brother. Now let me show you the features on these Tortons right here now. <laughs> we know that game. How y'all gonna let him play this game on us right here? Forget rocket boosters. No, we ain't gonna forget them Jordans, dog. No, we ain't gonna forget rockets. We paid for rockets, buddy. What you talking about? Laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate 
how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness. Y'all should have been calculating how much fuel we gonna need to fuel these damn rockets, man. You playing with my money, bro. I paid for goddamn rockets. And I was about to move to Houston. I'm a Yao Ming fan talking about some laser beams. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. That's when a record would have skipped. I would have, I would have looked at that nigga with like, forget what, oh, hold up, stop, Paul, Paul, wait, 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 hold up. Come here, come here, Makai, let me, let me holler at you, Makai, come here. Forget what again? Forget them rockets, man. Pop, 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 shut your ass. We paid for rockets, nigga. <laughs> Forget goddamn right. We know this game. Hey man, forget them joints. These tortons the truth, my nigga. Check these tortons out. Forget asteroid collisions. No, we want the shit. We want the collisions. We want the danger. No, brother, you ain't gonna cheat me out my money, man. I paid for rockets, bro. No, we ain't gonna forget all that. Now see, they can game the world up, but they can't game you, boy. Let's say I take your, <clears throat> not your genome, but your connectome, put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. Forget asteroid collisions. Forget radiation dangers and weightlessness and lack of oxygen. Forget all that. You are riding on a laser beam at the speed of light. All right, y'all ready to go deep with this shit now? We can play some more of his video later. I'm ready to teach. You get what he's saying about realism is basically soul harvesting. It's still in souls. Now, let me show you exactly what this is. Milky Way... Uh Galaxy light beam, you'll see this all the time, right? Watch this. So when we talk about realism, opening up this portal to the heavens, look at this, it's the Milky Way galaxy. In the middle of the Milky Way galaxy is a black hole. Now remember this, that the uh, Milky Way galaxy is really the flat earth. Here go the flat earth, you know all of the, you know anybody who follow flat earth, you know that the, the black hole in the middle of it is Mount Maru. Let's talk about realism a minute. Let's talk about realism a minute. And when we talk about Israel and what we're dealing with, with Rael and what, what, what realism is all about, we're going to use the symbolism. Here is the flat earth ring map. And then we understand that when you compare that to uh, uh, the Milky Way, it's the same thing. This is the flat earth, right? With the North Pole at the middle of it. See people, how you think that if you dealing with micro and macro that you live on a globe earth, but you in a flat Milky Way? Don't make no sense. It's micro and macro, my dude. So my thing, when you look at this image here, it's really showing us this. This right here, the early solar system, the sun was not in the middle, the pole was in the middle, and this is what we're dealing with, boom. The sun goes around that pole. Why am I showing you that, though? Why am I showing that? Because when we talk about what Makai Kaku was just teaching, they're reverse engineering the portal that's at the middle of our universe, and I'm about to show you something real creepy. You know, we've been talking about these sky portals that's been seen all over the place. Let's pull up a couple. Even the image associated with it, you already know that we dealing with what? This, this portaling, techno portaling technology. Boom. 
Let's go to Flat Earth. We're going to talk about this portaling technology. Let's talk about this. Uh, uh, hold on. Maybe if I put in sighting. There we go. There we go. Now, let's talk about this. People, hold on, people, hold on. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. So, so like I was saying, yo, if you look at this symbol here, this is the Milky Way galaxy. Look. Yes, sorry about that, y'all. So, so check this out, yo. If you look at this picture of the Milky Way galaxy, like I said, this is just technology right here showing us like he was saying, beam me up technology. Now, I'm going to give you my theory. I think that when we look in the sky and see this right here, that some soul is crossing over. It's been a lot of deaths in the world. Um, on a celebrity level, left and right. But at the same time, it's been a lot of sightings like this, too. And um, like when people be like, even when people don't die, they cloned or they, they consciousness may have left their body and it's a shell or AI algorithm. How do they cross over? There's technology, right, that we can use to open up portals and then you got Neuralink, you got all kind of options and this is this is an option. I showed you the picture of Mercury with his uh, wing helmet on carrying that same symbol. Why does his helmet have wings on it? Because that's like Neuralink. That's like Neuralink and this right here is like the beam portal so when you put the Neuralink on the head then it allows the neural neural uh the the neural highways and neural activity and data to be transmitted through the helmet to the other realm but you can't transmit it to the other realm if there's no bridge or no portal to that realm so that's where the caduceus come in at the neural link is is what allows the mind to connect with some sort of technology to make it transmittable and then the staff is what creates the bridge to open up the portal to allow the consciousness to go through and cross over to the other side. And if you look at Travis Scott concert, when he says, see you on the other side, it was this same symbol right here. Oh, my God. When we say that Saturn be eating up the soul of man. Well, yes, it will look like this ring God is eating up a soul if it's transitioning through this thing. This is like a spiral staircase. You see this blue beam connecting to the portal? That's like a spiral staircase for a soul to go into, boop, and it just beamed up out of here. Beam me up, Scotty. So this circular pattern is what the UFO is. The aliens are here, guys, and we, we don't see them. I'm showing you that uh, people are seeing these portals everywhere. And what this is, man, is some kind of technology that can really zap your damn soul out your body. Now, we've been thinking that aliens are going to show up to the earth in some silver ships, you know, with beams going boo, 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 when the aliens are already here. Look at this. This the UFO ship and the beam portal. Whatever these guys are that are in power, uh, they have reinforcements coming to this earth. That's my theory. People are saying all of these little portals in the sky because these are holographic alien craft. These are, they, I'm, not, I'm not talking little green men. I'm talking about humans from a future universe bringing their technology to this universe and they're able to do it now because our universe and their universe are in proximity to each other. 
like two ships that's close an ocean and they decide to trade and they send a bridge across from each one. Boom, boom. So I do think that when it's saying the end of days, there will be other beings arriving to our earth. And uh, there will be like raptures, meaning people just dropping dead because they getting zapped out of their body. Uh, here it is right here. That, the U that whatever these aliens were that we were expecting to come to Earth, they're here. That's what I'm telling folks. We expecting physical vehicles, but these creatures are holographic. And this is their craft right here. And this is the beam portal. That's what I'm telling you. This is what realism is all about. And remember, when you say Israelian, you got the word alien in it. And that the word Hebrew mean people from the other side. And that the word Hebrew got the word brew in it. He is dealing with a man. Traditionally, women make the food. So the women would be brewing up the soups and all that. But they call this Hebrew because this is a brew made by man. And man is the God of the technocracy. What this represents right here is man stirring up the ether to open a portal. Man's brewing. Uh, uh, he's drilling a hole through the ether. Like this is why when we talk Hebrew, while the brew is in it and the witch got the stick stirring it up. This is what it all uh, really was dealing with before it turned into a green lady with a bump on her nose and a big old pot. This was technology and all of the technology that's just dealing with time travel, immortality in the ancient world. They hid it behind Halloween. And remember, Halloween is what? Halloween, which is hollow, come from the word hollow, Halloween, when you put the mask on. Because when in, in, in the 2045 Avatar project, your avatar can be whatever you want it to be. You can like Halloween costumes. Now, it's called trick or treat, but we being tricked, not treated. The concept of trick or treat is because. When, when our ancestors started opening up these portals, you had to trust them. This was a walk of faith. Because if you allow your mind to be uploaded through somebody's portal, you don't know if they crossing you over into a hell or a heaven. You didn't know if it was a trick or a treat. Now, think about this. Air, air, all around us, we got the witch stirring up the brew pot. And here it go right here. Here go the flat earth version. Now all of this what I'm showing you about this portal right here. Let's go back to realism and let's show you the symbols. See that? See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? All realism is, is the knowledge of how to get the human soul out the body and cross it over to other dimensions. That's all it is. It's beam me up religion. Beam me up technology. It's where science meets religion because it take because tech they using technology to get the soul out the body, but getting the soul out the body is a religious action. So now this is where the church and the scientists cannot hide their union and where we can see where we're arriving back when the Pharisees and Sadducees was working with the Vatican to uh, har harness people's souls and indoctrinate them back in the day, history repeating itself. So if you look at this symbol, it's showing you, let's talk about it a bit. You got a six-pointed star, right, with a spiral in the middle. Now let's talk about that because this is what it means right here. You see this? When science fiction meets reality. In other words, when religion meets technology. We end up human holograms. And the lines become blurred whether or not this is technology, man using technology, or man playing God. But that's where we at today. Now look. This is the human macabre. 
and if in the middle of this six-pointed star, there's a spinal cord. And on your spinal cord is a spiral of energy. And that's what we looking at with this Milky Way galaxy. That's called a kundalini. Let me show you some. You're a six-pointed star. But in the middle of that six-pointed star, you got a vortex going on. In the middle of that six-pointed star right here. Here go to what's happening at the core of that macabre. So in the middle of this macabre, you got this spiral going on, and it's uh, being born out of the heart. And so when you look at the symbol of realism, you will see a six-pointed star. Let's go back to it. And right in the middle of that six-pointed star, you will have this spiral coming right out the heart of it. And the reason for that is because of this. That's the electromagnetic energy field blasting up out of the heart and expanding around the body. Now, I want you to think of a fisherman casting a net. This is how this thing is coming up out the heart from a small liberty point and then opening up all around you. In other words, you are a fish that's caught up in a net around you. But the one that casted the net was your own inner self. Let me give you a little bit of uh, uh, st uh, stuff to look at here to bring this kind of home for you. Uh, when we talk about this fisherman casting a net, check that out right there. You see that? See? The fisherman got the net balled up really like a liberty ball. And then he expands it, it opens up like Spider-Man. This is the story of Spider-Man as well. And you can see that the pattern of the net expanding from a ball. The singularity is the Big Bang. So they told the story of the fisherman casting the net to show you this here knowledge too. So if you look at the bottom right corner, you will see what I'm talking about as well. And if you look at the top uh, uh, right right here, you can see what that what Nut is. See, she's the neck. Remember, the goddess Nut is the goddess neck. That, and she's a casted net that's casted down from a singularity, just like what I'm showing you here. Let me show you something real quick. Show you something real quick. So if you look at what Nut is with all the stars in her, that's the net pattern. Nut is net, and she she's just like this net right here. And Polaris is like pointing you back to the 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 the, the spot on a net where it was casted at. Right there in the middle is the, the seed, meaning the point where the net expanded from, like a flower. Boom, right there, you see. Very simple science, right? Now, let's keep it moving so we can compare it back to this. So now we see what's going on here. So now let's talk, let's talk, let's talk about this, and we're going to go to pop smoke again. Let's check this out, guys. So again, this electromagnetic energy field is being casted from the, the heart right here, and then it expands all around the body. And uh, very simple stuff. And you're captured in your own Taurus field that you uh, 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 cast it from the center of the self. We're, and basically, we're all an explosion of energy, like a grenade, and you pulled your own pin. And when you pull the pin, here you go. It, boom, electromagnet, this thing expanded. So let's talk more about this uh because when we talk about realism which is the symbol is a six-pointed star with this spiral coming up out of the chest part this spiral let's go back to that symbol once again we're gonna go deep today uh right here check that out you got a six-pointed star you got that spiral now remember what i said the six-pointed star is your aura around the body and the spiral is the core. 
within you. Inside of this person is a spiral of energy called a kundalini. So I have this idea. I want to design and build my own terrarium, but a very unique nigga. I want to essentially take an infinity. Sorry about that. We ain't gonna move backwards, y'all. In part one, we went over the infinity terrarium, so we ain't gonna do that again. We ain't got to be redundant. But yeah, look at Pop Smoke's hologram. And look at this, like I was, I, I don't wanna be redundant. In part one, we went over the Pokemon ball, which is what we see here. And we peeped how the light was expanding from the chest. This ball that's around his body, that's the Merkaba field. That's the aura field, all right? The ball that's around his body, that's the aura field around this person's body right here. Now that is being casted from the core, from the core. Now, at the core of the self is another inner dimension. It's, it's its own dimension. So if you go back to Pop Smoke and look at what's happening at the core, he's casting this whole holographic projection around, and it's got his avatar in the middle of it. This is how we're being manifesting right now in the flesh, which is a flash of light. And, if, and that I'm showing you what realism is. It's the knowledge of us, but then they stole this knowledge of us and turned it into technology to control us. And what they give us back is lies like this to hide the truth, which is really what I was showing you right here. You're born in all of these other rings. What Makai Kaku was saying is, like a CD disc got a bunch of rings on it for each song, we can beam your consciousness on a CD disc and you will be able to travel around a quantum universe because on each planet in that universe, you already have an avatar there. And we'll just beam your consciousness from one avatar that's on one planet and beam it to the avatar that's on another planet. That's technology that's already existing. We, that's, nature created that. They just reverse engineering it. And here is the system that nature made right here. It's like a vinyl record and each ring is a song. You're on each, so, like, you know, think of it this way. If Brother Sanchez make a music album, just think of my shit on a vinyl record. And from the middle ring to the outer ring, guess what? I'm on every song because it's my record. On this vinyl record, with the rings coming from the middle to the outer, I'm on every song, starting with the intro all the way to the outro. That's what I'm telling you how this world is built. It's a big vinyl record. And you own every song. And all he got to do is move the needle. And that's called beaming the consciousness, which is what Makai Kaku was talking about earlier, if you want to go back and finish that video. So I don't got to move the temptations from the intro to the next song, the, the, the artist is on each ring on that vinyl record, meaning he on song one, song two, song three. I don't got to move him. I just got to move the needle, not him. This is how our universe is made, y'all. And I try to use these examples to make it to where, you know, they're using technology to reverse engineer our universe so what i do i use the technology to teach you what the universe is think about that they're studying what our universe is and turning it into technology but they telling us our universe is something else so guess what i do I go and get the technology that they made by using the universe. And I say, look at this technology, y'all. This is what your universe is. 
And I can do that because I know they made the technology by stealing, by studying the universe. So they don't like me because of that. Because I say, I tell you what, motherfucker, I'm going to take this technology to the people and say, look, guys, you see this shit? This ain't their idea. They stole this shit from Mother Nature. In fact, I'm going to use this shit that they made to teach you how Mother Nature shit work based on this technology. Like a vinyl record. And compare it to the universe right here. And so when we talk about the needle on the record, look at this, y'all. You see the needle on the record? Now, what they showing you here is just like a vinyl record. It's spinning around and the needle moves. We have a pole shift. The needle moves and it plays a different song and we move into a parallel universe with different energy. Our universe have changed several times since you was born. Now let me show you refraction in a cup so you can see what the pole shift look like when the needle moves. So let's look at the pole shift. Here is the pole shift. When the pole shifts, it's because of refraction and reflection. So the pole beams itself to a parallel universe, like the straw is reflecting, refracting and reflecting itself outside uh, 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 through the layers of the water. Remember the waters above and waters below. As they fluctuate, it, it, it'll, 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 it'll dictate how many copies of the straw we get. So when we add more cup layers, we get three straws, four straws, five straws. But that is just the straw shifting from the center cup to the outer cup. And when we take cups away, then the straw is beaming itself back to Eden as we eliminate the false cups and the false reflections and refractions. And as we eliminate all the outer cups, we left with one straw in the middle. And we see what the true straw is again, instead of the reflected, refracted straws. What's happening in this Milky Way is the same thing. When there's a pole shift, there's a refraction in our axis, in our pole, and the needle is moved from one ring to the next one, and we enter a parallel universe, guys. Or in other words, just like a vinyl record, same album, different song. There's a needle change. There's a needle change. So what happens is this. Once we compete, complete a short count, we have a pole shift and we go to the next song. In other words, just like a vinyl record, we can start from the middle at the intro. And when we get a full circuit, a complete circle, we move to the next ring. And when we get a full circle on that one, when that song done, we move to the next ring. And we keep on moving outward to it ain't no more rings to move to. Guess what? We then build our own vinyl record and our own system, and that's what's happening now. Man is building his own universes. He building his own avatar, his own soul to put in him. And that's what happened when the song is over. When we complete our album, we begin to make solo projects. The group break up just like Wu-Tang and everybody go solo and do their own album. When all of us as a collective, see, that's what's happening right now. When our universe mature, when this song is over, and all of us become gods and we start to go create our own universes. This is a fractal code. It don't die. It multiply exponentially. So, man, the level we reach in that, Everybody now is, is we're becoming gods. Our world is maturing. When Jesus said, I'm going to prepare kingdoms of heaven, all of us are doing that. All of us are Christ. You're preparing your own uh, heavenly kingdoms by 
the state of your heart in this kingdom. Whatever that state is, because we talking about the electromagnetic force, it's going to be like a net psh, that capture over you again and it's going to put a whirl over you. So whatever in your heart is going to create a universe around you in your next incarnation. And this is a continuum that the world you want around you, you got to make it inside of you. Let's talk about vinyl records. I used to collect them. This right here, guys, we all started off as a group. But when the album's done, we all gonna do solo projects. We started off as a group, but now we got to do solo projects when this is over. Every man gonna make his own album. And, and you know what that, that album is gonna look like? This right here. Because what this is, is showing that you are a vinyl record. Check this out. This is realism. You are a vinyl record. You're an explosion. What is a vinyl record? It's a freaking ripple effect. Saturn. Now, in the middle of the vinyl record, there is no song. There's a hole. And you know what? That hole got to be there because that hole is what connects to the pole so that the vinyl record can be spun around. Now, let me share some with you, my brothers and sisters. Look at what you are. You are a vinyl record. And in the middle of the vinyl record, look, it's a hole. It's a hollow space. You know why it's a hole in the middle of you? So that you can connect with this North Pole right here and be spun around. That's what the symbol of realism mean. That's what the symbol of realism mean. You are a record that's being played brothers and sisters if you don't like the music that you hear you need to tune yourself you need to work on your inner self because what you hearing and that you don't like coming from inside of you listen here the universe is responding to what's happening in you and if wh whatever you want around you you gotta build it inside of you start on it today start on it today don't wait Harness the energy inside of you. Make the right decisions every day to maintain the energy that you like within yourself. Um, be unapologetically your damn self. Right? Now check this out. Look at the symbol of realism. And let's go back to the vinyl record. Remember, the record is being spun at the center, and that's where we see the spiral at. Right? Now check it out. Let's talk about this. You're built just like this vinyl record. And the reason that there's a hole in the middle of you, you can't be played. See, the earth is a damn vinyl player. And you're the record. You were put onto this earth in a line at the pole. You see these layers around your body? You're one album with a bunch of songs on it. And when they put your vinyl on this thing, you were born. Now the sun and moon is reading your disc. The sun and moon in the sky is blue ray and red ray, like DVD disc, blue ray and red ray. And you're a disc that's being read. The entire universe is your light projection and, and your song playing. But all of our songs are layered over each other. And like I was showing you the other day, making one big connect like the Internet. So all of us are playing a, a song in this particular ring. And every one song being submitted is like all of us making a compilation album. And everybody put one song on it. Like if I do a Dirty South compilation album and I have No Limit got a song on it, The Hot Boys got a song on it, Swisher House got a song on it, every big label from the South got one song on the label. That's what life is. 
Each time we go to another ring, we move to another song and we submitting that other song along with everybody else in that universe as part of a new compilation. Y'all with me here? Trying to simplify this realism crap and show you how the beauty of what we are. Drop a one though if y'all with me, man. Drop a y'all feeling me, man. We ain't going too deep, is it? We totally understand this. Because Sanchez going to break it down in a way where even a child like, oh, that's why I dream and have deja vu. I'm moving back and forth into parallel universes where I'm already at and I'm projecting my consciousness. Yeah. This kind of knowledge take your fears of death away. When you understand that your last breath is your first breath. This is why the Bible say the first shall be last and the last shall be first. You can't die. Now watch this, guys. We're immortals. And this is what we... We're, now check how deep this is, right? This universe is built like a vinyl record system. And this is the needle that reads the, the, the songs. And, and again, it shifts to other songs uh, after a, a full revolution. And we have pole shifts. And every time we have a pole shift, we are expanding away from the central universe. See, when they said we got kicked out of Eden, we ain't get kicked out of Eden. We're being kicked out of Eden. Nothing stopped is still happening. We're in an expanded universe. We keep reflecting and refracting away from Eden, which is the straw that's in the middle, the real straw. So the more our universe is span, we will move further away from Egypt because think about this, right? You're like an apple on a tree. And the more that the apple expands, the closer it's getting from falling, up, falling off that tree. Once, you, once we expand our consciousness to a big enough state, the apple going to fall off the tree. And our entire universe is going to separate from the mother universe. Because we've expanded to a point where we outgrown the mother and you shaking off. Now, let me show you. When that apple hits the ground, it gets buried and it becomes its own apple tree. That's what I told you earlier. We all going to make our own universe. Each one of us is about to become our own tower, our own, like on some Neo in the Matrix type shit. You about to become your own multiverse, which means basically you're about to become in synchronicity with all of these other versions of yourself that exist. No one universe can hold you at this point. So you become this multidimensional, interdimensional being that's moving throughout all of these parallel universes at will. And this is where Neo, this is your God state. This is your inheritance as a time traveler, as an archon. Yes, we're archons. We lost the knowledge. We gaining it back. The difference between us and them, they want to gain it back with technology. We want to gain it back with what? Awakening. So let's look at this symbol of realism. Uh, right here, this ra realism. If you look at this symbol, we can go away from now from the vinyl record. The vinyl record, uh, again, the vinyl record, just like the CD disc, it's the UFO ship. When they pressing these records, they spinning them around to put the song on them. When you look at Pata spinning the man around on a potter's wheel, He's been born, he's been burned like a CD disc. When you put the blank CD in the tower, you can hear it spinning as the song is being written on it. If you can look at Bata writing the song on that man as he's spinning around, this is a holographic universe where we're manifesting everything that was written. It was written like a CD disc. It was written. 
and it's going to be fulfilled. Because whatever is pressed on that CD, when you hit play, it's going to be played. You ain't going to get no different song. It's going to play from intro to outro what was print inscribed on it. You cannot change your life. Everything happening in your life is supposed to happen and it's for a reason and it was already written out on the disc and it's just going to be fulfilled once the needle start reading that part. That, that's what's happening on this earth, guys. Uh, let's, let's, keep, let's keep these spammers up out of here. Let's go, let's, let's go back to the... Let's, let, let's read a little bit here about realism, just a little bit of what they say about it. Uh, and you, we're going to go to Wikipedia. We're going to go to Wikipedia, just a quick Wikipedia search. And realism known as, look, Raelianism, you see that word? If you take the R off, you get alienism, alienism. Look at here, UFO religion. Now think about it. This UFO ship looks like a top hat. It looks like a witch hat. It looked like what these Jews be wearing. And guess what? Don't this symbol look like the Jews symbol? The Jews wear a, uh, their symbol is a six-pointed star, and they wear the top hat. I'm telling you that all of these Abrahamic religions is based around your soul being harvested. There are people in this world that have sold a soul to these people, and they indebted for them for eternity, and they got to go out there and make other people sell their soul like military recruitment. And these people of all races, they've been to the other side. They've seen the demigod, Yahweh, who's uh, harvesting these souls on the other side. He's got this uh, synthetic reality in between the crossover portal that's in between this world and the next natural ether. So in between, you got our world. Okay, let me go to the board. So you got, let's say this our world, this the next world. And when we die, our soul bounces from this world to this world. But what they did, they built the fake world right here. Right here, hold on, is that too small? Let's do it again. Let's redo it. Hold on, I'm still doing it small. My bad. So, but anyway, let's do this. You see that? Look at here. This is our world. This is the next world. Right here is a fake intercepting t some kind of technology that you got to hop over. This whole cow hopping over the moon because this is not the real, whatever, this, this is an obstruction. It's a dam, like damnation. And if you look at it, this is what makes that Saturn symbol of their God as well. This world right here is the fake world. We're in that now. See, this represents, right here represent. think about this as being born. And, and when you was born, you were supposed to be conceived in, in the Garden of Eden, which is right here. This is the next world is our, we getting closer and closer to our true home.
like the cup refraction. That, and this is the, the think of the center world. But right here is like mi this, inner, this middle world, and in the middle you got this, it's like a dual world where you got good spirits and bad spirits. That's what we in right now, Midgard. Right here. That ain't the real world. We ain't in the real world. We're in an intercepting pod, which is, it, it's, it's, it's got part of the uh, spirits from the real world and these other spirits that are baby spirits that are on a uh, path of descension moving this way. And then you got some beings on a path of ascension hopping this way. But the beings that's moving backwards, are they're creating these obstructions to harvest souls and, and have people move. I don't know if that makes sense to y'all. But whenever they do it, it makes this prison planet that we call Yahweh's terrarium with the sky above, the ground, all that. But in Asgard, there is no duality. There's just one thing, and that's righteousness. Here, it's good and bad. That's because we're in a, we're in a Midgard. We're in like a middle, middle ground simulation. That, you know, like some sort of damn technology. And they don't want us to pass through because once we make it through here, we'll be where we was intended to be it all along. This hell does up for a minute. This is why they call it hell. This slows our journey down, but it don't stop it. So think about it. Our birth, we started here. And at birth, we were supposed to be born in the true universe over here, but we got intercepted by Saturn right here with his belt on in the duality. But when we die, we will move on through this and be where we need to be, which is why they're trying to create technology to stop you from dying. They don't want you to die. Think about it. The people that don't give a damn about you, now they want to make you technology. Now they want to make you immortal. They won't give you clean water, but they gonna give you immortality. Stupid. They won't even give you equal rights, but they gonna give you immortality. So they know when we die, we escape this damn, this little trap and we get to where we spoke. They didn't do nothing but hold us up. Like I said, that's why it's called, when I say they hold us up, hologram, they turned us into a hologram. Your light was not supposed to unfold right here and become a human. Let's just, this is a theory I'm giving you. I'm not saying I'm right. I have a, a lot of stuff in my mind I got to get out. This is a prison planet in my theory. It ain't the true base reality. We, something hell does up. And I'm telling you, that's what, why it's called hell. They say we are in hell because they knew spirits was getting held up in this damn damnation. Now, when you die, you pass on, but they don't want us to die. Because they know what, what I'm saying. If my theory is true, it explains why they don't want us to die. Because we will move on through the trap and just move. That mean they can't. Think about it. You got a bunch of salmon swimming through a river and some fishermen created a dam, but they didn't really trap the salmon. They just slowed them down. Now, when they see that dam getting weak, they need to do, if they can't kill the salmon, then they got to weaken the salmon. And, and, and in this case, they're going to get rid of this body, put your mind in another body that can't die. You know why? A wise African proverb spoke about their strength and death. The religions turned that into salvation and death, meaning you're going to be saved when you die. You're going to be made it through the matrix. So if we're going to be saved in death, if that's true, it'll explain why, okay, they don't want you to die. They don't want you to just live your life naturally out. 
continue developing yourself so when you die, you got a good heart and a way that you really want to be because you don't get, you know, you know. So my thing is, people are going to be cheating death in our time. And that's going to keep them moving backwards, being born over and over in a loop that is this right here. They won't make it out of this loop of being born then to the fake reality. Born into the fake reality. Born again and back to Saturn. Born again, back to the doo They never going to make it over here. They never going to make it to the other side like Christ did, the Passover. Because they let the fear of death keep them recycled and they wanted to cheat, cheat death. And when, what happens when you cheat in school? They repeat you. If you get caught cheating, that starts you on a journey of repetition. If, if, the, if the teacher catch you cheating on a test, you got to do it over. And this same law goes on in the universe. When you cheat, you create a loop of fucking recycling. When you start cheating... There is no advancing for you. you. If you cheat on a test, you didn't learn nothing. Life and death is supposed to teach us something. But if we cheat, we didn't learn and we got to keep repeating. You better learn everything this life trying to teach you and move your ass to your next destination and quit letting technology cripple you. Now, let's talk about some more about this realism here. Go to this thing here, this quick little Wikipedia thing. So, uh, scholars of religion classify realism as a new religious movement. The group is formalized as the International Raelian Movement, Raelian Church. Well, basically, you know, we ain't got to read all this, but, but okay, look here. Raelians engage in daily meditation Hope for physical immortality through human cloning. Y'all, what I've been saying? What have I been saying? This line right here was meant for me to see. Because everybody just heard me say I'm finna move on. Y'all saw that. Uh-oh, drop a one if we still rocking and rolling. It's telling me that we freezing up. If we still rocking and rolling out there, drop a one right now. If you can hear me good and see me good and ain't no buffering, drop me a one. Let me know we still rocking and rolling. Hey, Chris Cyphers, what up, man? Let me wrench the brother Chris Cyphers up, man. Hey, check this out, y'all. Some of y'all may be missing wrenches, and then I'm going to see who you are. Don't worry about it. But now check this out. I don't like how many likes I got because I feel like I'm going in right now. Like, I really feel like I'm going in. I feel like I got a lot of advanced research going on here. And uh, when I look at my likes and I see that it don't really match the viewers, it's discouraging. Now, if you want to encourage me, hit the like button. Now, God damn it, come on, hit the like button. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. All right, guys. Now, let's go, because you see we're going deep. Now, uh, people, what I just read is everything I've been teaching y'all. And it's sad that, that I mean, it, that everything I'm saying is spot on. Look at here. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, let's read it together. Raelians engage in daily meditation. You know why they engage in it? Because they trying to get out of their body. Look, I made a mistake and closed the thing. But it's nothing. It's a quick wik Wikipedia. That's easy to pull up. Give me a minute. Let me get some order here. Because I got all kind of shit open. Now, let's look at that again. 
Raelianism teaches that an extraterrestrial species known as the Elohim created humanity using their advanced technology. Didn't I tell y'all that? Didn't I just say that our body is, is ancient technology that's owned by rich men? That's why we can't take it with us when we go. They created the, the uh, states of matter in this realm, these, these ancient archons in Babylon and all that. That's what I'm telling y'all. I've been teaching y'all that. When you look up the fucking, uh, it, let, let's do the etymology of Elohim. Guess what you're going to realize? That ain't, that's talking about Allah. Allah. A name of God in the Bible. It's the plural form, of course. The word Elo is the word halo. Halo, like a halo. Now, Elohim, the heem is a, like the word shining, a shining halo. See, because at the halo itself is the singularity, but the rays of light shining form it is the plural form. In Egypt, this is called Atenism. I'm going to show you it. It's a shining disc, a shining disc. The disk itself is a singular entity, but its rays are plural. This is translated in Hebrew as the God El and the Elohim. Okay? This is the God El, which is the singularity, the ball. And because he's a source of light, his light rays are his Elohim. When he say, let us make man in our image, each one of these light rays become a miniature version of L, which is scattered across the multiverse. There's one singular L in the middle of the universe. And from that singular L, many L's are projected outward all throughout the multiverse. And that's what, what's happening to us right now. That's how you got all of these different avatars out there. It is one true version of you in the middle of the earth and it's in a crystal ball and that crystal ball has this dense holographic version of you inside the crystal ball and when they shine all the light rays through it all around it, it project a different version of you at the end of each light ray in a different universe because at the end of the spotlight is a circle like I was showing you in the previous one like the Batman symbol, with the Batman in the middle of that symbol. That's you in the middle of your Taurus field. That's how you get the Batman symbol, yo. Here go the Batman symbol. It's you in the middle of that circle. You see it? But this ain't the real you. This is the projected you. You're, you're, this is the holographic you. Like this straw. The, see, the real you is in the middle of the cup. All the fake copies of you are like this straw right here. Them are the crooked versions, the wicked ones. They ain't aligned with the true one at the middle. See, check this out. When you get all of these fake selves aligned with the one at the middle, then you'll notice there's only one true straw. And all of your strength is being broken up into fake versions. That's why we're weak. Because until we consolidate all of the cells into one, each one got a little bit of the power. So when they talk about Samson breaking his hair and losing his strength, this straw demonstration is like a string of hair. And when you break the straw or when you break the hair, it shows you weakness. This was a symbol in early Germany. Let me show you. They want to curse this knowledge. Check this out. Right there in Germany, they show you this. You know what this lightning bolt mean? That's the broken straw, man. That's what it is right there. I'm going to show you something else, right? Because I deal with sacred geometry that's going to blow you away. Watch this, right? Let's go to the board. Watch this. Watch this, right? Because this one going to hit home.
Remember in school, we would do one of these all the time. Everybody going to remember this, right? Everybody used to love to do these. Remember these? People, guess what we was doing? Guess what we was drawing? We was drawing one of these. This, we's dealing with Germany symbolism. Hitler was, let me stop, because they don't really want this shit out. Let me stop, I'm going to stop, let me stop. You get the point. Now, guess what this mean? A S for straw, baby. A S for suction. A S for serpent. A S for spirit. A S for soul. Don't you know that the word church come from the word Kirk, which is why we talk about Kirkpatrick, Kirkland. Kirkland is church land. Kirk is the word church. The word Kirk was spelled C-I-R-C. You know, that's the root word of circle, circle. The church was supposed to embody the knowledge of the circle of life. The circle is spelled with an S, not a C. Kirkle and circle are the same. Kirkle, circle. This right here is, is well, see, you don't think our ancestors looked at this phenomena and said, damn, we had one straw, now we got two straws. When our ancestors saw this phenomena on the stream, it fascinated them. And that led to them uncovering the secrets of the universe, which is uh, refraction and reflection. Now let's go back, back to our Wikipedia and play around some more on Wikipedia. Just wanted to get a little symbolism in. Get a little symbol symbolism in. So again, the Elohim created humanity by using advanced technology. Now, when the Edo Elohim created humanity, what did they use? Light. They used light, because what did they say? Let there be light, and let us make man in our image. Do you know what the crystal, crystal skull phenomena is all about, man? Let's go back to all this autism. Let me show y'all some. Show you about this crystal skull crap. See, people, the crystal skull is dealing with holography. It's not solid. It's not physical. See what how how a hologram work is. I gotta make a copy of you in like a crystal ball. Just say I make a translucent see-through copy of you in the middle of a crystal ball. Then I shine concentrated light through the crystal balls. It'll project that version of you in the middle of the crystal ball all around on the wall into a bunch of different versions. That's the crystal skull knowledge but they trying to change it. See, at the middle of the universe, right, there's a crystal ball with you in it, with your true self in it. And that's what's projecting all of these parallel avatars, these little fake bodies out. This is what your body is. It's an avatar. But it's literally being projected here from the center. The God ball is the true self. And the God ball is what I'm showing you with this autism, the ball at the top. That's the true self. So when we talk, let me show you what this mean, right? 
You know the voodoo doll, what I was showing you earlier, the man of sin, right? When they put Jesus on top of the mountain and they pierced him in the side, you know, they put Jesus on top of the mountain and they pierced him all in his sides, you know, because Jesus is a form of God ball. And if you look at the God ball, look at it. It's pierced all in its sides. That's why it's called a Christ crystal ball. Christ and L. Ra and L. Relianism. This is the UFO ship that is beaming the consciousness down and up into the different planes of existence. Just like Makakaku was saying earlier. We can have a base point, which is this world. And from this base point, we can create an avatar on every holographic planet that we put in the heavens. We can launch these simulations up there in the cloud space. Many as we want. And we can create an avatar of ourselves in each of these universes. And whenever we want to move from one universe to the next one, like Makakaku said, we can just beam you from one body to the other one. They just reverse engineering technology that we already are. That's why when you say Hebrew and you talk about the people from the other side, that's these folks, man. They've been living forever in this earth and they don't want to move forward. The longer they stay here, the most scary they are to move to the next level. Like a person that's standing on a cliff and they about to jump into the ocean. All of their friends like, dude, just jump in. Don't think about it. And they like, woo. And they hopping in. They done got over their fear. Other folks coming up like, bro, I was scared too. You just got to do it. Like what Nike say, just do it. Just dive in. But the longer you stand there and just stare at the heights of it, you ain't going to never jump. You ain't, and the longer that you stand there, the harder it's going to get for you to jump. Eventually, you're going to break down and start crying and shit. Folks going to be like, man, it's all right. Don't worry. You don't got to jump. And they're going to be laughing at your ass like, dude, he's such a pussy. <laughs> Weep. Because all of them was scared, too. But they faced their fears and they just jumped. That's where death is. Everybody got a little fear of death. But you face your fear. You don't try to cheat death with technology. Because the longer you do it, the scarier death going to be to you. Because when you run from death, death going to beat your ass even more when it catch you. You know when you running from your mama and she got them switches... Boy, when I catch you, I'm going to fuck you up even more. You know how it is. When you running from the police and the police catch up with your ass, they going to put a knee in your back. They going to put them cuffs on harder. Shouldn't have ran. The longer you run from death, the harder you making it, son. They know that. They done ran so long that they know when death finally catch up with them, they got so much karma. They got an ass whooping coming. Don't be like them folks. These folks been cheating and they going to pay for it. They going to pay for it. We can finish this real quick while I roll up, man, because I need to smoke some. And we're going to go long and strong today, even if I'm here for hours on end, because I got so much to teach, man. It, this is a lengthy topic with Relianism. Might have to do a part three. Let's, 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 let's finish this video. Put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. Forget asteroid collisions. Forget radiation dangers and weightlessness and lack of oxygen. Forget all that. You are writing on a laser beam at the speed of light. And then at the end is a relay station, a relay station which takes the laser beam and then puts it into a surrogate. 
that is, all the neural networks encoded in the laser beam can be manifested as a robot on the other side of the galaxy. Didn't I just tell y'all that? He said they're going to beam your singular consciousness to a relay system. And at that relay system, it's going to beam it into different robots and different planets. I just told you that. way to explore the galaxy, just like Isaac Asimov predicted in his short story. Let's say I take your, <clears throat> not your genome, but your connectome, put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. Forget asteroid collisions. Forget radiation dangers and weightlessness and lack of oxygen. Forget so they're going to beam your singular consciousness to a point where at this, at this relay station, they're going to see what's happening is they got all of these different parallel metaverses that they made and they created your avatar in each one or a robotoid, a holographic uh, autobot or whatever. You got an avatar in each one of their little parallel universes. When you beam from the base point, which is this earth, you will arrive at a relay station at that relay station is where you decide which universe you kind of want to beam into. But at that same station, your light, your consciousness will be split up. It's going to be split. Think of a dam. Let me show you a dam, right? And this will make you understand. At a dam, all the water is split up into different channels. So all the water is single, is one body. But when they get to the dam, the dam turn it into all of these little bitty spigots. Let me show you. Look at here, it separate the waters from the waters. And that's what the God of the Bible is doing. He's damning souls. If you go and read the Bible, it'll tell you in the beginning, God separated the waters from the waters. He said, let me make man in my image. This is a damning system. See, cause look, the water is unified before it entered the dam. But then when the water enter the dam, that's the relay s s station. It start to channel your, con your single consciousness into different fucking avatars and it dilutes you. It makes you weak. Because united we stand, divided we fall. And when you divide the water, it start falling. This is the knowledge of damnation. And what is the dam doing? Harnessing energy from the water. They using this same technique on our souls, man. So when you see the God Pan blowing the harmonica, this is what he's doing. He's the God of the harvest. What kind of harvest? A soul harvest. Does this make sense to y'all? The water is united and it's standing up at the top, but when it's divided, it go to falling. This is damnation. That's what he's telling you. See, your soul is a single ball of consciousness, but for them to create a copy of you throughout all these multiverses, they're going to damn it. They're going to take all of this unified energy and chop that shit up into a bunch of weak niggas. But if you take all them weak niggas and ball them up, it's one giant God. That's what they're doing. So when you look at this, this image of the dam and you compare it to autism, you see what I'm saying now. Look at this. The ball represents the water united at the top. And then the rays of light represents the fall of man from Eden. And that let us make man in our image. This is your parallel versions talking to each other. This is the singular God in the middle 
as he's saying, let us make man in our image, that's turning into different copies of himself in these rays of light. God is saying, let my light explode. And that becomes the Big Bang Theory. When it say, let us make man in our image, that's when the explosion happens. That's when an explosion happens. Let us make man in our image. The God that said that when he said it at the same time he was saying it, let there be light, right? He created all these different versions of himself. And you can see it right here. The God said, let us make man in our image. And the moment and the while he was saying that, he gave birth to all of these false selves in the parallel universe. Let me show you the sacred geometry. Let me show you. Let us make man in our image. Look at this. Here it is. Here it is. You see this image? It's the same as this image. Let us make man in our image. Each of those sperms is a version of you that was born in a parallel universe. You had more than one birth, and you're going to have more than one death. This is a continuum. You got to be born out of all these universes. Guess how many universes it is? An uh, infinite amount. So you will never be born out. It's a continuum of being born in and in and in and in and in and in and in. And these archons are on a continuum of being born out and out and out. They're using outer technology that's outside of themselves, connecting with gold and money and luxuries and things outside of themselves. That's a, a, a path of dissension. We don't deal with the outer. We deal with the inner. So my thing is this. Which direction are the sperm headed? They're headed inner, innerwards toward the stargate, toward the great mother. Any sperm you see headed away from that egg, them the damn enemy. They trying to get you to follow them. So this is what this light is. It's a return back home. See, when we get out of our body, we realize that we were just a sleeping beam of light. Everything Makaku saying about beaming your light, this is what happened in your birth, man. You was beamed from the father to the mama. It's a bounce system. This is ancient technology that never fails, so why are we trying to fix what ain't broken? Now, check this out. Let us make man in our image. This is autism. Satanism. Satan is the one that manifests in the world, in hell, in the hologram, holographic simulation. So again, this autism image right here shows you what happens at a dam. The, it, the waters are unified at the top, and when they fall, they become these different channels. And as a version of you on each channel, when we change the station from this channel to the next one, that's called death. Crossing over, turning the knob, and that's the consciousness. When this ray of light, like, 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 think about this. Think of each one of these rays of light like a feather on a bird. Now, when the feathers get old, they fall off, like your dog shedding hair. So, once you live one of these lifetimes, this particular needle falls off. And all the energy that was going into that needle now goes into the rest of them. Think about what I'm saying. The bird is sending blood through the feathers. But when a feather fall off, that hole can close up and then all that energy can go to the other feathers. And every time the fe he take off a feather, the, the, the small few feathers that's left are stronger. Because that's nature saying... When the bird is pruning, when the bird is losing its feathers, it don't got a lot of feathers. So the few feathers that the bird got, nature saying, I'm going to make them strong to even the playing field out. The bird missing a bunch of feathers on its tail, on its side, all of that help it fly. So nature is so fucking fair that she's saying when the bird is losing feathers, 
The few feathers that's left, I'ma make them powerful so it can still fly with just a few of them. Not a bird can have a bunch of fucking feathers and each of them just weak as hell. But when it's losing it, the energy recycled to the other few. And this is why the beast got seven heads. And when you kill one head, then that closes up and the blood circulates to the other six. So when it's just one beast left, he getting all that blood circuit. He getting all the energy. And that's what's happening. We want to we want to eliminate all of these other Elohim and kill and prune off these these what's draining us. Take the knives out out of out, out of our body. That's what the man of sin is showing you. You've been stuck with daggers. And when you go to pulling all these daggers out, you're going to save yourself. So pulling all of these daggers out is what's going to take you out the simulation. These the strings that's controlling the puppet and making them weak and tied down. So each of these sperm cells is you born in a parallel universe. And when each one of them die, see, because look at this, what I'm saying, guys. Every last one of these sperm cells is a light bulb. But in the middle is this one big light bulb. Now, this light bulb in the middle can't shine that bright because its light was scattered out into all these little bitty light bulbs. So your light at the middle of the earth, it ain't bright, man, because it was it was it left the ball. Hold on. Please like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. All right, all right, so check this out, y'all. Like I was saying, right, when, when we left Eden, our consciousness left. That's our light. That's what autonism is showing us. Autonism is showing us when your light, when your light left the center and it start to shine out, like bleeding out. But when it returned in, right, that, think about it. You were one unified God in the middle of this ball. But once it said, let there be light, you start to shine. And all of your light rays became a sperm cell in a parallel universe. And each sperm cell had a little bit of piece of your light in this little bit of bulb. Right. But every time you die in one of these universes, that pineal gland light that's in the middle of your head in that universe, it goes back to the middle. So every time one of these little versions of you die, the light at the middle gets brighter and brighter. Every time one of these little buddies right here fade away, this light gets brighter. Its light passes back to here, just like it did when it left here. So when there's only one more sperm left and he put his light in there, that's when you will be fully unified back to what you was at the beginning. You see what I'm saying? That's what's going on here. So the Egyptians told this as autonism. And even in science, they teach this. They say that all the light in our universe is basically going to uh, recycle itself back to the source at some point. Right. So the journey back to the middle of our universe is what they doing with CERN and technology because this is happening as above, so below. All right.
I hope this makes sense to y'all. We about to go deeper and we got a lot of concepts on the table to explore. So let's move to the next concept. Oh, matter of fact, guys, let me finish this video like I promised. I'm sorry, because if it wasn't for this video, we wouldn't even be digging in this deep. I want to drop a bomb for everybody in the chat room because I asked y'all should I play this video and y'all saw it a million times, but y'all was like, yeah, let's see it again. And I'm like, why they want to watch it again? Turns out y'all knew what y'all was doing because now that I'm watching it again with this new title, we making new connections. So we definitely going to play this joint, man. Let's, let's, let's get it. To explore the galaxy just like Isaac Asimov predicted in his short story. Let's say I take your, <clears throat> not your genome, but your connectome, put it on a laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. Forget asteroid collisions. Forget radiation dangers and weightlessness and lack of oxygen. Forget all that. You are riding on a laser beam at the speed of light. And then at the end is a relay station. A relay station which takes the laser beam and then puts it into a surrogate. That is, all the neural networks encoded in the laser beam can be manifested as a robot on the other side of the galaxy. That's the part right there that I just can't get past. Because if you understand what he's saying right there, let me show you your neural, your brain map. Your brain map is the universe. Look at it, man. Check this out. He's saying we can take all of these neurons and turn them, each one of them, to its own single reference points of consciousness, which will lead from you, the base point, and each little stream will lead to a fake version of you in another world. You see? And this is what it'll look like. And when you look at this image, this is how you get the Hellraiser, man. They raising hell. This is hell on earth. Look at this. You see the spike head? You will see this all over. Hairstyles like that. Because this is what they showing you. On a spiritual level, the consciousness leaving the body and then being separated at a relay point where it's going to become many. So when the singular God in the Bible say, let us make man in our image, it made several holographic avatars. It said, let there be light. And each one of these rays of light became an individual version of consciousness in its own dimension. That's what Makakaku is telling you. This is what the Egyptians started. This is even the God of the Bible separating the waters from the waters. I just broke that down to you. You see what I'm saying? With the damn picture. So now this is what Makaku is talking about right here. And if you think about this, this is what we've been studying all along. Let me show it to you. Here it is right here. Here it is right here. All of your neural highways are, are, are making a crossroads at all of these points. And at every point they make a crossroads, that's a version of you in an alternate reality having an experience. But all of these versions are being born from the center self. And this plasma ball is no different than autism, the Big Bang. The man of sin, the voodoo doll with all of the needles in it. I told you that the voodoo doll, the word voodoo is the word video. Let me do this one more time on the board. I'm supposed to be playing the damn video, but I keep running my mouth. But let me do this and we're going to play the video just so you can see the word play.
Now look at this. Your video copy or your video duel is a voodoo doll today. See how they just changed the words around? They found out how to make a dual version of themselves using video or hologram technology. You see here? When you look at the man of sin right there, or the voodoo doll with the piercings on them, it's just showing you this right here. And when you look at this, and this with a man pent up in the light rays, voodoo doll is actually video duel. Your video duel, the dual version of yourself. You're in a duality, duality. Video duel, voodoo doll, okay? Check this out. I want to show you this and we'll play the video. The plasma ball, as you can see, they got goddesses all around the world. Watch this. We got this goddess all over the world with all the arms. Now, what she, we, we always bring her up. She's showing you the different versions of yourself in the parallel universe, all born from the center version. Remember when I showed you the straw in the cup? See? Mama Callie is saying, there's one version of you at the middle of the earth. But the way that the ethers are, it reflects and refracts you throughout the whole universe like a kaleidoscope. This is what's happening to us. We've been doubled up, tripled up, just like this, sliced up. So each version of Mama Callie is performing the same action in every universe, but it's altered. That's how you get an alternate reality. So in one universe, she's swinging a hook. In one, it's a sword. In one, it's a fucking piece of chalk where she's writing on the board. And that one action is expressed in every universe, but it's translated different. The energy is translated different. You know how in the movies, when they show you a person dreaming, and uh, when the person dies, uh, the person is about to die, right? They falling off a cliff into the ocean. When they hit the water, they die. But they wake up in this world, and they mama splashing water in their face. So you got these symbols that connect the worlds. That's why I'm showing it to you with sacred geometry. These symbols are connect all the universes together. So the symbol was water. Like a person that was dreaming, they died when they hit the water. They actually woke up when the mama threw the water on them. Death is awakening. But life and death is tied together by one single action. What, however we die and the action in our death translates to how we are born on the other side. And it's all by design for a reason. It's already written. Mama Callie is showing us refraction like a kaleidoscope or what I like to call the Emerald Code. The Emerald Code. Because again, if you look through the middle of an emerald, it will copy itself for infinity. You see how the emerald will take that pattern and reflect itself from the middle all the way out with for infinity. And if you shine a light through this thing, the pattern will keep reflecting holographically on your wall. So this is how we got this crystal skull at the middle and then let there be light. It's like a laser disc reading a CD. Once the light came on, it start to read our particular crystal ball and it projected us outward from the center into these different tentacles which is copies of the self the technology makakaku talking about we already did it before we don't need to keep doing it because we going deeper and deeper into hell but if you look at mama cali she's showing you what the plasma ball is showing you laser beam. In fact, in the book, I actually calculate 
how big a laser beam will be required to put your consciousness as pure photons. And just to tie Mama Khaled to Raelianism, to people who still, you know, struggling to see the connection, let's go to the Raelianism symbol. Let's go back to that real quick. If you look at this symbol on the right, that's Raelianism. And when you see Mama Callie with all of the arms coming from the middle, that's what the spiral is. It's very simple. All of these are the same concept and the same knowledge. All right. The Emerald Code. You see it? Boom. You see her? All of the arms coming from the center, slicing up reality with refraction and reflection. Boom. This is what it is right here. The Right there. Now let's 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 finish the video because we got more videos. Let's go. Shine it into the heavens. You're now shooting consciousness into outer space at the speed of light. Forget booster rockets. Forget asteroid collisions. Forget radiation dangers and weightlessness and lack of oxygen. Forget all that. You are riding on a laser beam at the speed of light. And then at the end is a relay station, a relay station which takes the laser beam and then puts it into a surrogate. That is, all the neural networks encoded in the laser beam can be manifested as a robot on the other side of the galaxy. So in other words, it's like staying at a hotel. If you're a businessman, you go from hotel to hotel and relax. Same way, you would be on a laser beam going from relay station to relay station and when you go to the real estate station, you take the robot body of a superhuman. You become Superman on the other end of the rainbow. So is this a physical possibility? Yes. When might we have it? Well, let's be honest. It would take perhaps 100 years or so before we have a complete understanding of the connection. He's saying it's going to take 100 years, right? But we've already spent 30 to 40 years. So we only got another 60 to 70 years before this stuff is in our reality. That's why I keep telling you this is the near future. Within 60 to 70 years, we're going to see the first immortals in our time. And we're, we're really saying what we are, what we are. But we live in now on a time on the earth where we get to witness a reset on the planet from these archons. You got to think, right? Other civilizations, some people weren't able to witness the transition period on earth. It, there's a great, they call this time the Great Awakening. There's a reason why they say Great Awakening. Because during our time, we able to see the shift change. Think about this. You ever been to your favorite store during a shift change and, and you be peeping shit and you be like, oh, that's how they run shit. Oh, OK. They be opening up little cabinets you never knew was there. You see and you see some of the inner workings of the place during a shift change. Think about that on the earth, right? There's a we're born on the earth during a shift change. And because of that. It's called a great awakening time. We, it, it's very rare to be born in a time where we going through a transition. Many people lived on earth, but not people lived there in a time when they was actually resetting time. We know time was reset plenty of times, but no one, it, it's very few generations lived during those times when the calendars are reset, when there's these big, uh, Depo there was a lot of times on earth where humans, the population dwindled down to, to just a handful of humans and then they boomed again, these reset times. We're able to witness one. We're born and we're in the middle of a reset. That's how rare our generation is. We're seeing things die and become extinct on earth and new creatures come. We're seeing old creatures leave and new synthetic creatures come. We're able to witness a transition 
time on earth. That's very rare, which makes in us very enlightened and awakening of the inner workings of how these people been harvesting souls and how things operate here. So let's let's continue the video. Connectome. That is all the neural pathways of the brain. Perhaps another century beyond that, before we have relay stations on which we could then shoot our consciousness into outer space. Is it mathematically and physically possible? And the answer is yes. All right. Now, let me see what these other video clips is, man. Because I got all kind of stuff open. All right. I'm going to close those up. And we just going to continue with this Wikipedia deco uh, decoding. Because this is interesting. And we finna go into the Nation of Islam. New Wapianism. I'm finna show you that every religion on the earth. Raelianism is the foundation of all world religions. Raelianism is the foundation of Judaism. And all world religions is based upon. A unity with some God in the heavens. All world religions are based upon an out-of-body experience or some promise that you're going to get after death, not during life, but the ultimate promise of something that you're being promised when you die. So all of these religions are making an afterlife contract with the initiates. Uh, all right. So they're going to fulfill that contract with technology is what I'm saying. They're going to fulfill that contract with technology. So it, it shows you right here, Raelism teaches that an extraterrestrial species known as the Elohim created humanity using their advanced technology. There is an advanced extraterrestrial species walking this earth, but they live in human bodies. Now, guess what, people? I just watched the movie Avatar, The Way of Water. And in all of the Avatar movies, you got American soldiers getting inside of them people body. There was an old movie called Body Snatchers. Who remember that? There are people walking among us that look just like us, but they are fucking thousands of years old. And they ain't dying like us. They just moving their consciousness into a different body out the different body. They, they are extraterrestrial. These, they're not from this world. They're from an ancient world in Babylon where the seven kings had created the first United Nations. And they put all their resources together to cheat death. They opened up a portal. They created alternate universes. We're in one. So... Everything we do on a day, they did then. They did then. Um, these people that's in our world are not from our world. Our, this world that we're calling our world, again, it's a obstacle in between us and Eden. It's a shared world with us and the damn archons. They created this shit. Like, at some point, this must have been some sort of training ground for souls so that we can have a screening system before you go into Eden. And people start just treating this like the true home, like the, the journey ends here when it don't. But, uh... People have been harvesting here like a class clown that's making all these students fail with him. What will happen is the classroom would overpopulate. You'll run out of room and that's what's happening on the earth. But if you look at this shit, realism teaches that everything I'm saying, we was created with advanced technology. When that advanced technology come back around, we're going to see the same thing happen again, y'all. We're going to recreate the same shit over and over again. You see that? So let's keep moving.
this religion that we point out is a part of atheism. In other words, you got people that don't like to talk about the soul. They don't like to talk about chakras or spirituality. They all about science and technology. But in their little lodges and boy clubs and Freemasonic shrines, they get to talk about spirituality with their brothers and plan the fate of all of our souls behind closed doors. But when they get up out of their little secret buildings, they go outside and say, oh, that's pseudoscience. Leave that afterlife stuff to the religion. Let's deal with science. You see what I'm saying? When they don't want to deal with the spirit side with humanity because they trying to actually harness your spirit. You see what I'm saying? All these people in power act like they're non-religious, non-spiritual, and that they don't know nothing about spirituality. Everything with them is about money, war, finances, and worldly shit. But people, these folks are so spiritual, they just don't have an open spirituality system. They practice it in a cult because what they know about the spiritual realm is what's keeping them in power over everybody else. They can't be sharing that with us. That's what that's the secret shit. But let's read this. It also say that these people want to achieve immortality through human cloning. And if you look at all of where the money going on earth, the people that run this world are richest people. They practice Raelianism. So we in trouble, dog. Let me show you something. I want to highlight the part again right here. It said. Look at here. I highlighted it again. Damn it, man. I keep highlighting it and then losing it. There you go. Look at there. Raelians engage in daily meditation and they hope for physical, look, physical immortality. Y'all ain't paying attention. They're not trying to achieve spiritual immortality. These people's souls are damned. Physical immortality mean immortality that is achieved through the laws of physics, not the laws of nature. That's why I've been debating all of these physics books, guys, like, you know, out there and stuff. That is deeper than just physics, science, and technology. There's a spiritual realm that all of that stuff is stealing from while denying that realm that it stole from. We don't got to interact with that realm through technology when we realize that the technology was created by them studying that realm. We got a direct connection and you don't got to connect through Neuralink. You don't need a fucking link. These folks are archons are into link technology. That's they want to parasite and link and latch on to you. You don't need a link to get out the body via neural highways. That technology is actually an abomination on the earth. You have a direct connection. You never needed a damn link. Hey, link me up with the man. Nigga, I don't need a link. I know the man. I am the man. Look at here. Let's keep going. Read some more. They want physical immortality achieved through that. That mean immortality that would allow them to stay in the realm of physicality, the realm that's governed by physics. See, physics don't. Let me show you some. On a microscopic level, the laws of physics don't work. Did you know that? This is why physics don't study the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is the micro realm, the inner world, the, the micro world, not the macro, the outer world. When we go to zooming in on a nano level, on a vibratory level, on a wavelength level, physics Physics don't don't have a part in that area. That's why they, these two fields separated to begin with. When that threshold was met, you went into religion. Physics govern blocks and trees and dirt. 
Religion was supposed to show you how light works. Religion was never pseudoscience. It was just another subject in school. Remember, you learned about gas when you was in school. You learned about solid and liquid, but they didn't have a class to teach you about ether and the soul and light. When it came to us learning about light, they gave us religion and gods. Because that's the knowledge that's going to make you a master at all of the other states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Because they're being project, they're just projections of light. I just showed you. It's light expressing itself as a hologram. So they got rid of the foundational knowledge that would make us gurus that turn a light on, you know? So, and, uh, so. They separated. You had one knowledge showing you the, the foundational principles of light. And then you had another one showing you when that light becomes hologram, how the holograms are governed. So you had a science for the holographic reality and you had a science for the reality that pre-exists before the holographic reality, meaning the pure light before light takes the form of a shape of a hologram. And the two sciences are different because the laws and natures of each states of matter are different, even though it's the same thing. So Raelianists hope for physical immortality through human cloning, and they promote a liberal ethical system with a strong emphasis on sexual experimentation. Now, think of everything we just read and tell me that Raelianists don't run the world. Every time you see a government flag, we see this symbol next to it. Kanye West tweeted this symbol online because he's a Raelianist. Dude, all of these groups are Raelians. The foundation of all world control is ufology. Got men looking in the heavens for advanced species to save them. They're going to manifest that. So aliens, watch this, y'all. Everything we just read about aliens, that's what the fuck our government is. A liberal ethical system with a strong emphasis on sexual experimentation. That's the world we live in. This proves that aliens run our world and is in seats of government. And I'm trying to show y'all and guess if you if you still think that they don't look, it's said that the Raelians want immortality through human cloning. Now, let's look at the 2045 Social Strategic Initiative. So you mean to tell me that our federal governments of the world are promoting a religious agenda? Yep, that's what I'm telling you, that this whole 2045 Avatar project is a fucking mission uh, objective that the Raelians wanted. Immortality through human cloning, out of control sets, homose all this stuff. If you look at the world today, you know that Raelian's running it, bro. Because everything that we read is what they doing. That's what I'm telling you. And that's why when you look at the symbol and look at the people running the world, they got that symbol right there. That's the star of Remfan as well. This was what the devil wanted to make his own kingdom. You see, all of these people up under the five other six, the five pointed star, six pointed star, this is a Raelian world. And this is a network of archons of people who are connected on a spiritual level. We got to get connected on a spiritual level if we going to compete with them. Now, let's go deep with this. Look at these symbols. Just explore it because it's a lot of them on there, and I just want you to look over it. Show you where Raelianism is, man. Check this net symbol out. I'm going to show you a symbol of Saturn. Check it out. You see that? You see that? What are we looking at? Again, this is what we're looking at. You see that? I'm showing you how old this technology is. People today are so fascinated with human hologram technology. Look at Pop Smoke. 
Yeah, this the technology that's going to resurrect the dead in a body of light. But look at this. This was these are your angel wings. See how this look like angel wings? It's what's going to allow you to resurrect. But this technology is old. That's what I'm telling you. Look at this. Same thing, man. Now let's go to Raelianism. Look at this. You see this symbol right here? It's the god Saturn. Now, I just showed you it, it was related to you at first before they reverse engineered it and turned it into some technology that's working against you. Now, let's let's finish reading. Let's finish reading. Here go a book called we're going to skip around a bit. Here go a book called Intelligent Design Message from the Designers. See. The dude who founded the Raelian movement wrote this book. The message given to me by extraterrestrials, but was republished in 2006 under the current name. In it, he explains his interaction with aliens, the Elohim. In it, Rael argues for an alternative to the two most widely held explanations for the origin of life, creationism and evolution. He explains that the world and all life was created by a highly advanced group of aliens. We understand. Uh, it just wanted to show you, in case you wanted to get into get acquainted with the founder of the Raelian movement, I just wanted to show you he got a book that'll give you a peek into his mind, and you will see what type crap they was on. So, and just you know to give us a feel of who these Raelians are, right? So we can see who they are. It's regular people like all of us. See, it's the it's the church goer. It's the Muslim. It's the five percenter. It's the science lover. It's everybody that's engaging in any passion other than the central self and the knowledge of their own soul. Because anything you fascinated with outside of yourself, you partake in with the archons in the outer knowledge. When the ancestors was about going within, everybody don't focus on outside shit. And when you talk about the inner knowledge, that's what they call in pseudoscience today. Chakras, light energy, you see, because, you know, but, but check this out, y'all. Uh, I don't really want to read this whole article. The only reason I put this up is because when I saw a picture of the uh, these Raelians, I just wanted to show you they regular people, man. This a young black dude or older Asian dude, young like they're a very diverse group of people. And if you look at where these people are, like they're a very diverse group. Where else do we see this at? Watch this with this kind of diversity. When we talk about the one world order, one world religion, watch this. Watch this, hold on. See, it's a it's a pattern. Hold on. You see the, the doggone diversity? These the Raelians right here. And wherever you see, they see they come in many creeds and religions. Like right here, you got a white rabbi. Right here, you got an Indian woman. Over here, you got Muslim dudes. Like this is a big, these Raelians are diverse. What unites them is optimism. And if you look for their symbols closely, you will always find it. Now, do you see it? How many of you got your third eye open? I showed you what this was. It was all about autism. You see that? When you see all the different hands holding the ball up, that's their religion. They know the truth. And they got all the religions united to promote the lie. And as many faiths see, the, this is a diverse group, these Raelians. They've infiltrated all of the faith groups, all of the governments. That's why I told you, if you look at what's happening on the earth, these people took over. Now, look at this symbol right here with all the hands holding the ball up. And let's go back to this. You can't escape the truth that I'm teaching you. 
It's hidden everywhere. You got to open your eyes, and that's what I'm telling you. There's only one truth, and they know what it is. They know what it is. That's why I can teach this like this, bro. So think about it, right? Let's go back to this image. In this image, you got all of these rays of light holding up a spaceship. Why I'm saying hold up? Because you want to see this, right? Here go your UFO ship. Here go your beam lines, your tethering lines. I just showed you they, this is how we was manifested onto the earth. So each ray of light will be sucked back into the mouth of the ship. And they call that spaghettification because it make the ship look like it's sucking up pasta noodles, like a mouth that's sucking up a pasta noodle. When these rays of light get sucked back, each one spaghettification, they call it. So same thing, they turned this stuff to you follow UFOlogy. So you got Ron L. Hubbard with the Nation of Islam, and they united. You know why? I just told you. All of these religions are really practicing ufology. All of these religions believe in aliens, and they telling you that aliens are that vast species that's going to rule over man in the end of days. But all of them say that they God going to come back to the earth in the end of days and rule over. All of these religions say in the end that their God is going to come back to the earth and establish his kingdom of Zion. Some sort of way each religion got their own way of saying that. But yet every religion is working with science to manifest a kingdom of technology. Because every religion was already together secretly. With the, it, Raelianism is the one world religion. It's only one faith on the earth. That's science and technology. These folks don't really believe in them, them gods. They believe in technology and science. And this was showing you that. This was showing you that. Look, science, yeah, that's Zion. Zions. Now, listen. Uh, all of they gods, they said, going to come back and establish a kingdom. But all of them want science to make that kingdom. You know why? Because all of they God is just a manifestation of science. They all really just personifying this one thing called scientism as their God. It's one world religion, technology. It's been that way. So all of these folks believe in aliens. All of the, even the Vatican came out and said, aliens are real, them our brothers. All of these religious groups have incorporated UFOlogy into their doctrine, like the Nation of Islam with scientism. Hey, salutes to Jaronism in the house, man. You know we got to wrench up Jaronism and drop this bomb, yo. Hey, Jaronism, if you want to come up and join me on this one, you know the people will be glad to hear from you as well. Salutes to you, man. Let's mod this brother up. Everybody know that this is a, a guru in the flat earth community. So we're going to, this is just an invite extended to uh, Jaronism, just in case he want to come up and join me. And if not, then, you know, I'm going to keep it, keep giving y'all this, but it, we definitely can share the mic with him because I know he may have some insight on this too. But yeah, I wouldn't be woke, man, to woke up the flat earth if it weren't for Jaronism. Salutes to him. Oh yeah. It, 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 yeah. So, yes. And y'all can be expecting collaborations with me and Jaron as well. Also, uh, I got a flat earth debate coming up against Fight the Flat Earth. And that's going to be on... Shit, boy, my mind bad. I think we scheduled it for Wednesday. Wednesday. It's gonna it's gonna be uploaded on Flat Power as well. But let me go ahead and get back to this, and I'm gonna keep my eye on the uh call line in case uh Jaron wanna join. But yeah, let me get back back to it. And to and so because check this out, y'all. Um. It's only one truth. 
and they giving us a bunch of lies in different groups to hide the one truth. But the people that control all these different groups, they know the one truth, even though they help spread the many lies. And that's why I said when you look at the symbolism, it'll show you that one truth, which is why I keep zooming in on this and showing you the autism. But I think y'all get the point with that now, so we're going to move on. All right, so Adam Cole, uh, okay, for sure, that's cool. We're going to definitely set it up, Jerry. Adam Cole, we ain't uh, opening it up to everybody, so salutes. <coughs> yeah, that's cool. <coughs> Hold on, y'all. Let's, let's, you know what? Let's go back to this. It, and look, like I said, the cowboy hat on the head is symbology of you being beamed up in the UFO hat. I got to say that too. And another symbol that the UFO uh, got something called a spur. You know, the cowboy wear a spur, a spur. And the spur is what was in Asia, what was called uh, a ninja star. That spur right there, this spur is what we're calling a black hole sun. If you look at the black hole sun, there you go. You see the staggered lightning bolts coming from the center. That go back to the straw in the cup. Remember refraction. Each one of these is a refracted, reflected version of the self that fell from Eden. That's why it's like a lightning bolt. That's electricity. That's reflect refraction and reflection is like positive and negative for electricity. That's what creates electricity to do the do I. But check this out, y'all. When we look at this right here. This is what the spur was. Like, if you look at the San Antonio spur symbol, I was telling you, like, San Antonio is just another way to say Santana, Santa, or Satan. And the spur's logo is this portal, which leads to, you know, the dark side. What Travis Scott was talking about. When you look at this spur symbol, it's that six-pointed star, that James Webb telescope. That James Webb telescope, right, is up in the sky. It's like a balloon hovering on a heavenly dimension, intercepting souls, some kind of intercepting technology. But check this out. If you look at the symbol of the spurs right there, that is what you see on the cow god, Moloch. Look at it. You see this symbol right here? That's the black hole sun. The black hole sun is just another way of saying when your heart is vibrating on a negative level, you create a ball of darkness versus a ball of light. See, at the middle of our, our electromagnetic field is the heart. But if your energy ain't bright or positive, it'll go dim and you, you, won't, you won't be shining in the core. You will be like a, a dim, like dark light at the core. And that's represented by the black hole sun. That's the opposite of Christ right here. That would be Satan. He would have a, this black hole at the core. But if you want to look at it that way. So just check this out, right? Oh, let me take this stuff here off. Some of this I can take off. Hold on. We can take some of this off. That's Enoch. Again, we went over that on the first one. We don't want to be redundant. But again, no. This is what Christ became. You can see the piercings on his hand, and he got piercings on his feet. This is the Christ the Lamb of God. 
This, when we talk about cowboys in early America, these cowboys had nothing to do with the animal called a cow. These original pilgrims that came to America, they didn't come over here worshiping a white Jesus Christ. They came over here worshiping a cow god called Moloch in early America. Columbus, Columbus and them weren't worshiping Christ. They was worshiping Saturn. They had the Jesuit cross, which you see here on Saturn in the middle, the swastika. In other words, Columbus and them had the Aurelianism symbol. On the Nina Pinta in Santa Maria, you had this cross on the left. They had a swastika, the Jesuit cross. See, those early white folks that were colonized America, it wasn't no Christianity then. They were worshiping the devil then. And when they were burning people, when they were burning the slaves on his land, they were burning them up inside of a golden calf. It's a handle on this thing. You see it? This thing is a huge motherfucking statue that's like the size of Abraham Lincoln. And they can open this thing up with a fucking crane or latch and, and actually cook people in it. We read about this in the Bible how they torture people inside of the brazen bull. Here he go right here. You can even see where, right here where the opening at. And, and today you put your offering in there. You put money in there. But back in the day, they put people in there. You was the offering. You was a burnt offering before money. But the thing about this See, the people who came over here in early America, those pilgrims, they hadn't uh, developed Christianity yet. This was the early form of Christ right here, the golden lamb, the Christ. And that's why when you look at this God, he got piercings in the same place Christ got. And he's associated with the same star that Christ was associated with, the Christ star of Bethlehem, which that star symbolizes the birth of Christ. Why? Because if you look at where they got it on his chest, it represents the way the electromagnetic energy field projects Christ out into the world. Christ's birth was symbolized as a star because Christ is a resurrected demigod that keep manifesting himself with hologram technology, just like we see here with Pop Smoke. These folks can't die. So if you look at this ball of light that's on Pop Smoke chest, it, they got it right here on his chest. The God of resurrection. You see, and uh, they showing you like I was showing you earlier, how the heart cast this net out around the body from the heart. And that's what you see on this God. So, yeah, but let's move on. Let's move on. I got so many tabs open that I wanted to do a little open research with y'all. So this will be an extended stream. We three hours in, but if y'all want to go long and strong, then drop the bombs, drop the fireballs, and also drop the uh, donations as well. <laughs> let's do a vote, man. Do, should I do a part three and go on, just make this one short or fuck it? Let's go long and strong and see if we can knock this thing on out. Y'all down for the long ride? Let's get it. We can, we can go for the long. So look, I was saying to myself, and man, it, depending on how y'all support this show, I might even open up the call for debates only, one at a time, debates only. Because anybody trying to go against this, I'm definitely a debater. I, I know I ain't losing no debate. My research too flawless. All right, let long and strong it is. Y'all say you want to go long and strong. Let's get the numbers up on the viewers. Hey, I was now we about to have fun then, cause I was saying to myself, 
Raelianism is based on alienism, ufology. What do all, now think about what I just said about the aliens? And I hate to do this real quick, but I just schooled y'all on what Raelianism is. It's about alien abduction. The way they sell us alien abduction in the Bible is called a rapture. So Jesus is going to abduct you. He's this interdimensional being or alien that's going to abduct you. And in every religion, the God talks about aiding you and, and helping you cross over and get out the body. You see. And they're going to do it with technology, but that ain't helping you It's crippling you. It's like if somebody help a butterfly break out of its cocoon, they actually weaken its wings. You got to let the butterfly break out of its own cocoon because if it's strong enough to break out of the cocoon, it's strong enough to start flying when it get out. It's process of trying. Listen, when the butterfly is trying to break out the cocoon, nature know that it's going to struggle to break out. Nature doing that to teach it how to fly. Look at my arms. Look at my arms. Nature know when the, when a butterfly try to break out the cocoon, it's going to do like Samson, you know, and, and that when it finally gets strong enough to break out of it, that means it's strong enough to fly it in. Nature ain't dumb. Ain't that's genius. It's saying if it can break out this cocoon, then it can come right out flying. The process of it trying to break out is teaching it how to use the new wings that it just got. So if it, once it reach a point where it breaks out, it also reach a point where it can fly. At the same time, this is a very deep and intricate system that's built. Now, they don't want the, you to break out. You know, you ever saw a bird walking around and he don't fly that much. All the other birds fly like a motherfucker. But him, he walk around a lot. He's one of those birds that had help get cracking out of his egg. Somebody helped him out the egg. See, uh, them other birds had to press out with them wings. And he was robbed of that. So he going to walk more. I'm not saying my theory is right. I'm just thinking out loud to y'all. It's open research. They crippling us. This is a self journey. Even the Hindu said that. And you don't have a mediator. So why did they give you a God? They gave you a God so you won't become one. Now check this out, y'all. All of this stuff is about taking your soul out your body. And everything I taught you today is what science trying to do with Makai Kaku. Beam me up. These dudes are practicing some sort of alien technology to get our souls out the body. And all of the religions are united with the ufology groups. And the Raelianists have taken over the whole damn UN and the world. We see that today. So we're looking around at the news and we see more and more of the news talk about alien sightings. We see the Pentagon releasing, releasing UFO files because the, the Raelian people are in government and they promote, here go to new religion now. They making the tech, see these people are old souls, but instead of them, instead of them telling you, listen, man. We're the fucking old kings from Babylon still living on. We, we cheated death and we harnessing you niggas souls. Instead of saying that, they using all the technology to harness our souls at this time, but they going to blame it on an advanced fucking race of people and shit like with the Roswell crash. We had a technology boom and they seeded a conspiracy out there saying aliens gave us the technology with Roswell. But check this out, y'all. 
Alien, if you look, and I hate to do this, but Young Pharaoh made a video called Ritual. And in the video, it was so many symbolism going on. He had this six-pointed star tatted on him. And I and, and I was like, if the brother is a Egypt to, into Egyptology, why he got that six-pointed star on him? Let me see if I can King find Kong. it. You see it right there on his arm? He got a six-pointed star in a circle. I ain't going to play the video. It's a lot of stuff going on in it. But in the video, he had these Raelian symbols. And I was like, now I get it. This dude talks about aliens all the time, like Nazi leader. Go watch my video on the UFOlogy movement, how it started in America. And uh, how, think about what I'm reading about Raelianism. And, and I was thinking to myself, you know, Pharaoh just one of these kids for real. Salutes to the brother. This ain't, I'm just saying, he's part, he, his ideology is in alignment. If, like I said, look at the six-pointed star here, right? We say things about young Pharaoh that we say about celebrities. And young Pharaoh is a young B-list celebrity. Now, guess what? We say, man, they clone young Pharaoh. That ain't the same young Pharaoh. What happened to young Pharaoh? We say that about him like Kanye West. Because these people are engaged, in my theory, into some sort of out of body mind uploading technology. He might, the old young Pharaoh might be on the other side already. Young Pharaoh kept telling us that he was abducted and we was laughing at him. But some these people tell you the truth right in front of your face in a way to make you think they lying and that it's a joke, but they really telling your ass, nigga, look, I'm part of a cabal, nigga. I seen the other side. You got to listen to these folks. He got the six-pointed star on his arm right there. And this dude's whole career was based on Raelianism, alien talk, abduction talk, just like the founder of Scientology, just like uh, Alistair Crouch, just like all of these, you know, weird folks. I could show you pictures of Kanye West, weird pictures of him suggesting alien Teleport, beam me up, shit like what Makai Kaku was saying. This is a secret religion on the earth. Neil Tyson, Bill, now these folks, we're talking about traveling this universe is on some, they got the technology to cross over, crossover technology. It's built inside of us, but they built the technology on the outside of us to cheat. That's the, the knowledge of the serpent. Like I said, all of these sightings that we seeing in the sky with these portals opening up and then these celebrities acting weird and we saying more and more about how, man, that nigga a clone. Folks is saying that goddamn Kanye a clone, Pharaoh a clone. We need to really pay attention to what we say because when all of these folks go on interviews, they like to reinforce the alien theory. Kanye West did it. Elon Musk did it. They love to plant that alien thing out there, just like young Pharaoh. And if you look at what we read earlier, it show you right here. Raelians hope for, guess what? Fa young Pharaoh said he meditate. Young Pharaoh said he don't pray, he meditate. That's neither here nor there. I meditate too when I get a chance. So, but it said Raelians engage in daily meditation. They hope for physical immortality through human cloning. This man's name is Young Pharaoh. The Pharaoh wanted to stay young. Young Pharaoh. His name going to be Young Pharaoh even as he age. That's a ritual in and of itself. The Pharaoh, you don't have an old statue of the Pharaoh. He cheated death. He found a way to stay young. If you go watch the new movie Avatar, they fucking killing these um, spiritual creatures, which is your pineal gland. Or they, it's a symbolic of you. And they harnessing the energy out of them to, so that the rich people can stay young. Go watch the new Avatar movie. Everything I'm saying, bro. They putting it in all the movies. <clears throat> Pharaoh.
Uh, I'm just saying. <clears throat> let me let me get. I ain't trying to shit on a brother. It's true that he got his alien testimony. So I'm just showing him he's part of the Raelian movement. But the thing is, he got this symbol on his arm. He does have that symbol on him. And just the fact that he's, you know, part of this group of people who are fascinated with aliens. Pharaoh said he let the aliens work on him. And guess what? That's what these people are into. See, some of us, we don't want to meet no aliens and shit. We ain't trying to be abducted. A lot of these folks, they hoping to be abducted. And when you start believing in that shit, guess what, man? The government got technology that can really zap your mind out your body and have you on the other side on some astral world shit. They got that. So, but you, they need consent. If you part of a group that's hoping and waiting for that shit, you giving them consent. If you join a church that say, hey, look, when you die, you're going to be with Jesus in the clouds. If you die and you with Jesus in the clouds, you don't think that is soul harvesting. At my church, we used to call it harvest time. We used to be happy about it. So they already training your mind. If we intercept your soul into this false simulation, you're going to be happy about it because they ain't teaching you what this shit is. Just like they telling you to be happy about this new avatar project because they ain't really telling you they damning your soul. They got to find a way to make you think they doing you a favor. But you got to think, why would they do you the favor of immortality when they won't even do you the favor of stopping police brutality? These people got you on welfare, but they want to make your ass immortal. These people, God damn it, got a prison system all around the world. But no, they really want to make you immortal. Man, you better wake up. What they trying to do is very evil. And I'm sure that's why I'm here to warn you. So look, they're recreating the Milky Way in the heavens. Like I was saying earlier, that what what in our time, these people are opening up portals. They're going to be beings leaving our earth and beings coming. Some of these celebrities that we see, they act different and we say that they're a clone. You know why? Because they join the Raelian movement. Kanye West uh, tweeted this symbol on Twitter and niggas been saying he's a clone for years. And we just read that these people want to achieve immortality through cloning. All of these goddamn celebrities got this star tatted on them, the five-pointed one or the six-pointed one, and they all ain't trying to die. They all got music that's talking about living young forever, being, you know, young and, 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 and rich forever and shit, young and free. And part of rap music and their whole culture is they don't want to age, which is why we got anti-aging cream and all that shit. When these folks get high up in this rich world, once they get all the money, now they want all the time to enjoy this shit for many, many years. And it's people that's been living on this earth for fucking thousands of years with this technology. Check this out, y'all. When we say these celebrities are clones and that that ain't their real soul in that body no more, we need to start believing ourselves, man. And quit just saying stuff because I'm showing you that we right when we say that. These guys get to a certain level and they all go to acting strange. They all go to giving an odd vibration. See, let me show you some. Back in medieval days, they called it demon possession. Your soul leaves your body and another foreign spirit get to come live inside of your body. We call it cloning today. They call it clowning back then. Because when you clowning around, that's like demon possession. Think about what I'm saying, right? When all of these niggas go to acting dumb and we be like, he's a clone now, 
all of a sudden they go to a new height of power in a world and they start getting political with their shit like Kanye West, like Killer Mike, like Kodak Black meeting Trump. And just like it's, it's this change that happened where these guys like what I think, like, for example, with Kanye West. When you reach a certain level, you don't even care about the money no more. You want immortality. You realize that they got the technology to let you go to the world of your dreams, literally. Meaning there's a dream world out there where you live in your best life that is 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 way better than what you can ever create here. And they can open up these portals like with CERN and show folks what their life is like in these parallel universes, in these dream worlds. And when these celebrities see these other versions of themselves in another universe, they be like, man, I want to be that version of me. Can I go to that dream? I want to live out the rest of my life in that universe. These they call themselves traveling men because they got the technology to open the portals to the multiverse. Imagine if you can go to any dream. These dreams are gateways to parallel universes you get to go and have a sneak peek into your other life that's being lived out in unison with this one this ain't the best one these celebrities having that technology it ain't about the money to them it's about going to the universe of their choice which is why they go to jail they come back out acting different they go through a pro these celebrities be isolated in the jail and that's favoritism because they got a lot of money. They can go to an area where they ain't around everybody else and shit, depending on how high status you is. And they go do this time and come back out and they ain't the same. Or they get shot and they get a procedure done. They ain't the same. Tupac got shot up. He wasn't the same. He called himself Machiavelli out the, the second time he got shot, I think, saying that he cheated his death because that's what this shit is all about, cheating death. That's what Machiavellian knowledge was all about. Think about this, right? It ain't about the money when you get to this level because they let you know about all the secrets of the universe. And you realize that you even richer in some universes that you richer than you will ever be. It's a universe out there. You damn near a world leader. In these parallel universes. So these celebrities, they don't want to stay here. They get to go to and, and then they can make their own simulations and go live it out. So you reach that level. That's what the rally in religion was about. That's why Jesus said, I can go prepare kingdoms in the heavens, in the cloud space, in the metaverse. So a lot of these celebrities, they've been gone. But what happens is they body now gets to be occupied by some other lower spirit from their realm that can now, like a nigga say, well, man, since you gone, one of our brothers from the lower realm, we're going to let him come into your body and, and whatever, boom. Body swapping. That All the aliens can do that. Go look at all the movies. The aliens have the hive mind technology where they can swap and shit bodies and shit. So the thing, like in the movie Avatar, all of the American military use cloning and Avatar technology to colonize people planets in the Avatar movie. See, the Avatars can't get out of their body and become a white soldier, but the white soldier got technology to take his soul out of his body and get in one of the blue Avatar bodies and infiltrate they shit. That's why I'm telling you, this human body has been infiltrated by another spiritual group. That's and is waging war on us on the earth. Just like in the movie Avatar. And we don't know who it is because it looked like us. It is it looked like a human being. But it's literally an ancient motherfucking demigod back from somewhere in Babylon, 
Egyptian time when they created this damn technology. Our old ass soul, we talking whatever humans looked it like back in these medieval times with that style of human. It ain't no like a green alien. It's a medieval human. Uh, like a human that's from fucking like back during these medieval times. But um, yeah, man, this is this is just it's crazy, man. It's really crazy. So we look around and let's look at what these relians look like. Look at this picture. You see a very sexually open society, as you can see. We see the six-pointed star, you know, pink, pink on, boom. Just giving you an idea. These folks all over the world, Heaven's Gate society, you know, this is this is and one and look, Copernicus. All right. <clears throat> And okay, let's read this. Raelians call their belief system a scientific religion. Ah, oh, man. Now I see why I'm beefing with science so much. Science, the one that's selling us aliens, other work. Look at what Makakaku was saying earlier. This is part of science still in your soul. Yes. Raelianism is a scientific religion. All other religions are based on Raelianism. Science and religion meet together at Raelianism because the goal of science and religion is the same in the end, which is to harness the soul of humanity. Tell me I'm lying. And that's why we reading this right here. With the international Raelian movement using the motto, science is our religion. Oh, man, we got to zoom in on that. I told y'all I don't fuck with modern science. Watch this. I told y'all. If you look at the news today, they said aliens are real and they selling you this ufology. Why does Hillary Clinton believe in science? Look at this. Why does Hillary Clinton believe in science? Because science is a religion. Look at her with her damn pastor robe on. You don't see this as a religion of these people wearing a robe, talking at a podium with a belief system. You don't see that by now. And when you look at what, what we said, any science that you believe in ain't based on methodology. So what is it based on? Well, just follow the, the money and the end goal is based on Raelianism. Science is our religion. Religion is our science. The religion emphasizes the use of science to solve the world's problems. Y'all see all of my videos that I've been making prior to this one have been leading up to this. STEM, my beef with STEM and technology. The world didn't, we didn't inherit a world of problems. The natural creator didn't create this world with flaws in it. Man created flaws in the world so that he can have a reason to fix shit that wasn't broken. Just so he can have an excuse to ultimately harness your soul because now that's the solution. Science is saying the world got so many problems, we can't reverse it. We just got to create a whole nother world and lead this one. It's a sinking ship. And this is basically what this project is about. Because when you allow man to, to introduce problems to the world without addressing him who's creating the problems, then it, the problems will pile up to a point where the technology will have to get more and more extreme and radical. And they doing that on purpose. Because in order for you to make extreme technology, radical technology, you got to create radical problems. Technology is only created for, to use for to create solutions. If you got advanced problems, you need advanced technology. So they're going to make the fucking problem so advanced on the earth 
that it would give them an excuse to be able to fund technology like this right here. Because if you ask them, why are y'all spending money on this? They'll say, man, the earth is, is heating up. The climate change is so high that if it continue, we might not be able to live on the earth no more. Humans might have to upload our minds in the avatar and live in the metaverse. And they want to do that. Think about the irony of this, right? Man is so advanced, he can upload your mind, but he can't cool off a warming earth. He can't stop pollution. So, man got to create a situation on earth that's so fucking scary and apocalyptic that it would justify technology that is just as scary than the problem. Think about it. If I got, if, if, if I'm using technology to solve a problem and I want to advance my technology over time, I'm going to have to also advance my problems over time. Now, the more uglier my problems get, the more uglier my technology gonna get. And technology has become a monstrosity. So now you live in a world where we're in an apocalyptic situation, which shows man at his dumbest state ever, but yet he's at his most technological point. And you see the agenda now. That technology was never about solving all these problems. It was about creating more advanced ways to perpetuate these problems so you can ultimately have an excuse to de destroy the world around us, which will give you an excuse for us to have to leave the world and have this whole scientific exodus of traveling to space using brain computer interfaces when you told us that we was gonna go in rockets bro i see clean through this shit i've been church studying it for a while and i see what these devils doing you smart enough to upload a nigga's mind but you ain't smart enough to stop the natural pollution and shit that we giving off. This showing you the game, man. It shows you is on purpose, bro. Ain't no way you can make technology that's this divine. It's damn near miracle tech. But you can't stop a you can't cool off a fucking planet. Nigga, you can look at the problems that we say. Uh oh. The earth heating up, we might have to leave, but yet they gon' man, let me just move on. They ain't gotta preach to the choir and keep beating no dead horse. You know what I'm talking about. Let's keep on moving, man. So let's go back to reading. <clears throat> Practitioners regard Rail as a pioneer of science who will one day be regarded as a peer of Gal of Galileo and Copernicus. I'm sorry. Who is real? <coughs> a religious leader. Yeah, he the dude that wrote the book I told you about over this group. All of these dudes follow this dude. Whether they know it or not. I'm going to do more. I'm going to have to do a part three on this, man. See, when I started this streaming on this topic, I thought that Relianism would be just a topic I can do real quick and move on. I see now I'm going to have to have a couple of parts on this, man. So I'm definitely doing a part three. Don't mean I'm shutting down. Don't go nowhere. I, pr I promised you a long stream. I'm going to give it to you. I'm just saying I'm still going to do another one. Because <clears throat> this shit getting more and more interesting to me. Some of my topics lead me in a rabbit hole. And I just can't get enough of doing the research with y'all. We get deeper and deeper. 
So I'm going to definitely have to continue this one because once you uncover this shit, it go deeper and deeper. Now we got to research this dude, Rael. Then we got to research how Galileo and Copernicus uh, help and foundate this. See, this shit's getting deep. It opens up the door to a lot of more research I got to do, but let's, let's move on. So many of its members call it an atheistic religion. Now watch this. Let me show you something about this. I just heard my cash app go off, but I just thought about it. That's the first time I heard it all show, and I've been live for three hours. I ain't tripping, no. Thank you, whoever that was. But check this out, y'all. Um, atheism supposed to be anti-religious, but yet it is a religion. Atheism is basically the religion of science. Because atheists don't believe in God, they believe in scientists. They believe in technology. They believe in science. So you still have a belief system. You don't have to have a God to have a religion. You just got to have a belief system and something to believe in. It don't have to be a God. If you believe in a hammer to solve a problem, if you believe that technology is the solution to the natural world, Technology is your God. You still part of a religion. <clears throat> okay. And you just believe in technology and not God. And you call it an atheistic religion. You see what I'm saying? You believe in science. Right? So if you ask an atheist, what created the universe since you don't believe in nothing? They're going to say nothing created it. It just happened. And guess what they giving you? The fucking Big Bang Theory, which is the stupidest shit ever. A universe that just happened. Just because you want to deny God? Really? That's what the atheist does. But what the atheists will say, I'm going to say, so what was there before everything? Just darkness. Yeah, that's what they say with the Big Bang. That's what the Bible say. It was darkness and then let there be light. Now, an atheist think that they escape religion, but I'm showing them that they still religious. I'm showing y'all that, atheists. Why these atheists think that they escape religion when they worship a self-created God called Ahura Mazda? I showed you him earlier, didn't it? Ahura Mazda. Let's pull him back up real quick. I'm going to have to definitely do a part three. Come on, uh, Hura Master, real quick, since we talking Big Bang. Where is it? Got all kind of shit open. Let's close some of this up. I'm a junkie teacher, and it kind of makes me my work a little cluttered, but check it out there. Look at the sacred geometry of the Big Bang and the color of it. Is blue, right? This is the blue God, Krishna, the God of his holographic projection. You see the circle that he's standing inside of? Well, let me go back and show you this again to refresh your memory. Why is Ahura Mazda standing in a circle? Because he's a hologram. Look, dude. <laughs> you see the circle of light around his waist? Santa's belt? You see that there? Now, let's go back to Mazda. Let's go back to Mazda. You see that circle around his belt? And he's blue, right? Look at that. This is what we are. Now, listen. The word Mazda is the word master. Let me type that in the chat room. We ain't got to go to the whiteboard. Mazda is Mazda, master. And also in the word Mazda is the word maze, maze. And if you look at the maze around his body, that is called Pan's Labyrinth. You see that maze? That's the circle of the earth. We're projecting ourselves out in each earth ring from the center, just like I described earlier. So you can see the different projections around him. His one version inside of the next one is layered. Is layered. Been teaching you that. So let's move on. This is Ahura Mazda, you atheist. 
atheists will teach the Big Bang but deny God. Then you end up with a science where shit just happened. And then they put it on a T-shirt. Shit happens. Because you don't know they're subconsciously programming you into the religion of stupidity. Shit don't just happen. Everything that's happening have cause and effect. And because you don't want to give them the cause, you just want to give them the effect. You look like a motherfucking fool in my Bernie Mac voice, nigga. <laughs> that's what an atheist does. They start you off with an effect called a Big Bang, but deny the cause, which is God. And they, everybody know what that is. Tell them what that is, my white girl. Stupid. Tell them again, white girl. Stupid. That's right. Can't nobody say stupid like Becky. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, it just happened. One no cause. Uh-uh, just an effect. Nope. Ha! <laughs> but anyway, we see here that atheists do have a God. They just can't see him. His name Mazda, nigga. That's your master, the Big Bangism. Science. The same religion Hillary belonged to. I hate to do that to you. You thought you wasn't a part of a religion, then you with your scientific butt, with your atheistic butt. You thought you didn't have, you thought you was non-religious, then you. <laughs> nope, you still religious, buddy. And I hate to bust your bubble. But let's keep this thing moving. Yeah, they thought they was non-religion. They thought they was fancy, and they thought they were fancy. But yeah, alien abduction belief can lead to formation of a UFO religion. Now, haven't we seen that in our time? Right now, we're seeing portals open up in the sky. And if you look at this portal right here, that's what Raelianism is. You ever heard of a rail gun? Let me show you what a rail gun is. A rail gun is a linear motor device typically designed as a weapon that uses electromagnetic force to launch high velocity projectiles. How do you think they're going to shoot your soul out your body? What Makai Kaku just told you about mind beaming, they're creating a spiritual rail gun. But the word rail is the word R-A-E-L, Raelianism. In all of those futuristic movies, you can see them shooting these rail guns and shit. But this is no different than like a gun that can trap a genie inside of a lamp. And that's what we starting to see now. These rail, like this rail gun technology on a very advanced scale now. You see what I'm saying? So this is something that I might even get into um, as well. Because this word rail, like I can go into a lot of stuff with this. This right here is the same like principles of a rail gun right here is what I'm saying. So you see it here. Um. Because a rail is what? A pole. And this is basically what, what Mercury is holding, like a rail gun, sonar-type weaponry. Because we are sound vibrational creatures. And when you're dealing with attacking us on a spiritual level, you're dealing with weapons that incorporate sonoluminescence, which is sound and light. You know, and that's like at, at a concert, you got a light matrix, a sound matrix, and at a lot of these concerts, people die. That's on purpose. You can open up portals. We're talking so no luminescence. That's what we're looking at here. That's what we are on an ethereal level. And that's the, the weapons that they're making right now are all weapons based on sono luminescence. These are the futuristic weapons. What are they preparing for? They're preparing for a great awakening where the humans at this time is finna be 
we're, we're, we're maturing, our universe maturing. We about to be spiritual beings. In other words, they ain't going to be able to control us with bullets. They ain't going to be able to control us with swords no more. We're becoming spiritual beings. So they technology got to get more and more spiritual as we're morphing and awakening. You see what I'm saying? Our universe is expanding and the beings here are becoming awakened, advanced, and, and they're also becoming hollow spiritual beings. We're going back to what we started being, but some of us going back via the technology route, some of us going back the natural route. The people that use the technology is not, they're not going to be recreated as their natural self. It's going to be a false version. And the false version is what we call an ego copy. And I'll show you what that is right now. That's how we got trapped inside of all of these false bodies right here. You see these different bodies? They are called yugas. The word yuga come from the word yuke or yoke. And they are different yokes inside of yokes. They are all like a candle with a flame on it. And you got to blow them all out in order to free yourself like a birthday cake. Blow the candles out to be born again. All of these are a flame burning in a different universe. And until it blow out, your energy won't be free. This is how you get the seven stick menorah. What's happening, the ancestors said we got to destroy all of these kashas through life and death. But the people in power are trying to create more kashas around you, more avatar, more false layers on you, which going to make you have to die more times. Because when you get inside of this body, you're going to say, okay, I'm ready to get out, man. Like, I, I know I wanted immortality, but, like, I want to leave now. I'm ready to die. And you know what the Bible say? Man will seek death, but will not find it. That's condemnation. But what, but you got, the, you got to be born out of all these layers. They're, they're creating more layers when we're supposed to be taking them off. That's what I'm saying. So what, why they got to create more la layers is because every time we break through this layer, they got the re see our consciousness is expanding. And when it expands, it breaks through one of these kashas. And when they see it breaking through, like when your mama see you outgrowing your clothes, she buy you a bigger set of clothes that, so for you to outgrow them. That's what they trying to do. Our consciousness is expanding beyond this, this template that we in now as a collective. And as it do that, by them want to keep us in this form, they're going to recreate this shit again for you to be trapped in it again. When all of the beings in the universe are, are ascending right now and going to the next level, this will be like them telling you, hey, you don't have to go in that cocoon to be a butterfly. We can recreate you as a caterpillar again. Stop your transformative process. When they see us outgrowing one of these bodies, they build another one. And when we outgrow that one, they have another reset. It buys them time. Think of a damn system inside of a damn system. Let me show you this one more time. Think of this, right? Think of they trying to hold this water back, right? But the dam is about to break. And when they see the dam about to break, guess what they do? They build a new dam in front of that dam. And when that old dam break, all of the water just flow into the new dam that they built. And that buys them time. And when the new dam go to breaking, they go to building another dam in front of that one. And they keep moving the dam forward every time it ages. They build a new dam in front of the old one. And when the waters break, boom, it, they keep on redamming it. That's what they're doing with this Avatar project. So the people in this realm can't become butterflies. The people in this realm are going to be stuck in the caterpillar form. If they allow the waters to move forward, 
then the transformation will take place because the waters will flow through different river systems, different parts of the earth where those waters will become different. When the waters flow through certain systems, it'll have certain animals in it that it didn't have in it at first. You know what I'm saying? That same water flowing through a river on the West Coast a flow a find its way in a river on the East Coast to where it was making a fish on the West Coast that don't even exist on the East Coast. It was giving that fish life. But then when it flow over here, it, it, as, it, as the water moves, it's picking up different elements, different rocks, different minerals. The water is morphing and mutating and changing as it flows based on environment that is flowing through. So, um, we supposed to be the same way, constantly flowing on a journey of progression, transforming through these natural ethers or environments. But what we have is a man trying to mimic a system that was already in play of filtering us into over time, like rebuilding the dam over and over. I can show you how that looked too on a uh, cosmological level. Watch this. Here it is right here. In the middle of our earth, it's the same system I told you, like a dam system. And when, when souls are born out of this world and they break out of this world, it's another dam they got to break on out of this one. When they get strong enough to break out of that dam, then they move up to this dam. But the people in power, they recreating that same system, though. A dam in front of a dam in front of a dam. You know, so... The wall, you got water that's way back there that's just now starting to flow through the first dam. But you got water way up there that's already at the broke through the 10th dam. Them like your ancestors that died and went on ahead of you. But then you got new souls that's just coming into this system and they just broke through the first dam. But they got so many more dams to break through. And that's what these kashas are. And that's what this system is. And you got to get strong enough to break through each dam. Like that caterpillar that got to get strong enough to break through each cocoon. This the story of Samson breaking through the pillars like that. Like I said, Samson is Mason. And the Mason is the G at the middle of it all, which is you, the God right here. You see God at the middle? That's your square and compass. Boom. But we can keep moving with the knowledge. I told y'all I keep it going because y'all supporting the show. Um, give me a minute. So, so let's let's go ahead. It said, "I am religious activity movement." Look at that, y'all. There's a whole ufology group called "I Am," which is naming themselves after the God of the Bible. I told y'all all of this shit was based on alienism. I told, I've been teaching this for years and now I just got the information here to, to, to really go and, sh and back up what I'm saying. I've been backing it up with symbolism, but now I can back it up with sources. S for those who don't take symbolism as a viable source, here you go, everything I've been saying. Alien abduction belief led to UFO religions. All of these UFO religions, these alien abduction religions are what I've been telling you about. The story of Enoch, Jesus ascending into the heavens and all that. We just read that, that all of this stuff could lead to a alien abduction led to these UFO religions. You see what I'm saying? So. It was the religions was based about resurrecting the dead. Because we don't really die, we just do what? Cross over. And that's what the zombie was. A reanimated corpse. Which is what this Avatar project is all about right here. Now let me show you some stuff with this.
Let me go deeper. So this is what the symbol of ufology is, right? This is what the symbol of ufology is. And let me just show you something. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to get my slides together. I'm really unorganized, but it's all good. We got a lot to go over. Don't y'all go nowhere. So look, we on this part where alien abduction beliefs to all of the news stations today all over the world are seeding the alien propaganda out there. And what they going to do, they going to tell people, listen, these aliens got advanced technology to open up portals in the sky and it can it can intercept your soul. All of these alien abductees had a whole movement like Young Pharaoh where they went around the world on big platforms telling people how they was abducted by aliens. And we laugh at it. We think it's a joke. But you got to ask yourself, why is mainstream media promoting these nuts? Because it's part of them putting a religion out there of seeding it out there. Uh, give, making your mind used to the technology, predictive programming. These people ain't lying. They they been out their body before, and they seen the other side. And they and when they go on the mainstream, they say I was abducted by an alien, but really they part of a fucking cult where they all know how to body shift, to get out the body. And uh, hold on. But what they doing, they going to tell when they start trying to zap us out our body and intercept souls. They ain't going to tell us it's technology. The people that sign up with this cult, they know that it's technology to steal souls. But they going out there saying it's aliens up there that's abducting people. And when they abduct you, it's, you're going to have an out-of-body experience and they're going to be doing some shit to you in the heavens, in the cloud space. They already got the technology to do that. Why are they folks telling you the aliens using it? And why are people saying shit like this all over the world and the government ain't talking about it? Because they want us to form a new conspiracy. And they know what we're going to say, aliens. Now, when this shit started, when the government started abducting people and taking their mind out their body on some rapture shit because they got this new rail gun technology, zap technology, people going to be like, aliens are real, man. I was abducted. And they ain't going to know it's your government, man. It's your government. They got technology to intercept consciousness out the body. So the whole UFO religion today is to hide who's really going to be using that technology. They've been having people come out. Look, the order of the solar temple. They've been having all these groups come out heaven's gate and put this religion out there. Hey, there's aliens out there. And they can take the mind out the body. Them ain't aliens. Them militaries doing experiments on folks with technology. They you they experiment with this technology on their masses. Some of these folks talking about they've been abducted. Some of them telling the truth, man. But some of them are implants who are telling the truth. But they know it ain't an alien. They know that it's motherfucking technology that the government using. But they go out there and say, it's aliens. And what do they say about the aliens, though? They put me on a silver table and they had on white robes on. Think about how silly that is. Watch this. Think about that. Just think of this. Like young Pharaoh said, the aliens had on white robes. They laid me on a silver table. Now think about it, bro. Why would an alien do the same shit the, the military do? Everybody know that the government do that. They got the white doctor shirt on and they doing an experiment on a silver table. Why, why the aliens doing that? Aliens would use some alien table. 
or some, you know, why would they have on a, who made they white robe? It's made in China, but they are alien with a fucking earthly doctor suit on. And they got a silver table like what's at the doctor office down the street in this advanced ass alien space. That's some out of place goddamn scenery. You got this alien ass ship, alien everything, but they got on a white doctor scrubs on a silver table. That sound like the military abducted you, dog. Them ain't aliens, them humans. Them humans. Yeah, like, what are alien doing? Like, he, come on, man. That's just some out of place shit. Some kind of alien table made out of some high tech shit. Yeah. Uh, it's just out of place. Anyway, we get the point. Is, you see what I'm saying? So, let's move on. UFO religions. Everybody in the earth right now that's part of a religion, it, the foundation of all y'all religions is based on Raelianism. Just understand that. The same God I am in the Bible is the foundational God of Raelianism. And all of your gods, let's talk, let's, let me drive that home. I'm not going to play with this no more. I'm going to show and prove because I'm a bad boy. Let me show you something real quick. We ain't finna play with it. Let me show you something real quick, man. All right. I got to close some of this shit out once again because we diving deep. And we got, well, this, the research is on the way. But let me, uh, yeah, let's go to this. Let's get deep with it. Let's go to this. Talking about Enoch, right? Let's let's show you some. Here go Krishna. Here go Jesus. Let's show you Enoch real quick. I'm going to show you it's all based on some ufology. Look at Enoch ascending to the heavens. How is Enoch ascending through the heavens? Ascending to the heavens through one of these? All of the world religions going all the way back to Babylon, guys, is dealing with holographic universe and Raelianism. Look at Enoch. Look at Enoch. That's how we get beam me up, Scotty. Makakaku ain't showing you about no technology that, that, that's new. We keep reinventing this same technology. Look at this. This was created back in the day. We see the Pharaoh with the sky vault open. That's created based on the crown chakra, which is the original UFO ship with the beam line being the Kundalini. It's designed after our body. Here go the crown chakra, which is the mothership. This is the only chakra that's outside the body. The one that takes off. That's why I got wings on it. Your consciousness leaves the body through this beam stalk up the spinal cord and it gets into the crown and goes away. And then it goes into another body and it sends a lifeline down through that body. And now you are your consciousness start flowing through that body. That's what happened when we dream. When we dream, this body right here that's laying in the bed, all of your consciousness climbs up this spinal cord and it leaves your body through the crown and it go lands in another body in another world and you start dreaming. When it lands in that body, you pick, you, you don't miss a beat. If your avatar in that universe was driving a car, the moment your consciousness land in that body, you start driving a car. You don't know that you just fell asleep. You just start dreaming. You pick up right in the middle. That's just you never left. Then when you wake up, you say, man, I was dreaming. But that version of you is still going on with his life. You just ain't conscious of it. 
till you plug into his world. And you do it by unplugging from this body and flying away and landing in his body. And you got several bodies you can land in and peek into those universes. But they got us trapped in this world. Meditation was how we learned how to use these wings up here, but they can't hold us back too longer. The Statue of Liberty is called Liberty based on liberation, and it's based upon the spikes of the crown chakra. The Statue of Liberty is based upon you getting liberated. When you learn how to use these wings up here like I'm showing you here, liberation will take place. You'll become a multidimensional being. Being never travel throughout the parallel universes. You activate these wings, but you got to break out the body like a caterpillar, learning how to transform to a butterfly. And once he make it up to the top by the end, he'll been to grow his wings. And that crown chakra is the one that exists out of the body. That's when you're ready to take flight. <clears throat> Now, wherever you land that on anybody that you land on, any of your other versions, the consciousness can descend down into that body and explore reality through that avatar. And you can leave that world and go, you ain't bound now in one body. You become this multidimensional being that's just living in each of these worlds. You ain't living in just one world. You become an alien now, traveling in and out of these different universes just like these archons in power you get the gift that they stole from us but that they kept though but we're getting it back some of us are now look let's go back to Enoch he's ascending through a sky vault so is Christ right here so is Krishna right here and this is all based on ufology uh and we're reading that alien abduction belief can lead to formations of UFO religions. And all of these gods are abducting their followers and calling it a rapture. The word rapture come to the word rupture. The word rupture is like the word ruption. When you say disruption, I disrupt something. You, you tear it off. I was doing something. You just interrupted. You cut in. Right. And that the people in power are disruptors. Right. And, and when everything going good, they got to change it with technology. And over time, the world get more and more disrupted and, 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 and uncomfortable. It's a disruption in the natural way shit was going. So. Rapture, rupture. All of these religions is based on transfiguration. Or Enochian beliefs, which is why I showed you in the first one, the Anunnaki. They are beings that we can see traveling through the sky, through the sky portal. Because if you pull up the God I knew, let's go back and pull him up. You can see he's just like Enoch. Let's put him up. Look at him breaking through the sky portal. You see him? Just like Christ. Broke through the sky portal. When Christ was on top of Mount Calvary, that means his mind was being freed from his brain, from his skull. To leave the body is to leave the world. Our world only exists in the brain. So when our mind gets out of the brain, it can go to other worlds that exist in those skulls or brains. The crystal skulls are your different chakras, excuse me, your different chakra layers. Or kashas. You see, that's what the crystal skulls are. Because you got a head in every world. And you can travel into the body that's in that world. For example, these are the crystal skulls. It's each of these versions of you. And these skulls are empty until your light go in it. The crystal skulls are empty skulls. Just like these kashas, for example, right? Watch this. You see how this kasha got eyes, a nose, and a mouth, but them don't? That's because the consciousness is right here. When she go to sleep, she close her eyes, and then these eyes open down here, wherever she go in a dream state, you see? These are the crystal skulls. 
because you're they're holographic versions of yourself and the mind goes inside of that skull and it gives you a consciousness in that reality. So we see that God, I knew leaving the body, having an out of body experience, ascending up to the heaven out of body to meet God because Enoch didn't just fly up to the heavens in his body. He went into a deep sleep, just like John of Patmos. That is meditation. None of the prophets that we really revere, like Enoch and all of them, we revere from being pr prayer, praying people. We revere them for ascension, just like Christ who resurrected on the cross. His body never got up out the grave. His spirit did, which is why it had this anointing on it, this light around it. So Enoch, Anu, because when you say Enoch, that's like Anu. It's the same God. Let me show you. Let's do a little etymology. The God Anu versus Enoch. Open your eyes, see? See that? Anu is Anu without the C and the H. Anuk, Anuk. I showed you that in the first one, like a nuclear explosion. Anu making his body shape like a nuclear explosion, a mushroom cloud. Anu is Enoch or a nuke, like a nuke bomb, a big bang. All of these words, they line up that way for a reason. It's not me making it up. This is a, a form of lost form of teaching called syncretism that a lot of folks don't use where you combine etymology with sim symbolism. For example, I'm going to reiterate on this for the new people. When you pull up a nuclear explosion, right, you will see what the unk is. You see, the tree of life in the movie Avatar is right here. This is what I knew is personifying. Each one of us is our own explosion of light. And once our energy expands out of the body, we cross over and see the other side, just like Enoch. We becomes a nuke. When you, your energy, when you exit this earth, is equivalent to the Big Bang. That energy is used to blow open a portal so that your soul can leave here. Every human got a built in, you like a fucking uh, time bomb. And when your heart stop, it's going to say beep, boom. Every human going to explode the life force that's in them. Uh, it's going to be the equivalent to a big bang. Every human, every human, when you, when your heart stops, it's like somebody put the pen on a grenade. Boom. Every one of us going to create the same energy that was created at the Big Bang. And we did this when we was born too, cause we blew our way in here and we gonna blow your way up out this bitch. Just like in the action movie, when you see them walking away after they set the bomb off. That's the gangster shit, how we gonna leave up out this bitch. The energy we emit upon death is there so that we can blow open the portal right here the, 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 the create our way out that's why we see Enoch like that we see see cause what 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 I knew doing he doing what Samson did he tearing his way up out this bitch watch this this is what I knew doing He's saying, let me out this damn simulation. I see what's going on now. I ain't a baby no more. I'm ready to see the other side. I'm ready to span up out this earth. Samson ain't nothing but an explosion. Look at this. And everything around him going to get blowed the fuck apart. Because when he go to expanding his consciousness, when that consciousness leaves the body, it's like the more that you expand your consciousness in this life, it's like a gun, the more you pulling back the pen. And when you breathe your last breath, 
because you put in all that work to pull up the, the expand the cunt, yours, your shit going to blow a fucking hole. Listen, the, the, the bigger the hole you blow open, the, mo the further you can go in your ascension. The further you can go. It's like the eye of a hurricane. The bigger the eye, the deeper the funnel. So people that's doing what we doing, expanding our consciousness, is like we absorbing a lot of recall energy. So that upon death, when we release it, the people that did this work in the mind. See, this don't mean much right now. But uh, that's why I said what we doing is really allow us to inherit the, the higher kingdoms of heaven. Because the further most sacrifices you make and time you put into understanding this is food for the soul, fuel for the soul, which going to allow you to project further. So. Knowledge is what transcends these ethers, which is why I'm a junkie for it. Knowledge is power. Power for what? The Merkaba vehicle. Is it see the thing about this right here? When we see this explosion with the clouds being pushed back and everything that's around this explosion is getting pushed the fuck back, knocked down. That's because that's what Samson is representing. And see, just like what I knew is representing. Ain't no, this ain't no different. It's all the same. Here, Christ on top of the mount is Samson on top of this platform with his hands open in between the two thieves because they was robbing him of his energy in this simulation. That's why he broke out of it. That's why Christ left the earth. You see what I'm saying? These two pillars are what's pulling out. This was creating a duality, the sun and moon in this simulation. But upon death, these things are blown apart and the veil is removed and another world is behind this one. Like Wes Sampson, he's on an ascended platform to show you the separation between that world back there and the new. See, Sampson is elevated above the crowd. He, he's leaving the world below and he stepped up on a platform, but he had to break through to a sin like the energy that goes up into the heavens and destroy everything around it. So he had to step up on a platform that's called ascension. And when you get up there, you can spread your wings and you in a whole nother world. You're on a holy mount right here. You see, which is like I said, if you look at our new over here, he's showing you the Mount Calvary. It's the skull. This is an out of body experience. And this represents the wandering mind leaving the skull. Breaking out of the body, out of the veil, out of the world. Taking that step up, maturity. Taking a step up and, and boom, like right here. When you reach that area, you can spread your wings up there. And that's why, like I said, Samson, he's an ascended master. The name Samson is Mason. Again, so just like Anak, uh, Enoch, uh, Anu, Samson, all of them, it's about alienism, ufology, leaving the earth through beaming technology, which is beam me up, Scotty. So now we know what, and, and here's the thing. If you into science and STEM, you can't debate me on this. You know why? Here goes some science to back up what I'm saying. Pop smoke hologram. You also want some more science? Go look up my Kakaku video that I played about mind beaming. Then go research Raelianism and tie it into yourself. This symbol that we send in the sky, they bringing back technology now to open up these portals, y'all. And that's what I want to share with you. I'm going to get ready to get y'all out of here so that we can still keep this thing to a limit to where. See, look at here. Telepathy. Astral projection. All of this is under. See, why, when we talk about alien abduction and all that, people, they give you these big flying saucers, but the flying saucer is the crown chakra. You see this crown chakra up here? They turned that into the UFO saucer up there, but that's your crown chakra. You see it? 
And the beam line is the Kundalini right here. But they 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 changed that and they turned it to a religion to hide it from everybody else. So while they talking about it behind closed doors, they talking about chakras, they talking about astral projection. But when these folks go in public, they give us goddamn aliens and green men and uh, flying saucers to throw us off because it's us that they're trying to harvest with this technology. Like I was saying earlier. So if, um, let me try to bring this home, man. Here go a picture of, okay, here go a picture of Saturn. Let me start bringing this shit home. We saw the Milky Way galaxy with the pole in the middle. We see what they, what, what's happening here. That's all the symbol of relativism. When we see these portals in the sky, these are the Relian people is, uh, practicing this technology. We just read what they're about. When we see these portals in the sky, look right here. This coming from the Relian movement. They done took over the world. I would argue that they've been controlling. These, this Relian movement go all the way back to ancient Kemet, Mesopotamia. It's an old movement of these Arconians recycling their souls and harvesting ours. They got to prey on us for their immortality. Go watch Avatar. In the new Avatar and the old one, these these the American military and Westerners, they using the portal technology to go out of their body and get into the avatar body to infiltrate them people. And when they get into the avatar's world, what do they do? They go try to destroy their tree of life. Remember that Paul Bunyan was a Celtic god. And the trees that he cut down were giant trees. Paul Bunyan wasn't cutting down trees that's made of wood. It was the Avatar movie. In the Avatar movie, they chopping down a tree of life. They chopping down the kundalini energy within us to cut off the, the break Jacob's ladder so we can't ascend no more. So when you talk about Paul Bunyan, He's chopping down a giant tree of life at the, all of these middle of these universes. The, the portal out. Like in the movie Avatar, they chopping down the, the ancestral tree. And that cuts of all, cut us off from our ancestral spirituality and give us all of these Abrahamic and foreign religions and science and, and, and all that stuff. Scientism, technology, all that's the all of them roads lead to the simulation and the uh, Raelian technology. And it, it leads you away from your ancestral spirituality. The people in the jungle, when they die, they go to their ancestral realm. When you die, you're going to go inside of a hologram and some white man's computer, some rich man's simulation. Because you you signed up and been indoctrinated to believe in a technocracy based on scientism and religion. So that's going to tie into you strand away from all of your ancient ancestors who didn't live in a world with all this stuff. They escaped that. It's going to separate you from them. That's what hell is, the separation from your ancestors, not the separation from God. But we automatically separate from them when we take the foreigner's spiritual system. We allow him into this thing. Then he, you give him an inch, he take a mile. Now look at what's going on. Science and religion blending together to promote the Raelian movement. And this was the agenda, agenda uh, from the jump. Been the agenda ever since ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia playing God. 